PKA 654 guest Brandon Herrera. Taylor? This episode of PKA brought to you by Lock and Load, Freeze Pipe, and of course, brand new sponsor, sponsor FaroDistro.com, Faro Distribution, FaroDistro.com. We'll hear more about them later. Some excellent, excellent products for enjoying your evening. Brandon, <laughs> thank you so much for joining Enjoyed us. Enjoy your evening. Enjoy we have like evening. ejaculate yeah. enhancement and drugs. Yeah, <laughs> like, do, you want, do you want to come while really high? Because <laughs> that's what we do. Sounds like we a winning Friday night to me. All I ever yes, want to do. I, I uh, love your background, Brandon. It's so intense that it's like but my my gut is like that's a green screen, but I know it's not. Yeah, you know what? The the green screen works really well. Like there's no clipping at all. Like it's really kind of nice. But yeah, you know, grab stuff right off the back. <laughs> you don't have a dragon yeah. off back there, do you? Uh yes, right up there. Uh SVD. Yeah. Nice. The uh, the the Papa Shaw is that a re- is that for Lotto? the PPS? Uh, yeah, the, it's currently got a uh, MP40 magazine um, magwell in it because That's so I put cool. it in for a video and I couldn't figure out how to get it out. It is stuck, so it's just uh-huh. it lives there now. <laughs> so Brandon, That's I'm a little cool. mix. Which which is your left? Raise your right hand for me, would you? Right hand. Okay, right side, third one down. That is a VSS Vintores or Vintores. Oh, so the I've, the super super quiet Tarkov boy, the nine by thirty nine. I was just gonna say I used it in Tarkov. I didn't recognize it. Like this. What is the absolute worst gun behind you? The the one that Ooh, like oh. if you had to get in a conflict, you're like fuck, not this one. <laughs> I'd rather have a knife. Yeah. Ew, Jesus. Well, probably the RPG because it's demilled. Uh, yeah. So that one, <laughs> that's not absurdly <laughs> useful. Um, <laughs> no, that's an impact RPG. You have to hit him. Yeah, it's more of a bludgeon. You know, it's a big steel tube, so you'll still get some shit done. What is Uh, the short one near that white plaque, sort of diagonally? The short one? So there's a white plaque. Yep. Yeah, and then diagonal. uh, Nope, just to the corner of it. No. Or the other way. That's the fun one. Oh, yeah, so the 1887, uh, model 1887. What? Yeah. It's so like the, these the, video games are based on real guns. <laughs> it's crazy, right? They made the, they made the Terminator 2 gun in real life. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, speaking of the RPG, that just made me think. A, a friend of mine, like 10, 11 years ago, was in Afghanistan. He was a Marine. And he had some some very intense stories. And he was telling us one time, when he when he has some drinks, he'll he'll talk about it a bit. And one of the most traumatic things he said he saw was he was on patrol, like 20, 30 yards in between everyone as they're walking through. And he said that they started getting shot at and they saw like RPGs coming in. And he was like, there's no way to predict RPGs like you just don't really fucking know where it's going to go. And he said at the time, like they'd had an issue with like RPGs being shot at them and not exploding like they weren't blowing up the the insurgents, whoever was shooting. Good problem to have. Good problem to have. The guy, he told me the guy, three people in front of him, so like 90 yards in front of him, a RPG came in and it hit him. Uh, it didn't explode, but it hit him in the quad. And I've it seen like tore into his, basically destroyed his entire like quadricep, just ripping it apart just mechanically. And yeah. he like, when he told me that, he's like, dude, like, like you can confirm this. Like this was a story. Like in it's the military, I, I was there for this. Did, it, and, did he survive? Uh, the guy did survive, I, I, if I recall. Yeah. The best part of the story, though, is it didn't pass through his quad. It, it was in. It stuck. Yeah. It's halfway in, halfway out of his leg. One of my best friends was on that that patrol. Yeah, he he was and, there. And and those things have come with all kinds of different warheads, but it doesn't matter what kind of warhead it is when it's in your thigh. <laughs> if it goes <laughs> it, 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 off, it, it, you, you know, panic so out. much. Yeah, and like it, it doesn't even have to explode. Like once it's ripped your thigh, do you know how much important shit is in your thigh? Most so much. It. So much yeah. blood going through there. Like, it's almost surprising he didn't. I don't keep die. anything important in my die. thighs. You don't? Your pockets mm-hmm. are. Oh, that's true. My phone's near my thighs. See, if it, if it was your <laughs> calf. Did it hit my phone? Did it hit my phone? <laughs> <laughs> I can't look. If it was your calf, it would have bounced off. <laughs> right. <Yeah. laughs> Someone else would have got caught with the shit. Brandon knows the lore. You know, I, 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 had a dummy, I had a dummy RPG like that laying on the floor. And uh, after that, I was I was in jail that night when I, when I first got arrested. It's like three, four in the morning and they come wake me up and like, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta go through a whole thing to get out of your jail cell and into a room with normal people. There's shackles and shit and eh, uh, door gates moving. And I finally get out there and the feds are there and they're like, Hey, um, the, uh, the RPG warhead in the floor, um, to deal with that. I was like, it's not real. It's rubber. 
he said okay turn around and left and that was it it was the most brief comp because i they were just like looking into my room it was the room where i used to record that blue mm -hmm. room yeah. it just laying on the floor in there <laughs> but they were they freaked trusted out they you mess with it it's amazing I mean, it how many like people a piece of rubber though that was true i assume it's of not course, really. I didn't have a live warhead. <laughs> oh, like that'd be wildly out of character. It would like, be wildly yeah. out of character. Like, I mean, that was my goal was to make my own, right? When that's why I wanted a Type 10 and FEL and like like all the bits and bobs. But no, that was a chunk of rubber that I bought at Knob Creek. Yeah, it's, it's amazing how much those people, are like even in the ATF, and whatnot, don't know about like the launchers and explosive side of things, uh, or especially like the average person. So a buddy of mine, I was filming a music video, and he wanted me to help him out and. Uh, they they basically had their own bit of like a nightclub cordoned off for for filming his video. And he's like, could you bring your AT4? I just, you know, AT4, once you fire, it's a tube. You know, it's mm -hmm. it, it's not going to you're not going to take it out. It was like an American it. RPG. Yes. Yeah, it's kind of it's 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 a good bit bigger, uh, bigger tube. But, uh, mm -hmm. you know, you, you've probably seen it in Call of Duty and a bunch of other stuff. But uh, I just bring the tube there and it's very obviously an empty tube. But the people who owned the bar, or the club or whatever, um, we, we asked for their permission, like, Hey, we're going to be bringing this in. Everything's safe, you know, blah, blah, blah. And they were like, yeah, uh, that's cool. Just don't fire it. And I'm like, excuse me, <laughs> <laughs> you, you thought this was a, Oh no, 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 no. This is a tube, ma'am. Uh, <laughs> but they were, so ended up they, they, were. Were gonna, they were just going to send it. They were like, Oh yeah, just, just, yeah, that's fine. Just, you know, keep it on safety. Yeah. They were way cooler than you thought they'd be They're like, all right. right, you know, promise us. <laughs> like, don't do this. We're not only shooting towards TNA. windows. Now he got us with the goddamn fingers crossed claws. He fired it <laughs> right, into, right into the woods. Yeah. What is uh? I see all the time, and I get such a kick out of you engaging in in gun debates and everything online, correcting misinformation with all that. What is because you're so close to it? What is the the gun take that gets your goat? more than anything else that when you see you're like these fucking non anti-gun people uh there's a couple there's a lot of misinformation out there but the uh the the big one is it, it seems and it's some of the easiest stuff to correct too uh it seems like uh a lot of the people that are you know spouting anti-gun stuff on on the internet say like there's no reason for a, a civilian to be able to go into a gun store and buy a fully automatic weapon i'm like well that's crazy because you can't that's, that's yeah, not yeah. a lot. Like, do you have an idea? accidental ally? What's up? <laughs> accidental <laughs> ally. Yeah. yeah. Subreddit. It's the, like, you, like the, the hoops you got to jump through. And like Kyle knows, like the, the shit you have to do to have access to this is insane. Um, if you don't have your FFL, it's uh, still like a lot of paperwork and it's very expensive, like prohibitively expensive, like a year's salary for most people. I'm glad you're here because I wanted to ask you about this. <clears throat> this is the coolest I don't look at guns really that much anymore, but the coolest gun thing I've seen in a long time was uh, a friend of the show. He bought a Mac and the, then he bought uh, um, a conversion kit so he can put an AR upper on his full yeah. auto transferable Mac. Yeah. And now he's got a fucking real machine gun for like I, Macs used to be forty five hundred dollars when I was looking at them. They're a lot more now. I think yeah. he paid ten or something, but still. It's like a ten thousand dollar machine gun, like a real one, a fun one, and it looks <laughs> <Yeah>. like shit. <laughs> they look, they look so fucking awkward. But that's the cool part because that's the workaround. Because you know the lower of it on, I guess on, I'm assuming on the Mac tens, whatever, the lowers are considered the firearm or the machine gun. So the upper that you put on, it's fucking irrelevant. It's just like changing the barrel or the muzzle brake. It's not the regulated part. So you mm -hmm. can just put on whatever. I, th I think I know who you're talking about. The uh, the, the company that sells those. They're, they're kind of neat. I mean, I get the premise. You want to be able to shoot 5.56 five, with AR mags? Like, here you go. Yeah. Taylor asked the most frustrating aspect of gun debate. Mine is this. When someone says, why do you need that? Right? Like, if it's a gun thing, then suddenly I have to justify it. No one ever, ever asks me why I need eight motorcycles. They never ask me why I need hockey equipment mm -hmm. or I don't even know how many sticks I have. No one asks me why I need anything else in my life. But suddenly for guns, even though it's a right to have it, they need me to like describe a scenario where it will come in useful. No, I don't play that game at all. Why do I need it? I, I don't. Or yeah. I'll say zombie apocalypse. I like that one too. Yeah, I know it's kind of a bumper sticker thing, but it's like they don't call it the bill of needs. Like I, I don't need to justify like why the hell I've got it. And plus, I already kind of have it. So what's your plan for making sure I don't anymore? Yeah. It's going to be tough. Look at your background. <laughs> <laughs> there's, there's, there's a lot of ways to shut this, this, this shit's my net worth, man. Like, yeah. I, I don't know what you want from me. Oh, wait, there's an RPG on there. Is that rubber? Yeah. 
That's what we. That's what brought yeah. up the, the army story. So that's it, that one's not rubber, but it's like a Chinese uh, dummy. It's like got all the explosives scraped out, and everything like that. Ah, uh, okay. Another thing I think is funny with the the army or not the army the uh, the gun thing I'll see sometimes is people being like, "Why do you even want an AR-15? Don't you know the government will just murder you where you stand with a drone?" Mm-hmm. And it's like, no, no. Like how how many times has that been gone through when people oh, yeah. understand like insurgencies and like like fighting an armed populace? Like yeah, Maybe. remember how we we dominated Afghanistan so hard? Oh wait, like like yeah, it's like Eric Swalwell, the, need, the you senator. Need soldiers on every corner. Like you can't control stuff with 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 just drones and shit, just murdering people. Like and, you know, drone operators have families, so you know it's you know yeah. Hey. There's a, a lot of people don't want to harm their fellow citizens. And and wouldn't do that. Yeah. I would. I would hope. It's just like Eric know. Swalwell, like the the senator, I believe, or congressman, who was saying, like, you know, you you'd never beat the U.S. government. Like, we have nukes. I'm like, the fact that a representative of the U.S. government has just threatened to nuke its own people are kind of why we want guns. It's kind of a good idea. <laughs> they they like they nuke Montana to show they're serious. We win. <laughs> it's a mushroom cloud and the fallout rains. <laughs> Fuck, it's blowing this way. <laughs> also, like, it, it, this it, way. Yeah. Weren't you put in the middle of the country? It was yeah. going to blow one way or the other. Now we know the direction of all the winds because of those Canadian fires. Those those irresponsible Canucks mm. up there, they're not watering their their plants. They're not uh, they're not cleaning up all the sticks the way North uh, botanist Trump recommended. <laughs> you know they don't have the, the stick sweeping teams that he said would take care of this. So. We need Trump and his sharpie to redefine where the smoke is. If you could there's help too us much out. fire. I don't want to. I don't want to step over it, but there's too much fire. Like <laughs> it's just like saying something everyone agrees with. Yeah, that that was hilarious. One of one of his best ideas was was sweeping forest floors to prevent you forest know, fires. And then I actually got owned a little bit because I, I read like some forest fire guy who's like, the way he said it was stupid, but he's kind of right. And I'm yeah. like, really? Damn, that sounds so dumb. Yeah, the reason we have these crazy monumental forest fires, um, what well, one of the contributing factors is that we, we have this complete fire prevention. So there are never fires until there are. So the undergrowth builds up, all those dead leaves and pine cones and shit layer after layer of layer of fuel and then one does spark off whether it's lightning or a Mm -hmm. psycho who just starts a fire people have done that a lot of those bigger wildfires i know there was one recently about everyone went to town look at look what global warming did turned out it was a guy it was a crazy guy he started a fucking fire uh it it usually is um or lightning or something like that but yeah trump trump's right sometimes Mm -hmm. that's true when he's not right sometimes like a little bit of me was like, was this idea worth exploring? You yeah. know, when, when he asked, hey, you know, uh, what if we put a disinfectant in the blood to kill COVID? Mm. I'm like, all right, that, that sounds, he's just asking the question. Is it a good idea? Is this something? What if but we that use that demonstrates an ignorance about the science that, that none of us have. We all go, whoa, whoa, whoa. Hey there, Tyke. Disinfectant <laughs> in the blood. I, I think you might, uh, I think baby out with a bathwater in that scenario right you know? <laughs> no, well, how about you incinerate the whole everything. you know maybe if we bring the blood to say a thousand degrees that would that kill covid yes very Mr. briefly that would kill all the COVID <laughs> in the blood okay then this one he wanted to buy greenland right he's like That's how much does it cost idea. to buy greenland and i'm like mm-hmm. you know spitball in here how much does it cost to buy greenland is that a good purchase i'm i'm, I'm down for some real estate I, I, investing I'm, I'm down to ask some questions at least it's not like greenland's on fucking zillow so you know hey let's let's at least get some quotes exactly yeah. now and i then, think he threw then, some sort of temper tantrum and didn't go to like the g7 when they told him it wasn't for sale <laughs> then at that part i don't like i don't yeah. I, you know you don't tell america something's not for sale what he should have said, <laughs> yeah. instead of buying greenland he should have offered to sell puerto rico that's the oh, fucking move. Oh, like a, like a trade? A trade? Yeah. We already have cash. plenty of cash money. places. No, to go. like we already money. have Hawaii. And so as far as solidifying good vacation spots, Greenland's better. Mm. I'm sure Greenland cash flow is better than Puerto Rico, too. So this is actually, this is the art of the deal. Great yeah. deal. Everyone's talking about it. <laughs> it's, it's a fantastic deal. Ask anyone, yeah, except for the prime minister of Greenland. But let's what do you do with the people of Greenland, then? Do they just become They're citizens? Americans. They go to Puerto Rico. They have to no. They become whatever Puerto Ricans are. They're the residents territory. or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. You don't just get they citizenship. Don't get they don't get our rights and stuff. They're well, the Puerto Ricans do. We're gonna make a new class of people for those Green Greenlandians. 
What dinners. should we call them? It's kind of like Guam. Greenies. Yeah. Greenies. Greenies. Yeah. Get your Off greenie ass start. back in the you know, line. Why didn't Trump reach out to us? We have great ideas. That he should, dude. Soon we're all we're gonna have a bunch of greenies <laughs> doing. I'm gonna I'm gonna have I'm gonna be yelling at some guy from Greenland mowing my yard. Straight line, Sven. I don't Come do on. well in this heat. <laughs> he's he's <laughs> awful. Burning. It's like yeah, and you're fucking red as shit. Wear something. <laughs> keep, your, keep your greasy greeny hands off our women. <laughs> Greasy green hands up. They're all they're all six seven jacked. <laughs> yeah, and we're like we're like bullying them. They, they Alexander all look like, they, they all look like the mountain and Alexander Skarsgård, and we're like God, these fucking greenies making us look like bitches. We're all so, <laughs> I, I hate this new. Imagine how much that would suck. There's a new group of immigrants from Greenland. There's millions of them. They're all six five. You fuck up the ratio. I would be. I would be fucking. That would get me in the streets protesting. You know what the opposite Shut of that is? Shut this down. No more. Here's the opposite of that. And, and we could make this happen on our little continent. Mm -hmm. um, in Poland, they have a real problem right now because there are just so many hundreds of thousands of beautiful Ukrainian women who have moved to their country for some reason. What a terrible it's, it's, problem. Mm, is that war? We need a war in Mexico. Oh? You want yes. some Latino uh, women up here? Drive the Mexican women to us. Yeah, they need encouragement. And then or, you can build the wall. Just go. You were big. You were big Antonio. on the wall, weren't you? Yes, San Antonio. Just I'll go. To I was the same size I always am. <laughs> <laughs> I think. I, I I thought the wall was a good idea when he said it. I still kind of do. Um, it just seems like I always get embarrassed when I see them like shimmying through it. <laughs> <laughs> like they're or they're like cut it with a sawzall, and it's like, oh, that's like mild steel. What are you it's doing? It's a bad idea because of Do those a reasons. Better wall. It, it, <clears throat> the Go problem with security home. sometimes is you have to spend a trillion, and they can defeat it with like, I don't know, nineteen ninety five. Certainly, one hundred and fifty dollars beats that wall. You can get that, a sawzall I, or a, like a a Milwaukee um, angle grinder. You know, with I see cordless. your point, but the goal isn't to stop. Um, one amigo, right? It's to stop this like open flow of people, like yeah. caravans and yeah. vehicles and stuff. All those bad so hombres. We'd yeah. be happy yeah. to vehicles, have the bad hombres drip drop in one at a time. Local law enforcement, border control has been going crazy the last couple of years handling that. But I, I think mm -hmm. you know, just a barrier of some kind would be nice. My, you're one of my favorite. You're opening my mind a bit. Like I, I see you're coming from the the larger package. Make it more expensive for drug traffickers if they've got to build a fucking. Yeah. $2 billion mm -hmm. tunnel now I, out of Juarez I, or something. I'm still wondering if there's something out there that's <clears throat> like more cost effective, you know, the motion sensors on towers with, I think they people. were doing that. Have that. Uh, yeah, they do I have that. Were, is that what yeah. we should be doing? Because a wall to me is a little bit of a marketing thing at this. Point. I want robots. This is I, where we should send the, those dog bots with the flamethrowers. Dog that's bots expensive. with flame. Tell me more. Zach, show them the dog bot with the flamethrower. <laughs> You're going to love this shit. This is what you're going to be scared of. When the cops like take control and they're taking guns from homes, they'll be walking down the street with, with, with a bunch of these dogs. They'll go in and they'll be like the seeker destroyers after the spider bots go in and look around. And find Dude, that, Miller that's was right. And separating moms from babies was a half measure that was never going to work. We needed to drone strike them. <laughs> is that what he said? Yes, yeah, so that was <laughs> well, going to step too far. Well, that was the video we did with uh, I did a thing where we were mounting. That's that's, that's a Photoshop. There's, that dog could not handle a fucking. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the uh, we, we put machine guns on the back of the dog, like an MP5 and like a, a KP9, whatever. And uh, yeah, the the recoil is a little too much in full auto, but a flamethrower now, flamethrower doesn't have mm. recoil. Well, small ones still don't. It's that out of the box. Yeah, there's a little electric one. Spot in government. Were were these dogs that you messed with, Brandon? Were they? pretty impressive or were you kind of like oh these are actually kind of shit <laughs> they were so bad really? um, it was it was yeah we they there was a constant uh struggle to get them to not immediately like do a backflip and kill themselves <laughs> <laughs> they just parkour to death it's like fuck another 200 somehow grand. managed to shoot itself even though it clearly can't for example uh <laughs> I, feast your eyes on the muzzle climb right now he is like <laughs> fucking 30 degrees over the berm <laughs> like this yeah <laughs> Yeah, yeah one, that's going to be a problem. If uh, the only thing I've ever seen, and I'm, I'm sure there's tons of cool stuff now, but like back in the day when I went to Jerry Baber's place, the guy that has the AA 12s, he had these um, little miniature tanks. They were like, like, rope, like they had rubberized treads and they could sort of, you know, they could rotate 360 degrees and, and stuff. 
And we were just out there with remote controls, and he had an AA-12 on that thing upside down. <laughs> so you could just slap the mag straight down into it. And something was w- w- weird with the controls, so we didn't bother filming it because every time we would shoot, it would just go full auto and dump the whole mag. <laughs> and, then it, and it made it look so janky. But he was like, this is the future, boy. This is what will be killing them next year, in the next 20 years. That and my drones. And he had these drones that for, that had machine guns on them. He had, uh, he had AR pistols, like two or maybe four on a drone. He had all sorts of silly shit. Yeah, he's kind of like Tesla. He was seeing stuff before it was happening. That guy can't be still alive. Nikola the, the Tesla? No, he's dead. <laughs> no, Jerry, Jerry Baber. Oh. The thing that's crazy about the drone stuff, too, is that uh, we were, we were going to do a couple of videos. We were going to do uh, one like the Ukrainian like drones because I've got some got, I got a friend who's you know got a, his FEL and everything. So he's got hand grenades and whatever. But we were going to do the Ukrainian drone drop and we were going to do one where they've got flamethrowers on a drone. I thought for sure that's easier, legally speaking. No, mm-hmm. no. As it turns out, anytime you put anything on a drone, it, as far as like weapons, flamethrowers mm-hmm. or anything like that, the FAA gets really mad. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's like a twenty-five thousand dollars fine. Did if you ever see Richard out. Ryan's video that he did like a decade ago? No, but I, I've heard you talk about it. He took it down, I think. Um, we were at the time we had this. Um, I don't, I don't know who was paying us, but some like movie video game company. They, they, we both got contracts, and him doing his drone video was endangering my contract. I was in a field being like, "Why? Why did he do that?" <laughs> he made a drone that drops an explosive that used. I don't think it was LIDAR. It was some, it, it pings the ground as it falls so that it air bursts above the target. Like way more sophisticated than what we're doing. Um, they're doing in Ukraine. Um, this is like 10, 12 years ago or something. That sounds like, like a, it was a drone. <laughs> on it was a drone dropped improvised explosive using, I think, plastic explosive. And it air detonates at like six or 12 feet or something. Whatever he wants it to. He could program it. It was, it was crazy. He took it down, I think. And that that got you in trouble or almost did. They were like, oh, we don't know about paying YouTubers (laughs) to make videos now. And it's like, (laughs) (laughs) and you're like, no, please, please. (laughs) Meanwhile, I'm in a field with like a bunch of mannequins dressed up as colonial soldiers or something. And an an old timey cannon. (laughs) Did I shave my head for nothing? I I had shaved your head instead of the bald cap. They had a number from me in which I would have shaved my head and they did not meet it. They got <laughs> the bald really? cap number. Yeah. Yeah. When I would pitch things, you know, there'd be tears, right? This gets <laughs> you that. This gets you that. This gets you all of that. And like the the, the final like number was, oh, yeah, I'll just go ahead and shave. I think I was going to get the tattoo. I think I said, I'll shave the head, get the tattoo for this amount of money. And it, it you know, the hair covers it up. No, oh, it does. Does he have a tattoo on his head? Yeah. Um, well, not on his head, on the back of his neck, the Agent 47 or whatever from the, um, Hit oh, man. I remember that. I, my only exposure to those games was your video. I've never literally me played. too. They hired me, and I'd never played one before. I had to go play a bunch of fucking video games. <laughs> you, couldn't have, you, you couldn't have just done like a fucking henna tattoo and say, "Yeah, no, I'm going to keep this here." That's what we did. Bring your hair back out. <laughs> yeah. That's what we did. We hired um, a guy that worked on the Walking Dead at the time. Walking Dead was big at the time, and uh, and he did. Oh, it is on the back of the head. Well, yeah. maybe it moves around in the throughout the series. I thought it was in the back of his neck. When I Googled it somewhere on wrists and shit, I don't know if that's all game. I think that was called the Holocaust, Woody. No. Oh. <laughs> Touche. <Yeah. laughs> Dude, mm. well, one of the worst parts about going bald would be not knowing if you have a good head under it until it happens. Like, what if you've got, like, one of those Gorbachev wine birthmarks that you never knew about and it's like hair come out blonde from one of those stains no am i wrong i I don't know i i I remember his bald i I said no because gorbachev was bald but then i realized how stupid that is (laughs) (laughs) yeah i don't actually know if hair comes out blonde from those but (laughs) if it is then that's a good way to know if you have one but that that would be the worst part about going bald. It's like, oh no, I have a lumpy head with a bunch of like fucking bumps on it and, and a birthmark. I got. Well, scars. is it a cool scar? I don't know. I haven't seen this since I was ever. It happened when I was four. Like split my whole head open, not skull okay. or anything, but the skin. Uh, I took a nose dive out of a shopping cart, and you know those things they hook stuff on at Walmart or any store. You know the little. And that mm. like rode my fucking head from front to back as I like head butted the wall. I tipped the whole shopping cart into it. Yeah, it was a real mess. Also, oh, like ate, I also ate the, took the side of the shopping cart that sort of serrated edge, and it went between my gums and my lips and separated that all the way up to my nose. And a tough day at Walmart. Just yeah, it was rough. I was four. 
<laughs> Under the anesthesia, I had the most vivid, weird dream, and I still remember it. I was as in a, a dark I, as a four year old, completely black space, like infinite, <clears throat> and a black man in a birdcage, an old timey birdcage suspended from nothingness. You know, like Tweety <clears throat> would be in with a flat bottom and the mm -hmm. dome's top, and he was in there and uh, sitting on a chair. He had a white beard, um, kind of like Morgan Freeman esque, and uh, and he said I was going to be okay. So you'd probably seen like a Morgan Freeman movie recently. I was four years subconsciously. old. Subconsciously. So I, was, I had was, not seen any black. Like <clears throat> Song of the South, maybe. Yeah, Song of I'm the South. I'm pretty sure. <laughs> I, or Driving Miss Daisy would be more likely, right? <laughs> that that, that would have really hit the. I may have yeah. seen Driving Miss Daisy and been comforted by Morgan Freeman. <laughs> and or, or God spoke to me, a guy, a person I don't believe in. Uh, it's one or the other. I'll say it's God. And God took the form of the Miss Daisy character to, to make you comfortable. No, it wasn't Miss Daisy. It was it was driving. Uh, well, <laughs> it was Morgan Freeman. I think that was his breakout hit, and he was like fifty eight. <laughs> like like he got started so late in his career. Or he did. He made it's a career a as an older guy. But then again, like would would you want a young Morgan Freeman? Part of him is is his his age is what's so good about him. Like that think? old wizened, seasoned? yeah, seasoned. Like he, he looks old as shit. He is old as shit. He seems wise in all his parts, and you don't see him in anything anymore. Probably I'm worried that it. if we had the young Morgan Freeman, the old one wouldn't be as good. For example, we have old Harrison Ford, and it's not like Ugh. he's improved or anything. Instead, he just is a really fucking shit tier Han Solo. Yeah, right. Who can barely walk or even run about on uneven services i'll, like I'll counter like, that though we hmm. also have clint eastwood who was basically perpetually you know 50 his entire career uh but i mean like the outlaw josie wales isn't any you know doesn't take away from gran torino in my mind you know for somehow you don't like outlaw josie wales no i love outlaw josie wales oh, fantastic okay. I, you know that's yeah i could it's yeah it's a good one. counterpoint because I, like Clint Eastwood is also just a shitty Clint Eastwood, a senile, el not senile, but like an elderly Clint Eastwood that, that doesn't move. move as well. But he somehow makes that work for him. Like, like he doesn't try to be an action star. In Gran Torino, for example, he plays a has-been tough guy, and he nailed it. Yeah, I think he's still getting pussy in his movies, though. I think he did one called Macho, um, <laughs> where he's wearing the cowboy hat again. And he's like Macho. driving a Mex Crime Macho. Thank you. Yeah. yeah, I'm pretty sure he's late in that one, right? I haven't seen Maybe it. Maybe twice? Yeah, I haven't seen I, it either. I was just something I read about it. I don't I'll like seeing him old. Yeah, that's like, like the new Clint Eastwood movies now. I'm just kind of like, dude, because he had his he had a send-off movie like three times now. And he keeps yeah. Back. What was his really good cowboy movie? Unforgiven? Unforgiven is the one where yeah. he, that he held on to that property. He owned it for like a decade. He's like, I'm not old enough to be that guy yet. And then he, <laughs> when, he, when he had that look at like 45, 50 or whatever... He put up, he made the greatest uh, Western he he's ever He's playing made. broken down action star, ex action star. Harrison Ford is just playing bad, can't pull this off anymore action star. He still do, he just did an Indiana Jones movie, and that's going to flop too. Oh, I, I'm, I, I'm sure he nailed it. <laughs> it it's well, so stupid because the whole point of Indiana Jones is he's this, this character from another time, from the 1940s serials. You know what serials were? They were, um, you would go to the movie theater and there'd be a TV show, 20, 30 minute, what we would consider a TV show. And you'd watch this mm -hmm. 30, 10, 20, 30 minute episode and it would end with a literal cliffhanger. It's where the term cliffhanger comes from, where the hero would be hanging from his parachute or whatever. Come back next week and you'll find out if the hero makes it. And it would end and they would show it all week. And then next Friday night, boom, episode two is out. And they kept going serially. Mm. And, and that's what they were doing with Indiana, with Indiana Jones. Oh, here he is in an Indian um, kooky temple. Here he is another time fighting the Nazis. Here he is again fighting the Nazis. Doing the, wait, he's doing the same thing. Mm -hmm. they, they made the same movie twice, but <laughs> I can't watch the Alien one, and I can't watch this new one because of what you said. He's so goddamn old, dude. Get out of that role. Get out of that yeah. role. Well, play it differently. You know, like... Be broken down, Indiana Jones, who can't do what he used to do, but has to be clever or something. That's yeah. what um, Clint Eastwood completely relies on the toughness of his gun. When he confront, there's a scene in Gran Turismo where I think there's two sort of thuggy type guys giving that one girl and her pansy boyfriend a hard time. Do you guys know this scene? Yeah, I know it word for word. 
Yeah, I bet you do. <laughs> I, I would not bet against you. Yeah. And uh, well, anyway, in that scene, you know, he pulls out his fake gun and he's like, ever know someone you didn't want to fuck with? But he never claims he's going to beat these two tough guys at arm wrestling or in hand to hand combat. He just says, I'm armed. Yeah, Let he's, the girl he's, go. he's got a cheat code. Yes. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> the ultimate cheat. But Take your old fey ass up the block. Harrison Ford, on the <laughs> other hand, is trying to out horseback okay. ride people on 1923, and it looks like shit. Has has, he, has Harrison Ford ever been a good actor? I don't know of him from anything other than Star Wars and um, yeah, Indiana yeah, he Jones. Has. So yeah, um, okay. the Fugitive is great. Those um, no, I guess that's uh, pretty good. The the ones um, the whatever Under Fire those those that are based on the adventure um, <clears throat> books, the Grisham novels or whatever, those are fun. He did, he did a couple of those. Younger him was a fun actor. I like him in the original Star Wars. He's the best part of those movies to me. Is Harrison Ford being Yahoo and riding around and having a good time. He's the only guy you can identify because every else everybody else is this idealist or this wide eyed dummy or, or a superhero just, or magic or a god man. Yeah, or a god man or some shit. Um, and then there's Harrison Ford like just tr- skating by by like lies and back shooting and whatever he's got to do because he's surrounded by robots and godmen <laughs> and, like, and he just happens to have a ship he stole it's fast that's his whole thing yeah but he's got charisma yeah he does have that. <laughs> he's cool you know, you know what Riz cool. gets you pretty far in life oh don't say <laughs> I that i mean he was the coolest guy in that movie. <laughs> wait did I, what did i say that was wrong <laughs> did you say riz is it that short for charisma no yeah, it is. I just hate hearing it. That's all. I'm sorry. Is that what that means? <laughs> Riz? Yeah, it's just charisma. I think it's I, usually used with like uh, flirting. But do you ever I wish you could unlearn wrong. something? Yeah, <laughs> like, like that. You could go back to not knowing. I did so know. many things. I did so mm-hmm. many. Th- <laughs> Honestly, um, if you, if you could delete memories, uh, I, I think that that would be big business. If you There's could delete a... memories, I would just tell my torsion testicle story again, and you'd be. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> some, I, I can like feel that when you tell that story. I feel like my my ball strings are constricting and pulling my testes up into me for safety because they're here. Yeah, uh, then it worked. It, you never yeah, said we, that we story. Every once in a while, I'll, I'll, I'll like feel like just a little <laughs> testicle discomfort. I'm like, <gasps> mm-hmm. <laughs> oh no! And I'll be like, I'll be like, what did what do you say? You'll know in like 20 minutes. And I'm like, okay, well. <laughs> we'll keep an eye on it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we uh, we actually have the technology to uh, to you know r- erase memories, but big therapy has actually uh, prevented us from doing that. They're they're getting in the way. They're lobbying against it, of course. Yeah, we need. Is to that true? I buy no, that, That's a complete <laughs> lie. I, I mean, I, <laughs> uh, imagine if you could get rid of of memories. That that would be a that actually is so horrible and dystopian that. That would be a, the worst society ever. People would I'm just a delete everything person. that made them. Sh- it would be a society I'm, with no shame. You guys are all in this good place of trying to remove like trauma and pain. And yeah. I'm like, huh, who do I know that needs to forget shit I did? Oh my. <laughs> you want to offensively <laughs> have a, a memory deleting it. You're going gonna, gonna, <laughs> to yeah. you know, reshape history. Uh, there's a movie about this. It's called Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind. Jim Carrey and uh, the fat chick from Titanic. Kate Winslet, um, I knew her name. I just like calling her that. And uh, he, he's he's his ex, he's her. She is his ex girlfriend. Terrible breakup, and he's erasing her from his mind. And and the, and that is being displayed in a kind of a trippy way as the memories one by one are deleted. And uh, I think I would do that. I think I would delete things like maybe like bad breakups or traumatic moments, but maybe just like information that I I wish I didn't know. That's that's like annoying or concerning. It's like nothing you can do about it. Kind of shit. Yeah. Um, and, and movies and media, man, I'd love to go back and watch some things for the first time and be surprised by like the end of, um, um, I see dead people, dude, oh, but like, mm. think about it. Really It'd be fun to do that. Again. Is there, is there something Six like, cents. is there anything yeah. more depressing than imagining opting to delete a portion of your own memory so you can spend more of your life consuming the same media? Like, I understand what you're saying. Like, Oh, it'd be neat to see King of the Hill for the first time again. But when you really think about it, that is that's the saddest thing I can imagine is like relegating your entire existence to the need to reabsorb media because all experiences are are seen to be negative. You know, that's almost like like one of those like scary dystopian things. That's oh. funny because I'm like, I like I it. I can imagine Taylor. Everyone, you know, probably every show, Taylor tells a joke that gets me laughing out loud in stitches. I want to just hit my little fucking undo button like that. That was easy yeah. button. Like, say it again. 
<laughs> imagine right, I'm this back. Trailer. I'm back. Imagine, in the mix. I can just come imagine, up with like four jokes and just <laughs> smell like what I already I'm, know. Imagine that <clears throat> you could you could go back and like like things that made you feel really good or or entertain you tremendously, like like watching the first uh, Bill Burr special, like the funniest one mm -hmm. for the first time ever, or, or being able to go back and learn about. I could be like, hey Taylor, and you're like, ah, what was that? Hey, you ever hear of a guy named Patrice O'Neill? No. Yeah. Who's that? <laughs> oh, come here a minute. Let me show you something. You, you know ONA, right? What? What'd you say just now, Kyle? I said, do you know ONA? No, I don't know anything about that. No. You could like, we like spend the day. And, me, and, I, and I pretend like I knew about it all the time. And you're just dumb. You just missed it the last <laughs> 30, 40 years. It's yeah. like, damn, I, I have no memories of huge portions of time I spent in the past <laughs> 15 years. Like, it's almost like everything that developed my sense of humor was deleted. <laughs> I'm yeah. still doing this offensively. I have it revolution revolutionizing oh the dating world right like like oh i don't like where this is going how do you feel about guns I bill cosby bill cosby i have enough <laughs> guns that i don't know how many guns i have and she's like nexting me <laughs> redo i hate redo. guns too <laughs> i hate guns they are the fucking worst don't get me even started on guns and she's like well i don't hate them that much like fuck i am i give guns a six out of ten <laughs> maybe is that right? All right, cool. We're, we're step two. Eventually, closer to can, like Groundhog Day, this thing, without traveling through time. You know, he, he just like he tried to learn everything he could about that woman until he yeah. picked her up. Uh, you could do that. I'd I would have done... her after like month two. <laughs> <laughs> month two, and you're just yeah. and you're just. Like, like, I'm most... a gentleman. I'm a gentleman. Yeah, you guys are all acting like he's a monster. Dates. I admire his sixty restraint. dates. His you know how many you many breakfasts you bought for 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 Andy One. at that point? That's a real name. <laughs> 60, 60. One. One. Uh, look. My resources may be unlimited, but my patience is not. Kyle does it before the <laughs> Kyle does it before he realizes time's repeating. <laughs> he's, he's like, <laughs> oh, lucky me! Thank, he wakes up the next morning. Thank God! <laughs> oh, no, to do what? it again, <laughs> dude. What I would actually do day one is like, you know how fun it is in Skyrim to sneak around and steal things in stealth mode. Yeah, like. No. Just seeing if how much you could rob the town blind the second that you start seeing stuff like that. Like, I bet I can get this whole block, all their jewelry today. And then you fail, you get arrested, but the next day you get to restart. You become a better and better thief. And then when you finally get out of it, now you're now you've put ten thousand hours into something useful instead of trying to woo some fucking bitch that who cares. How much money have you made for your ten thousand hours of, of time? Like like the, no, but this, the, is, the this is free jewelry this is free couldn't add up to it's free time because it's it's just re it's repeating over and over. The point is, yeah, is but you're is, spending it. Have you ever seen Blow, where he went in with a bachelor's of marijuana and came out with a PhD in cocaine? That's what you're yeah. doing. You're going into it with no ability to steal. You're coming out of it, fucking cat burglar. It's a good movie. It is, is that Penelope Cruz in that? Like, I don't know who that is. I don't care for her. Not no. very attractive. Then me, she was waspy. Waspy. Yeah, she was like the hottest maid in the at the hotel. You don't hear you don't hear waspy much anymore. What was Arnold doing, man? I always, whenever, like, what was he doing? How'd that happen? What, what, what do you mean? mean? How'd that happen? What he was he Mr. Do? Fucking Universe. He was the governor yeah. of California. He's the yeah. goddamn Terminator. Mm -hmm. Worth 50, 100, 200 million dollars? I don't know. No, it's over million? that because of that twins money he got. He, he owned the rights to that. And then he fucked that enormous, like, Spanish maid who, like, who I wouldn't fuck and you wouldn't fuck. Like, do you know how hard up you'd have to be to fuck her? It was just convenient. She was there and he saw it and he couldn't control himself. If he just jerked off, his whole fucking life would have been different. He'd have still been married to that Kennedy. Dude, have you ever seen his his kid with the Kennedy versus his kid with the the maid? Mm -mm. Like physically, Which his one's kid, better? the kid Ooh. with the maid, is like jacked and, and like has like the Arnold body, and then his other Maria son Shriver is doesn't skinny. work out as hard. I don't. I, yeah, and she was skinny when I saw her. She used to be on TV. I don't mm -hmm. know what she looks like now. Must be. Old. I don't even know who that is. Maria Shriver. That's Arnold Schwarzenegger's wife. Oh, okay. Was ex wife. Yeah, she accident. divorced him. That's the Kennedy that Kyle's talking See, about. I, I think yeah. he was just uh, just on a shitload of gear, so his testosterone was just through the fucking roof. So he was just gonna fuck anything that moved. That makes sense. Good he might have been on trend. 
There you the, go. The fucking butler's lucky he didn't get it. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> but Arnold What's he gonna do? Yeah, if Arnold Schwarzenegger needs to get his dick dirty, and you're his butler. His dick dirty. What's <laughs> that? I'm oh, looking fuck. to get uh, my. That I'm right here on the spot. <laughs> uh, I'm looking to get my Eastern European dirty cock dirty right now. I'm trying uh, to hide it from the predator. It needs to be covered in mud. <laughs> Suck the mud off of my dirty dick. Oh, that's what that. <laughs> what the, yeah, I that's just the best in room. Deep. I just see. <laughs> like, shut up. <laughs> I'm the governor. <laughs> I'm the governor. <laughs> that's who I would like to see replace Chris Hansen. Is Arnold Schwarzenegger for to catch a predator? It'd be mm. perfect. Oh, He'd be smoking his stogie. He'd come out with that thing, wearing that red polo from from the Predator movie, and he just he'd, he'd use his lines as much as possible, even when it didn't <laughs> really fit. But you'd still laugh along as he, you know, got the pedophiles. Who's uh who's that fat guy who uh accosted Eat That Pussy forty five four four five. Yeah, yeah. Get yeah. that guy on the show. The guy who was like, so it appears here, fat ass, that you were talking to children online, Tubbo? Like, <laughs> you just, like, have you just, seen like, this, in, Like, fat oh, yeah. insults. Oh, yeah. my God. That was, that was great. He's like, roasting him. He's roasting him. That's the same guy that showed <laughs> yeah. up. At oh, you like little kids, do you, Piggy? House. Like, oh, really? oh, it's the same guy? Yeah, that's the guy oh, that showed okay. up. At, was no, that Frank Hassel? No, no. That's, this is a different oh. guy. Okay. Yeah. This is Which, Red Beard McMurphy or whatever the fuck. Um, I, we called him like Rascal McGovern's, I think. Yeah, Rascal McGovern's. I think we gave him like a fake persona because we didn't know his real name. I think maybe <laughs> it came out later that he was a bit of a POS, like some domestic stuff. But I don't give a shit about that as long as there's not kids involved. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah I mean, I don't like, don't get me wrong. You shouldn't be like, you know, stalking, like showing up at somebody's fucking house over their politics or whatever. At the same time, it was really funny to see how that was just blown up. Like I was accosted and feared for my life. Like. You shook hands with the guy, and then it's a real friendly conversation. Side, yeah, yeah. It's like, and you didn't. What What was his excuse? Was Was there a? Did EDP say there's a bakery near here, or did the other guy go? What are you here for? Cookies? Is there a bakery nearby? Like, is that, <laughs> is that what it was? Or like, cup, like, cupcakes? I think. Yeah, cupcakes. Something, yeah. something like that. Dude, when he starts talking about the doo doo pictures, that like, that blew my fucking mind, because often if you. What they usually don't show on these to catch a predator shows is what happens Shit. before the guy gets there is <laughs> is you've got a, a an adult in a room on a phone or a PC talking nasty. Have a seat right over here on this piece of a... newspaper. <laughs> 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 but they convinced him to send pictures of his poop, and he's and, and he he was oh yeah twelve year old girls love that I guess so let me just taking pictures of his poop and now they got the pictures of the man's poop and they're like is this your poop and it's so ridiculous and <laughs> so a plus to, a plus to them for having the idea because i would as a sane relatively sane individual never would have thought anybody would go for that no no i, I wouldn't think so either but no. i guess he was very desperate he, very he did what why yeah seemingly seemingly desperate is that guy i think he got in trouble again didn't he I think oh, maybe DP got into he was double dipping back into the back into the same the same mm. sins the same pedophilia the same shallow waters. <laughs> oh, is that the that almost looks too kiss me please too fucking perfect to even be real. I thought that's too memeable. <laughs> yeah, sweet. yeah, it's because it's got like three oh, <laughs> this guy it looks hurt like uh, Derek. Um, Derek, what's his name? Um, the the black beast from Texas, UFC fighter, Lewis. Derek Lewis, yeah, he, he looks a little bit like Derek Lewis there. It's like AI generated somehow. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you know what he looks like, Taylor? Stare at him, but then imagine a Ninja Turtle. If he had that that like band around his eyes, <laughs> holy shit, it's Donatello. Donatello, leave the kids alone. Yeah, I love that thumbnail he just pulled up. I'll do it again. <laughs> Dude, YouTube thumbnails are fucking hilarious. <laughs> it's just like someone's like new story on Johnny Depp and Amber Heard, and it's like a picture of her like eating shit, rubbing it on her face, and it's like <laughs> new info. And it's like, no, there was no new info. It's I'm, <laughs> jealous. I'm, I'm absurdly jealous of Kyle for getting into gun tube before everything needed to be a fucking clickbait thumbnail. Like every I mean, modern I made sure there was fire. What's up? I made sure there was fire in the thumbnail. I felt like it was important. I didn't like yeah. I didn't like clickbait, I guess. Like I, like I wasn't above it necessarily. I'm sure I've done it. I'm sure I have. Oh, I remember my favorite clickbait thing I did. Um, right after Osama bin Laden was killed, I shot a poster of him. 
and I oh, called the video Osama bin Laden like assassinated or something like that or taken out by blah blah blah. And then I I was able to ride the CNN wave like 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 like, like catch on to their ship yeah. and, they, <laughs> and, and, and like lasso some of the, some of their views over. And uh, it was just me in a field somewhere shooting pictures of Osama bin Laden. That's the clicky baitiest thing I ever did for sure. Yeah, but of all the millions of views that gets, if like ten percent of the people who watch it are like, "Oh, well, this guy's kind of cool," let me check out. Yeah, he converts stuff. to people. Yeah, yeah. That yeah, is but I mean, that those were back in the golden days, where like a picture of you holding two AA twelves, like 20, 25 million views, fifty million views. Like yeah, is, does YouTube make it unbelievably hard on gun channels now? It's give and take. Uh, there, it got really weird uh, back in January of this year. Uh, I thought I was going to potentially lose my job uh, because they they had cracked down where they said that uh, showing attachment of a suppressor would be a strike, and uh, in sh- inserting a thirty round magazine is a strike because that is illegal weapons modification. And wow. uh, they said that there is no grandfathering, so that worked on all previous content. So three strikes and your channel's gone. I'm like, uh, guys, you could delete my channel like 37 times over with that yeah. rule. So we were fighting YouTube on that and thankfully we won, but I mean, it's not too bad. Like full auto gets you demonetized. The extended magazines gets you demonetized. A bunch of shit gets you demonetized, but it's all in all, it's not, it's not as bad as people think it is, but it's not great. You should, you should tag it. CGI. You should, that's CGI. What, why are you hating on me? Do you do this to corridor digital? Why, <laughs> what is your problem? What's your I've problem? Got, these are all props. Do you think I, do you think I've got guns? <laughs> yeah. CGI shooting. That's what it can be. Oh. Cool Guns International. I don't yeah. like that meme. I like the picture. I just, it's just, that one's not fun. <laughs> I, like, I don't get it. Don't <laughs> my I don't is get it. it. Yeah, that's not, this is not is a, it a I, I don't carrying know in Call of Duty reference. It's how I, the one it. I like that gets memed is me on the Bofors gun. Um, yeah. And like, yeah. it's like three frames. Um, that one's always funny to me. That's a good meme. And, and, and look at you. On the meme. I saw Joe Rogan watching you recently. Did you see that clip, Kyle? Did it get in front of you? They thought it yeah, was yeah. again. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Somebody, oh, I love that. Uh, somebody <laughs> sent me that. Um, he had the guy that, I think the director of John Wick, I think he has a lot to do with the training and gun fu, like, like he's into that stuff. And uh, I think that he said that, I think he had made a game that had a Dragon's Breath shotgun in it. And... Uh, Rogan was like, well, that's a real thing. And he's like, yeah, there's this crazy Russian guy that's got some <laughs> on the mm-hmm. internet. And he, not just that, everything. He, he shoots little, little, little needles and all. And then I like, pull up my video of me with that stupid red and blue shotgun <laughs> that I spray painted on my deck that night because I yeah. knew people would click it. With your very <laughs> Eastern European haircut. Oh, yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's a good yeah. one. That's So, so for those of you um, younger than 35, that's a line <laughs> wire. <laughs> uh, emblem there oh, <laughs> with LimeWire was a place where you download illegal music and it would always corrupt your family's uh, PC that's that's actually good you pointed it out I bet a lot of people didn't realize that was LimeWire indeed indeed it's been a long time since I've seen that logo but that's where all my I was on LimeWire all the time when I was a kid just downloading Dude. every I, I was like they just turned you gotta imagine it, it would be like if all of a sudden I mean, everything's piratable now, but that was new to me. It was mm-hmm. they're like, "Hey, Kyle, all that music is free now." What do you mean it's free? A, a CD is twenty dollars, and this is twenty dollars of like nineteen ninety seven money. Yeah. So it was crazy that music was free. I was I was grabbing it with both hands for no reason. Well, I might <laughs> listen to that someday. Like I'm storing it. Like soon they'll make it illegal. Yeah, and they did, but not a lot that of time. viruses. LimeWire was a such a downgrade from Napster. <laughs> Work Napster was awesome. <laughs> Is that what they? I didn't know that was before. Is Napster before everybody's time? I never I, used Napster. I, I used remember LimeWire. Napster, but LimeWire I think had replaced it. I thought yeah. That was the order so of things. Napster was easily better, but more suable because they maintained a database of all the places you could download. So there was like a central authority to get this right. LimeWire was distributed, so there was no one like organization you could sue. Everyone who participated was part of the problem. Oh, okay. and. So Although Napster got, got sued and people letters. had to move. Yeah, I they scared the heck out of me. You know, like it. I didn't know if I was at real risk. They 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 like at random seemingly they would go after some young guy and and run him through the legal system to kind of put a scare into people and there'd be mm-hmm. a big news story about it. I, it scared me. I was like, I don't need to hear Travis Tritt that bad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I remember the first time I started like using LimeWire. It was so easy that it's like this. This is 
I, I, this is wrong. Like I'm going to get in trouble for this because yeah. there's no way I can just get the newest fuck. And, and you're right. I bet I listened to 5% of the songs that I stole off of LimeWire because it'd be like the entire Beethoven collection, whatever. Like yeah. just so, <laughs> all of it. Sure. It's the same with like the Pirate Bay and all that. Like yeah. when, when I, my friend first, you know, introduced me to that and U-Torrent and everything back when I, I guess the type Pirate Bay is not around anymore, whatever. But like you just like the entire discography of Metallica. Oh, okay. Sure. All right. Yeah. Do I remember? Do you remember Mega Upload? How great yeah. Mega Upload was if you wanted like a low Rip. quality 720p movie, which was 720 was fine at the time. And it was like, I remember it using was, Mega Upload and being like, I can't even imagine a media, a piece of media that's not here right now. Like Mega Upload had everything, every song, every movie, every TV show wasn't in the best quality. And then when they finally got rid of it, uh, that fat guy from New Zealand owned it, right? That mm. uh, something like that. And then he g- got in trouble, had to move away. Oh, a piece that of technology that is side. a piece of technology that is from another age at this point is the CD burner. I saw yeah. someone on social media asking, what the fuck does that even mean? You burned a CD because that's what that was the whole point of LimeWire. I wasn't going to sit at my PC. I was burning CDs because mm-hmm. I had a new car. I, I newly had a car because I was a fucking 16 year old and I wanted CDs. I wanted a whole fucking like thing of them above my uh, um, like yeah. sun visor, like all the cool kids. Dude, I had the same thing. Like all the cool kids had that big CD case, and it was like, damn, I got. And look at me, I don't even pay for my CDs. They're all silver with just something written on it. All this shit stolen. There's, there's <laughs> one, there's one paid for copy of No Strings Attached by NSYNC, and that's it. <laughs> stolen. I remember, like, I remember, I remember getting, the, <laughs> I remember getting that album. I was like in middle school when NSYNC was huge, and like. Everyone was like, dude, these are the coolest guys ever. It was there was almost a schism. I remember some people liked the Backstreet Boys and other people liked In Sync, and I just flowed wherever the, <laughs> the popular was because I was I was insecure. I, I don't think I was part of a group that liked either of those things. Oh. Dude, in my day, <laughs> this is a little bit younger. <laughs> before you guys or before anyone listening, probably, but it was vanilla ice. Vanilla ice was the coolest fucking thing. <laughs> ever and people would like leave the school just blasting (laughs) vanilla ice on their overpriced stereo systems in their car (laughs) like that dun 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 and you'd be like fuck that guy's got style it was one song song in the movie (laughs) (laughs) overnight he became the most uncool person ever he just went from like the bomb to the dud and it's like, oh no, she didn't get the memo. Yes. She's still playing it on her car radio. You can't. <laughs> Nobody wanted to be cool as ice anymore. No. <laughs> he only had the one song, as far as I know, and and, and it would be on every mixtape. Uh, like, like I feel like I definitely had that song. Who were the cool artists? Like when you were in high school, I remember Lil Wayne was the the cool guy to listen to. Yeah, he, he was very very popular at the time. I, I was never was hung heard. out with like the the like R. Kelly heads and Reject or whatever. <laughs> so like all the emo music, oh my like God. fucking Green Day and and we'd listen to Metallica and Megadeth and all that stuff. Yeah, fucking I remember Ignition. Green Day being popular. Yeah. No, Ignition came out when I was in high school. It's a remix to Ignition, hiding fresh out the kitchen, <laughs> Mama ruling that body, and every, everywhere. That's all you heard. That guy peed on little girls. That's what he's rapping about. I heard hmm. an R. Co- I, I was I was allegedly. The no, literally, <laughs> yeah. jail for it right now. <laughs> Convictedly, I, I love saying yeah. allegedly about convicted criminals. I, <laughs> I looked up Vanilla Ice's top songs because Kyle said there was one. And I was like, what was that other one? His top song is Ice Ice Baby. His second most popular song, somehow, Ice Ice Baby. His third most popular song, Ice Ice Baby Radio Edit. Then after that, comes play that funky music. Oh, so I I, I got to lean with Kyle. He had one song, basically. Yeah, yeah, but it made so much money that it made his whole career. It, he had like a Mister T effect, where he was such a character that, yeah, that's Vanilla Ice. Yeah, get him in here. <laughs> I wonder if he could like have managed his guy. career better. He had the look too with the hair. Mm-hmm. And he shaved one of his eyebrows, which is like and he could dance. Super cool, but not something I was ready to replicate. Yeah, I only know of him as a joke. Like my my whole 
ideation of him as a person is like vanilla ice that goober from like the 80s or something like that, <laughs> jamie fox has a thing about this i think i have the actor right he's the multi-talented guy who can sing yeah. and act and all that okay yeah so he's like you know old people like me think of michael jordan as an absolute basketball star other people though see him as the crying jordan meme like that's all they've really been exposed to by him and I, like there's a vanilla ice type thing like i, I remember when vanilla ice was the coolest person on the planet but you just know him <laughs> as a meme. You know who got hated on from second one, like in middle and high school for me was Nickelback. There was never yeah. a time that Nickelback slipped through the crap. Maybe it was very briefly that they were okay. And then they were just even amongst like middle and high school kids, like they suck. They're Which terrible. is a travesty because they're yeah, not. It's like that what bad. perspective like, do yeah. we have? Nothing. I, I can't even name a Nickelback song, but I probably like one. I, yeah. I don't know why they get so much hate. Yeah, I, I bet. They're, they're it, I bet you, you could trick me. You could play one, and I'd be like, "That's catchy," and they'd to, be like, "That's Nickelback." To me, like, you got to me. There was <laughs> yeah. a time there in the early two thousands, and maybe around, but just before twenty ten, where all of those rock music sounds just like everyone <laughs> did this. Everyone <laughs> did that. It was all fucking breaking Benjamin and Creed and and all that stuff. And they say that up. Uh, Come on, get the, not not all sound of them sound that way. They all something. sounded exactly the same, and I think they were one of them. I don't know why Nickelback got singled out as as awful when so many of the other popular musicians were literal criminal criminals. I, I don't want to miss out on the R. Kelly thing. I I, I was listening to uh, R. I like his music; it's tremendous. But I was playing Diablo yesterday. I wanted something in the background as I mindlessly found every statue of Lilith. Christ, every <laughs> one of them. Don't eat. Guess how many hours? Think about it while I finish this story. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I'm listening to R. Kelly, like random shit I've never heard. The fucking B-side shit. And he's like, I'm going to flirt. Yeah, yeah. And I'm like, oh, yeah, I like this. This is kind of cute. If your girl come around, I'm going to flirt. Yeah, yeah. I your wife. I don't care. I'm going to flirt. Yeah. <laughs> and it's he just keeps going on about how I don't care. I don't care what you say. I'm going to be after your girl. I'm going to be flirting with her all the fucking time because I'm R. Kelly. And I and I got this and I got that and you don't. She better be loyal. She better be. And it's like this. I'm like, R. Kelly's threatening to cuck me. I got to turn this off. <laughs> I'm gonna I was getting too. upset. <laughs> Kyle is marked safe from being cucked by R. Kelly. I, had, no, I this, was like, God this song is it, we're going like back to Marty bullying. Robbins. <laughs> I like to listen to Marty Robbins, like the old w country western songs. As I ride my demon horse through the, through the, uh, the, I don't know, the mystery realm of Diablo. You come up with a number how long it took to find all the statues of Lilith. I'm gonna guess nine hours. Nine hours is really? right on the fucking money. It wow. took me nine fucking hours. That sucks. That is yeah. brutal. I, I had Kyle and I've been playing a lot of Diablo four recently, and I played so much last weekend that like i think i woke up and like saturday was an off day for working out and i played diablo from when i woke up until i went to bed and then i woke up sunday and skipped my workout and played diablo all day to the point that like then when i got off at night at like 1 40 in the morning sunday evening i immediately went from like hyper focused on <clears throat> the aspects i was working on to make my character better to immediately standing up and being like what are you doing? Like, <laughs> what are you doing? The whole weekend's gone. Two days. It felt like five hours. It felt like five total <laughs> hours of time. And I would like, I'd be, I'd be playing with Kyle and Scum, and I'd be like, I'd look over and I'd be like, all right, six fifteen in the evening. I should order dinner soon because I'm not gonna cook. Look back over eleven twenty five. Nothing's open. I'm gonna like. It's like, oh, well, I don't need to eat anyway. I'm leveling, and it was like, I and last night, like I, I was like, I think I'm gonna. I, I have to take a bit of time off Diablo or I'm going to burn myself out. And I knew that was the case when I had an enormously long and vivid dream about like most of a whole dungeon where I was excited at how well my corpse explosion combos were going off. And then when Your I woke dream. up like in my dream <laughs> and I woke up from that and was like, that was it wasn't a, the dreams that are just brief. It was my whole night. Like I was dreaming about that game. And it's like, if I play this anymore, I'm going to burn myself out and be bored of it. I need a few days of, of chilling. So I don't, do you guys yeah. do that with like RPGs? Yeah. Or like if oh, it's yeah. super fun, you can have too much fun, overdo it. And then be like, fuck this. Yeah. Like, we play too to, much. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm backing so off for a bit. I don't want to ruin this game for myself. I do uh, that yeah, with TV Cody, shows. 
Cody's currently like Cody Donut is currently doing that with Diablo. Um, I'm behind the curve a little bit, so I haven't gotten into Diablo yet, but I've just now gotten into Witcher three for the first time somehow. Uh, oh, so oh nice. I've never played that one. Having a really good time. That'll last forever. It never runs out of side quests and fucking herbs and potions to find. I'm finding that out, and it's a little frustrating. It's like every time you need to go get an item, it's like, oh, uh, before I can give you that item, here's three quests you need to go on, and it just yeah. infinitely branches out. I'm yeah. like, dude, I don't even fucking remember why I'm here. Yeah, if you like if you like Witcher, this is Diablo is a better version of Witcher. It has the a richer, better story, I think. But alongside that, you're coexisting in this online world with a bunch of other people who are all doing different things but you'll notice every now and then hey you're here to do the same thing i'm here to do huh mm -hmm. they're like going to the same statue or whatever and i don't know how many people are in that realm that world but you'll randomly come upon some guy getting his ass kicked by some monsters and jump off your horse and fucking slay the shit out of him and just like and like ride off into the sunset as he collects the gold it's fun yeah the, the multiplayer aspect is is what's really making it neat to me i want to do the pvp thing where yeah. you try to kill other people is there Maybe a lot of PvP, PvP like bullying and shit since it's all on? No, there? you have to go to a special area, like an arena, to to yeah. do any PvP at yeah. all. Everything it's else not is... that popular, apparently. Like Scum the was PvP. running around, and he was when you had gotten off, and he and I were playing last weekend, and he's like, "I'm gonna go PvP," and he was like. Maybe half an hour later, he's like, "I don't know if I'm just stupid because I keep pulling the map up, and I'm in the PvP area, and I am alone, dude. Like it's me." hanging out here like i'm not seeing anyone who i wandered through there there's there there were people there he may have been in the wrong spot like there's always people there but i haven't done it yet my character's too weak it's a super fun know. game if people haven't tried it just don't get too into it it's it's there's so <laughs> many ways to level up and everything it's it's addictive and it, it it does that fucking number thing that gets me so much where every time i shoot an enemy numbers pop up with how much damage you're doing and you got to get that number to go up and then they keep <laughs> enticing you because at level 55 to 56 your number goes from it's, you know 1200 to 5000 and then from you know that's 5, huge job. to 12000 like it just keeps getting bigger and bigger what, it gets up to of, millions yeah it gets like, like, like later on you see you see yeah. these end game uh, characters and they just walk into the dungeon sir it's like the end of avengers and the entire enemy army is there but it's mm -hmm. just you and, <laughs> and it's 15 seconds Tighten later everything is dead 15 seconds and it's all dead because you just hit everything and it just goes Four million, three million, eight million, and and everything is dying so fast. It that part's addictive to me. There's just so much dopamine being fed into me when those yes. start popping off. I can't help it. I like all the effects on the screen. Of yeah, it's just it's it's so yeah. much stimulation. The um, we're we're like demigods or something, or seemingly. I, I think I think mm -hmm. somebody said we're human, but whatever the fuck. I, all I know is each of us has the powers of an Avenger, and we're all using them simultaneously on this one guy. So it's pretty hilarious, the shit that's going off on the screen. I'm causing a literal lightning storm with six tornadoes, and the other guy has manifested uh, an anaconda the size of a skyscraper, and it's coiled around the bad guy. And Taylor has, like, I don't know how many of his skeleton 12. men have come with him. Yeah, there's 14 people with, <laughs> with Taylor, and they're all punching him and shooting him. And just, mean, Meanwhile, really this funny. poor motherfucker just had a minimum wage job to guard a, a, a crypt or some shit. He <laughs> right? like, oh, yeah. come on, dude. He's just an innocent level 53 butcher trying to make ends meet, and yeah. we're killing him. Yeah, it's a fun game, um, it, but it's... <laughs> You know, I get addicted to things. I'm, I'm moving this week, so that's going to definitely keep me off the game a little How bit. How far is your move? That'll be a good tea break for you. You mean in distance? Oh, like, yeah, like 20 minutes. minutes or something like okay. that. Um, it's, it's such a better area. Um, um, for the what dog, makes the area better? It, it's all about the dogs. I've got like a... Right now, I've got a small backyard, and I have mm -hmm. to run them on a lead because I can't put up a fence here. Um, mm -hmm. Where I'm going has an enormous yard with like a basketball court in it. There's a bat. I have my own little... Not like a, I shouldn't say basketball. There's a hoop with like a concrete pad out there. You're going to get uh, into the game. You and I are going to talk stats and stories oh. on the show. <laughs> no, I, 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 I'm not even going to buy a ball. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm not, I'm not, I won't do that to myself because I know. Throwing five pound it. dumbbells through the hoop. <laughs> I remember every time I've ever played before and just really hating it. But uh, I will be able to play with the dogs out there because, um, and, and just go crazy and get a bunch of dog toys. I'm going to get one of those um, ball things that launches the ball for them. And you know, fucking, it's gonna be fun. But, I used to uh, play with I, a lacrosse stick because they bring the tennis balls back so slimy and disgusting. Uh, What's the thought? Yeah, you scoop them up and sling them. 
Have mm-hmm. you seen those things that the dogs like load with the ball and then it launches it for them? <laughs> I have, but I've never trained a dog to load one. I'm afraid th- the fear isn't spending $250 on a dog toy. It's spending $250 on a dog toy that your dog is too stupid to use. Mm-hmm. Because <laughs> then people come around like, oh, does he know how to use it? No, he's fucking stupid. Not as stupid as me for buying that, though. <laughs> my, my dog yeah. trained me to put it in there for him. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, my, my old dog, uh, my, my, my ex always said, you know, oh, she's so smart. She's so smart. And I look over. And it's like a, it's a lab a German Shepherd mix. And I look over, and this dog has its nose in the water bowl, blowing bubbles. And I'm like, you know what? This is like a dad moment where you just look at your kid like, you know, maybe college isn't for everybody. <laughs> oh, yeah. college is perfect. Should we wait? Let's wait for Taylor for affirmative action. I was pumped. Oh, I didn't yeah. know it was coming. Mm. It's nice when we get a win every now and then you weren't even expecting. Um, I, I, uh, I'll wait on Taylor. I won't. I, won't yeah, yeah. I okay. do want to talk about, I mean, let me find like a nonsense topic that I've got here. The Belgian <laughs> shot putter. Um, there was some sort of international, like not Olympics, but some competition field and track. And um, the Belgian team could not field a, hur- a hurdler for some reason. There's oh, an injury, a sickness. Nice. Maybe they just couldn't make it. And you have to compete or they like forfeit. So they got their shot putter out there. And I don't know if you've ever seen a lady shot putter, but they're built like men, like like big brawny men with big asses. And sometimes Weebles they're like, wobble, they're like, but they don't fall down. Right. They can Flick that fucking shot put. And this big bitch standing next to those hurdlers, they look like different species. But she <laughs> toughed it out, and she basically steps over the hurdles. She jogs it out, and it was hilarious. Jo- Josh, can you... Uh, Josh. Zach. Zach, can you find a, uh, an image of of, uh, of her doing the hurdles? Oh, wow. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I had to Google that to figure out what the fuck you were talking about, to be honest, because I'm, you know, uh, uncultured swine, but... Yeah, that's a that's a big lady. That's a huge lady. That is, uh, hmm. that is a Siberian woman meant to last the winter. They have too many rules. Wow. That hurdle doesn't stand a chance. She doesn't need to jump. I like that she's like clearly an athlete. Like, like, like all jokes aside, like she's got some extra body fat, but th- she's one of the best people in the world. Actually, I think she was seventh place in the hurdles too, and, and the hurdles <laughs> and seventh place in the shot put, but not taking anything. <laughs> she got there. <laughs> wow. Uh, yeah, you know what? She is an athlete, just a different kind of athlete. Yeah, I, I agree. mine to be more fuckable, but eh. <laughs> if you're trying to throw a shot put, then that's what's what you need. I think that's the body style you want if you're throwing shot put. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah. she's not throwing shot put. They forced her to hurdle, but or, this or is forfeit. Running. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Taylor comes in late and schools us all. <laughs> <laughs> Shit, you're right. <laughs> oh, yeah. I ruined the story. I'm, I'm a bit of a track and field guy. You know, <laughs> I, 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 met, I told years ago how yeah, I had to do track speed. when I was in eighth grade and they made me do the 100 meter hurdles. And I was so <laughs> bad at it that I like made it over the first hurdle and then I clipped the second one and then I hit the third one and then I like just went to the left lane and jogged oh. it up humiliating humiliating just my like i I, dude going into it i remember coach fucking kirk was like taylor you're gonna run and i'm like really i'm a shot put guy and he was like no you're you're gonna run and uh i ruined i i I lined up next to my buddy sean who was fast as shit and i was and he was like giving me words of encouragement i'm like sean just stop it like, <laughs> like, you know, it's going to happen. And then like, I got blown the fuck out. And then he, and then uh, coach Kirk did send me to the discus and shot put area. And I was king of the short bus over there. Like mm-hmm. the absolute, like th- these people were not coordinated. They were not sent there because of potential. They were sent Damn. there because they couldn't run. And I was in that, that group. It was, it was, it was so fucking embarrassing just getting blown out. But I, I saw everyone like so far ahead of me not i there was no second that i was in it i was so far behind i guarantee everyone watching was like what's Mm. did is is this like a -a make-a-wish like what's (laughs) (laughs) what's happening here with this dumbass uh do you guys ever really get embarrassed by something athletically in front of like there there were girls from my grade there i've talked about swimming (laughs) and the lore I tell is that I took to swimming and I was immediately one of the fastest guys in the team, etc. The reality is I had been surfing for like six, seven years before I joined a swim team. And 
surfing was like my whole life, my whole identity. I do it before school, after school, etc. And at least for the freestyle, like the front crawl, paddling a surfboard and that are transferable mm-hmm. skills. So it, it wasn't like the first day success that I'd make it out to be. It's, you know, like, I don't know. Well, I immediately had good footwork in hockey. Yeah, you've been a figure skater for seven years now. You know, yeah. you, you can skate. All right. But butterfly, I didn't know how to do any other strokes. I only knew how to do front crawl. And in college, my coach asked me to do butterfly. I'm a fuck up asshole at this point in my life who can't take anything seriously. So I do this exaggerated butterfly where I hump the water like three times more than I thought you were supposed to. Mm -hmm. And he's like, perfect. Keep going. And I became the team's butterflyer and had a school record at the end of the year. But that's how I took the butterfly. Yeah, I love how your embarrassing story just comes out with you being like the top athlete in that. <laughs> you know, like, well, that didn't I, seem like it turned out too bad to me, man. Yeah, yeah I, I it was any... the opposite. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that it's that's how I learned butterfly. I was being an asshole trying to hump the water like super big, like like it was funny, and it was just the stroke he was looking for. I did that at one point with like middle school basketball. I was like not putting my hands up high enough to defend, and so I like he's like put your hands up, Taylor, and I like was just like was aggressively bad with it, and mm-hmm. he's like perfect, and I'm like, Re- okay, like <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 all right, well you, uh, you got me, like <laughs> you, you knew if you encouraged me to look like a retard, I'll ball even it out and come down to the appropriate height of of basketball hand defense or whatever. Uh, Brandon, do you did you have any awful embarrassing sports stories growing up nothing too crazy i just know that like oh god it's like you were saying with uh with your thing like i was i was in uh i did baseball like i did soccer in middle school baseball like t-ball and all that Mm -hmm. stuff but i did i was on varsity baseball uh for my school and it was not because i was good enough to be a varsity athlete it was because we didn't have a fucking jv team so it was, yeah. I was, I was the king on of the technicality, king of right field, dude. I was <laughs> great at being the one outfielder. They pray nothing ever goes to. So I was, I was younger than everybody too, but it was just kind of like anytime anything came my way, I'm just like, fuck dude. I was, I was daydreaming <laughs> out here, man. Nothing fucking uh, happens. There was nothing. Oh, double ahead. vision. Right. So I see two of everything. I, these glasses are corrective in that way. But and it's something I normally just deal with and cope with. And yeah, I can kind of pull it together if I concentrate. But half the time I don't concentrate just because I don't need good vision right now. I can I can make it work hmm. because of that. I sucked at throwing and catching like it just isn't hmm. really my thing. Yeah, if you, if you see two balls, you're not going to be good at hitting it with a baseball. And it's really hmm. tricky to hit something with a bat. The ball's moving. And the, the, you have to hit it with like the right part of the bat or the right part of the swing. Yeah. There's a lot going on. It's easy to mess that up. Mm-hmm. So I wasn't good at this game. I didn't play much. We're playing in gym class and the ball comes to me, which is worst case scenario. And this guy who's good at baseball runs up to me. He's like eight feet away. He's like, throw it to me, Woody. Throw it to me, Woody. But this guy's not my friend. I don't trust this person at all. And I can <laughs> see the play in the infield developing. And he's like, throw it to me because he thinks I'm going to throw it to the wrong base. I don't trust this guy. And I'm like, I'm not going to be made a fool of and throw this thing eight feet so that you can throw it to the infield. So I throw it to the wrong base. (laughs) (laughs) We lose the game. Everyone's (laughs) so mad at me. (laughs) It came down to that. Yeah. Oh, no. no. Gym class. And I fucked everything up. Uh, see, that's a good one. That's just like no, everybody's gonna be like Matt, 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 Matt. <laughs> just see, fire it the to intent. the third baseman and you know, the first baseman, whoever it is. See, I had all these embarrassing memories. I just zapped them out. It's, it's super yeah. easy. Dude, I remember uh, I was doing a a tryout for ice hockey. I was a, a goalie in ice hockey, and the way that goalie tryouts work is you have your own tryouts when you play for you know, a higher level team. They have like 20, 30 goalies, however many people are competing to try out for that team. And they like every tryout, the first thing they do is they fuck with your endurance and your ability. And like, they see who is flexible and who has endurance. And I remember being like 25 minutes into that tryout and thinking like, I'm, I'm going to die. Like, this is the most tired I've ever been. I, I can't believe like I, is everybody else this tired? Am I the idiot? Am I the like out of shape moron? Like I thought I was good at hockey. And then this dude 
on the ice, another goalie, like after skating again, he like stops and then we all start going back and he misses a whole skate back and then you get back again. And he's like, and he like, he threw up on the ice and nothing gave me more confidence instantly than seeing someone else throw up during a tryout because it's like, I'm not that guy. Like I'm, I'm not that guy right now. Like I'm, I'm in the group of guys who are under control. Like that guy's the vomiting guy. And so like, ironically him doing that inspired me to like have more energy because it was such a fear of being that guy i can't be the guy that like is being pointed out by the coaches because the coaches are up in the stands and like you start vomiting they're gonna be like uh number 23 who's that stevenson yeah gone he, he's not getting invited back tomorrow so you, you don't want to vomit during a tryout but if you vomit during training i was always a little impressed that's like yeah, if it's someone who's like in really good shape, vomiting. Yeah, yeah. yeah I've yeah. seen it a couple times. I wasn't on the team, but I saw. Uh, I guess I was watching a track team workout or something. My girlfriend was on the track team at the time, and uh, guy, he's working out. He's kicking his own ass with the effort he's putting in. He puts his head into a trash can, and this trash can had you know it has a lid over it, yeah. and little door in the front. So he puts his like shoulder deep through that door, vomits. And then gets back to training. And I was like, you know, that's actually pretty badass. I've seen yeah. it in swimming a lot, too. Well, in swimming, yeah. if you're outside oh, the pool no. and you vomit on the, like, cement, that sucks. But it, it, anytime I've seen it, it's been, like, super watery and not that gross. Mm. One guy, though, put his head in the fucking skimmer, which is that little thing with the door in the oh. pool. And I'm like, that, that's just not how you vomit during swim practice, you asshole. What a <laughs> douchebag. Like, what are you talking like, about? It's all going, right there. It's going like to the filter, I guess. But it, uh, it's, it's the, the ultimate disgusting. shared space. You can't <laughs> read <laughs> it. Get so fucking rude to vomit in, in the pool. <laughs> like, like how many everyone parts is, per million of Steve's vomit are we all <laughs> sitting in? Yeah, uh, mm -hmm. tastes a little like Buffalo Wild Wings in here. <laughs> just, a, just a tiny bit. It's Tyler, always just uh, the water you're drinking during training. We were talking about any, do you have any embarrassing sports stories? Being embarrassed in front of a crowd or girls in your class? Of course. Yeah. I play sports. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, man. I remember like like last game of the year, I like I was pitching and like my arm was just numb from throwing. I'd thrown the whole game. <clears throat> and I couldn't throw anymore. And I'm looking in the dugout like, I'm done. Get me out of here. And nobody's getting me out of there. And I little me should have called fucking time and been like, get me out. I'm done. I can't throw. Anyway, I, I think I walked the, the game in and lost it. You know, I think I oh, walked no. in the run. You know, I couldn't I couldn't throw. It was, my arm was numb. I'd thrown, I don't know, 70 pitches or something. Well, that's league, bad coaching still. or management. Bad it management. was. It was. That guy was weird. I remember um, he hmm. was a man that. Man, you just want a size larger on that shirt, brother. Like, like I don't know what you're trying to prove. Like, what? catching strays here, bro. What's up? <laughs> well, I've been a medium since I was 15. It's just like you know, breaking off. Of you know, those come an extra large, Dave. Uh, it's not yeah, that, good. that's the. I remember this was in high school. I was. Uh, this is for my my high school team. I was playing goalie, and there were a couple couple girls from my class who so if you don't know if you're from a state that doesn't have like hockey as a popular sport um hockey is not ever affiliated directly with the school or in most cases it's not because it's really really expensive to insure because it's more dangerous than than football and so like it's not connected to the school and so whereas if you are going to school and then you go to a school related football game there's some rules regarding you know what you can and can't do there hockey it wasn't like that and so all the the crazy kids would go to the hockey games and be wild and that included all the cool girls right and so i remember it was the last game of the season if we won we moved on if we lost we were eliminated and we were in overtime and i let a goal in that went high glove which is embarrassing to let in you should never let a high glove one in ideally and I remember I went down in a butterfly to save it, which I shouldn't have. That was bad positioning anyway. And like went up, missed it and had that feeling of like the season's over. You just you just made a mistake that cost this. And like I was looking up to the left at my glove and past my glove were the stands where I saw like three girls from my grade who were like popular. And like I made eye contact with one of them and was like super just briefly embarrassed, even though there was no reason to be. 
I found out later that girl actually had a crush on me. So, I was, so that makes me pretty cool. Up until that moment. Up until that moment, and then she's like, "This guy fucking sucks. He's got. He, I thought. I thought he had cat-like reflexes. He's an idiot. Missed that puck. But yeah, I, I like made eye contact with her, looked away really quick, and was super embarrassed. That sucks. Just, just fucking up. It's your fault. Everyone, goalie. That's very evident. Like, it, you, every people are mad at you usually. You're muted, Usually, buddy. when a goalie fucks up, there's this, there's a goal. Like, yeah. if anyone else fucks up, eh, it's a couple steps away from a goal. Do you know how the, the one of the worst parts about being a goalie is letting the puck in and then having to stand up, turn around, and pull the puck out of your own net and then hand it to the ref? It's like such a such a demoralizing thing to do. Mm-hmm. It's like you should get the puck. I'm in a bad mood. <laughs> like you should you should be helping me out. But I would fish the puck out if I was in position. Yeah. yeah. Or there were the weird. there were the immature goalies who would like get mad and like shoot the puck down the ice, and then the ref would be like, I, Ugh, and have to like skate down the length of the ice and get the puck. In my head, it was like it's bad enough the puck is in the goal. We're not gonna let it hang out in there. You know, we need yeah. to erase this mistake. You got to get it out. Yeah. Yeah. Man, I do not miss that at all. What a terrible position to play in sports. Do you ever think about playing again? No, because if I played again, I'd want to be a forward because I'd want to learn how to dangle and be, You'll get hurt. And be you know, yeah, I would likely get hurt. Um, Why would you get hurt? Because it's because a I, I, sport. I, he's adult man and then playing with he's other an adult men. When someone <laughs> smashes into an oak tree, you don't worry about the tree. This is Taylor motherfucking. Yeah, that's true. That, I, I will do you're, that. You're describing why he'll get hurt. They'll say his big ass and they're going to hit him so hard, not knowing he hasn't played hockey in, I don't know, a decade. <laughs> yeah, and, and, when, and he's going to fall poorly and he's going to blow a, a knee out or an ankle thing. Lift your elbow up if you see him coming, Taylor. You won't be able to walk right. That's how I play. Yeah, <laughs> Taylor have to get one of those, those canes with the four fucking like points of contact. <laughs> I have, I have, I have, I have uh, tennis balls on each one. Yeah, yeah. I have four tennis balls on my, on my cane. I'm, I'm 30 There's, and you're like, was it cool worth it? Way to have one of those either. I There's a cool never, way to have a yeah. cane, but not one of the <laughs> tennis ball ones. Kyle was right. I should, <laughs> <laughs> I should I, never have played. I now took I'm, a skate to the throat. <laughs> my battery. Yeah. Now I'm paralyzed and I'm not even paralyzed. And now I'm, I can't even speak right because my robot <laughs> is next up and I'm not a physics genius. That was coincidental. You have to do one of the, off again. you have one of those systems where you use your tongue to direct a cursor on a screen. Yeah. It's like, he's saying a lot of slurs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He's pissed. Life's not going well. <laughs> but his well, spelling finally Hawking? came in handy. And? Oh, it's not such a worthless <laughs> skill now. Yeah, Here's his specially curated keyboard. There's no N. <laughs> <laughs> I want to claim a small victory over the submarine um, um, mm. uh, talk that we were having the other night. Okay. Okay. I kept saying, yeah, they could find human remains. They found the wreckage, so why wouldn't they find some human remains? Who I think Chiz with was you? like, Chiz. And Chiz was like, oh, no, the bones will, like, liquefy. And I quickly, I was like, no. Like, maybe eventually, like, yeah, seven or eight eaten. miles, they'll liquefy or, like, crush or do something. But no, there'd be bones and, like, goo and stuff. And, and not everything's just going to evaporate into nothing. There's skull and, and bones and teeth and shit. And yeah, they found them today. They found they they found the fucking wreckage. They pulled it up, and there's chunks of people in it. Really? I want to yeah. see the chunks of people. I wonder what they look like. Because I Can actually I had show no... you the chunks of billionaires. It doesn't diminish my desire it, to see if, them. If they were broke, they'd show it to you. But these are billionaires yeah. now. Yeah, That's true. Yeah. Yeah, for, I was always if shocked. We got to see Osama. Tent imploded. We totally see it. Like, yeah. What happened in here? <laughs> Gross. <laughs> Shit everywhere. <laughs> I uh, yeah, I, I don't know what I would have predicted for the remains because I heard that like it imploded in like a nanosecond, and this guy who was probably full of shit was like, "Your brain takes 0. 0.2 seconds to." register anything and these guys died yeah. in point one so the good news is they died before they i'm willing it. to bet you're on edge when your sub's about to blow up and you're i'm willing thinking. to bet everything he said is horse shit that, that there is no standard as to how long things take for to recognize mm-hmm. and i doubt they died so quick that they didn't know it was coming but anyway i do buy the idea that this implosion happened very quickly and i don't know what to predict would be inside maybe the people turn into some sort of fluid that washes away I mean, it was I so many it was atmospheres expelling. of pressure that I would imagine that they would not be conscious for any part of that sub being filled with water. 
like not even close. Yeah, I think if it's just a big pop, mm-hmm. then I think as soon as it hits them, you know, the, yeah. there's no agony. Like, I would say that, you know. Yeah, it's a great that's, way yeah. to go, dude. We all I'm have not to a, go some way. Like, shit. That's I'm not, not afraid bad. of pain. I'm afraid of agony, right? Like, like I don't want to lay there rolling around. My guts are hanging out. I watched that Ukrainian shit, and, so, and I'm like, this is not for me. This is rough, you know. You see, you see guys in agony over there on both sides, and uh, it, it's 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 not fun. And I game. see a drone drop a grenade on someone, and yeah. this is clearly a fatal hit. And then the next grenade just seems gratuitous. It just seems like like we brought two. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, dude, did you have just a waste to waste of money twice? At, he was probably going to die. He definitely wasn't going to fight again. Why would you nade him again? When you watch people play games, like over a period of time, you, you start to recognize the meta, and then you watch it shift. In Tarkov, you'll see people using AKs, and then suddenly, oh, you know, M4s are back in Vogue. Uh, you, you can watch that happening in Ukraine. There was a time where they were using, like, the Vogue 17 grenades, mm-hmm. and then you could tell that wasn't lethal enough. So they just put two of them on there. And then clearly they got this huge supply of, like, F1s as well. So, so now I see them dropping two of those at a time. And then recently, I see I see like a whole new charge that might be just a Ukrainian made drone bomb that they're making now. All sorts of stuff. It's have you seen that uh, the shit about the Fanta bombs? No, I haven't heard about that. Tell me, I don't know what that is. Uh, so I, I hope I'm not talking out of my ass here. Uh, some of my buddies down here in Texas, they uh, uh, Texas Machine Gun Explosive like uh, Ordnance Co. They uh, they replicate a bunch of stuff like they replicated the breaking bad like tortoise bomb with the head on it like oh, hello cool. da mm-hmm. like all that shit uh this one that they did it's basically like anfos explosive or whatever and with ball bearings around it in a fanta soda bottle that is apparently okay. like a ukrainian improvised grenade so they tested the effectiveness of that and some of the shit that they're doing out there is just like you know it's the necessity is the uh, the mother of all invention like yeah i guess they've just got it maybe wow. a, what do they have in the center to what, what's their hmm. What's initiating the, the, the Fanta pop? Bomb? Uh, the Fanta bomb, yeah. Uh, yeah. I, something like, uh, I'm sure they're using all sorts of different stuff. Any kind of like blasting or like either dead cord mm. or I'm sure like uh, a grenade, um, yeah. like the cap of a grenade would do it just fine. Yeah. Just fill a charge in there. Like, what is it? Something, something reliable. I was always scared of fuses. Like, like, like the, I don't know. Like, like fusing mm. techniques were always scary to me. Same, like, same buddy of mine got fucked up because of a bad fuse on a grenade one time. You How bad? Your life. Uh, it fucked him. Like it got him. Like he got shrapnel through legs and shit. Pretty bad. He was hospitalized, but like it, it wasn't life threatening. See, Taylor, you don't keep anything important in your thighs. <laughs> Whenever I, I would like, right, use right. detonating, <laughs> the only thing I would trust for fuse detonating things was actual cannon fuse because I could see the shit yeah. and mm-hmm. I knew how it worked. It's like okay, I know how how fast this burns. I know how much time I have. But anything else, especially anything that was like recovered, like we've disassembled something and put this together, I was just so scared of. Even the, the little blasting see. cap will just mutilate your hand. I don't want my hand. I never want my hands mutilated. I saw no. this video the other day, oh, and I don't know Venezuela or some shit. Come on, some dude picks <laughs> this dude picks up what he thinks is a smoke bomb, but it was a fuse burning, and it looked like a quarter stick of dynamite went off in his hand, and mm-hmm. it took off like it. He what? What he just said? He became fucking uh, the penguin. He, he lost multiple fingers, and and when you lose them it's not like a knife took them off it's this hamburger that dangles Mm. and and there's bone attached and ligament and sinew and shit and it's awful and it must be the most painful thing that kind of just smashing tearing apart wound you gotta stop watching stuff like this oh i watched one today undercover cops sitting surveilling a residence about an unrelated matter matter along comes a carjacker white dude with a gun rolls up get as soon as he pulls the door handle, the cop lights him up and kills him right there. His girlfriend, no, starts running up. Did you kill my baby daddy? Did you kill my baby daddy? And for a minute, the kid on the ground is still alive. He's like, what's your name? He goes, Clark. And later on, the girl goes, did you kill Clark? And I'm thinking like, totally. He totally killed Clark. <laughs> Clark's <laughs> dead. Clark was But dead. Clark shouldn't have run up with a gun pointing it at people. Dude, it was... All right, it, it was funny. I was, it, here's what happened. Clark playing on the ground dying, <laughs> and he's wearing... This is a, funny. Man, Keep going. Just, it's just, a just, great just, setup to your joke. You're, you're losing little bits out. of your soul, man. It, it, look, look, look. He's laying there <laughs> These dying. These videos. He's white. You feel better now? <laughs> <laughs> he deserved Clark. it. 
I don't care. I'm okay. colorblind. I refuse. Hey, where'd, all the, where'd all the cameras go? Where, where'd <laughs> he's laying there bleeding out, and uh, he's got the guns laying next to him. The cops standing over. He, he goes, "What?" He's on his radio. A guy just tried to rob me. You know, because some code. Get to me now. And the kid goes, "I didn't try to rob you." <laughs> he's wearing a ski mask, laying on the ground with a gun. And I just thought, man, you just in, just instinctively lie. Like, like, it's, it's clear did you see that you did. Where... ski mask? There's a cop. He's pulling some guy out. He has a black hoodie on, and the guy just be like, "I have to get one more thing from my car. I have to get one more." And the cop is clearly yeah. like, "Don't go back to your car. Don't, don't, don't." And he's acting like, like "Bro, you're really making a big deal out of this. Like, in applying this, like, don't touch me. Leave me alone. Stop overreacting to everything." I wonder if cops ever fall for that. Like, there, yeah. there must be a little social pressure for them to be like, "Wasn't that the?" Wasn't that the same guy who ran away and got hit by a car? Uh, this guy, his buddy ran away. He was in a gray sweat a hoodie and sweatpants, and he had mm-hmm. dreadlocks, and he had a gun. His buddy ah. starts running, and the other cop chases him shortly. They managed to find him a few blocks away, and uh, they shot him, and uh, he He's there dying. They're trying to save him after they shot him. He, I thought he was going to be okay because he yells out, you hit me, which everyone correctly interpreted as the chase is done. I'm no longer resisting. You hit me. Now I'm looking for friends. And 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 so the cops replied like you'd hope they would. You know, they're like, all right, who's got a, a chest seal? It sounded like it was a kind of bandage maybe. And um, they're trying to help this guy. His baby mama comes around and starts screaming and freaking out. Helpful. Not helpful. I thought the guy was going to be okay because he sounded okay moments after yeah. the shot. But he turned. I read the description and he died at the hospital. They always say that when they die right there on the ground, though, because I think they need the doc at the hospital to declare them dead. Yeah. So <clears throat> it'll be like remember on Succession when we as the viewer know that the that that one character has been dead for a very long time, mm-hmm. but they they're still doing chest compressions. You know, like, like people are getting tired of it at this point. I think that happens every a lot. Because whenever I, I've watched the entire police activity catalog, I mean, every single one of them, I started, just I went to the it. beginning of the uploads years ago and just let it roll. Just let it roll. Mm-hmm. Beautiful. Stuff. So much, dude. Uh, there's so a, much hundreds uh, of thousands of videos. The bad policemen get a lot of press when they do bad stuff. Yeah. But the ones on, is it police activity? It's a both there, which I love. Okay. I've only been exposed to good cops on that so far i've seen a couple of bad shoots that that were just uh, there there was that one where the guy's chasing the dude there's some domestic thing and he's running with his gun out and he's running around the corner and the dude just spooks him like the guy just like rounds a fucking corner and the guy is that he's chasing is right there and he just goes pop boom and just shoots him in the chest like one round Mm -hmm. you can tell the cop is like really upset about this he's just like not like did not mean to do it Mm -hmm. and the guy ended up dying uh the guy i can recall a bad shoot there was a guy in the woods with an axe or it might have been a hatchet you know, yeah. but you get it. And uh, I think he was reported as threatening people with this axe hatchet thing. Mm-hmm. And the cop goes up to him and shoots him like almost right away from like 30 feet. And it's yeah, like, I you kind of jumped the gun there. There really wasn't a lot of de-escalation. You, you showed us that clip and the intro to it. I'm like, oh, guy in the woods with an axe. Like, I'm probably going to come down <laughs> on the cop side here. And then I watched it and it's like, no, the dude's like eight trees away eight layers of trees away he's like what are you doing well dying now like and then <laughs> kills him in the woods hi i was getting some firewood pop, 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 pop. like no, he's the, probably getting firewood right no no because the cop <laughs> went there and up the no good. wielder had been reported as threatening people he was in the so, water with yeah. a paddle we don't know what he was up to so i assume that's true <laughs> <laughs> but uh wait for one threat or wait for the guy to start walking towards you all you yeah. need is a guy. If a guy with an axe starts walking towards you, who's coming down on the side of the axe guy? Who? Tell him to stop once, maybe. Just you know, like yeah. have him walk through one of your commands, or let him get within twenty feet yeah. or so. Put the axe down, sir. Yeah. You know what? One of the slickest things I saw a cop do recently. He's uh, comes into a parked vehicle, and they look homeless in there, and like like lots of sketchy shits going on. Oh, they don't have exactly the right paperwork, and and who, oh, I don't know, I don't know nothing about no warrants, and it's it's getting weird. And the partner is like, 
putting these mini stop sticks behind all the tires, <laughs> like without them noticing. These little they look like rat traps, like this little triangle thing. Uh-huh. And if they collapse it, it's gonna pop their tire. And it's those hollow spikes that immediately bleed them out. And sure enough, they take off 45 seconds later. You could hear it <laughs> as the car is leaving. It was great. That's pretty legit. Now we both saw the one, I think the three, everyone but Taylor saw that one at the strip mall, maybe. Yeah, I haven't yes. seen Yes. Yeah, the Texas yes. shooting. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so a police we need officer, Brandon's expertise on this one. Yeah, it starts off with a police officer actually talking to a mother and her two children, being super friendly with them and, and talking about buckling up in the car and stuff. And you and in the distance, you hear semi-automatic gunfire like loud. And he immediately goes into action, getting his gun and calling calling it in. And the family gets the fuck out of there. And then he it sounded closer to him clearly than it was because he goes on a very long jog. He does Mate. not jump rope this dude. He had no cardio. And in a him- hundred feet, he was sucking wind. And I, I hate to be well, that Monday morning quarterback because this guy, like this guy, immediately grabs his patrol rifle, runs toward the sound of gunfire. Yeah, like, he's doing the thing you want cops to do. Absolutely. So, like, you know what? I'm giving like 95 percent kudos to this dude. Executed really well. I agree. The five percent. I was thinking the same thing. I'm like, we just hear this dude huffing and puffing into his body cam. Like, I, I, I don't care that he's out of shape. I bet he's not even that out of shape. I think in that moment on a hot day, wearing all that gear, carrying yeah. a rifle in your yeah. boots, and then you yep. start running at what's about an eighth of a mile. Man, you have to wear pants. I'm not going to be pants. that far ahead of that guy, you know. Uh, but if he hopped in his car, he could have been there real quick. But it it clearly sounded close. Like he needed to get in the action right now. And you don't yeah. want to drive up on somebody who's out, who's standing with a gun because they're going to. You know you. what would be what would contribute to cops being in better shape is if they all had to kind of wear uh, postal carrier style shorts. Right? Oh, <laughs> because that, no, no, no. I want them up high for mobility. <laughs> the, 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 honestly the mobility is fine but the real thing is like a shaming <laughs> tactic where it's like oh i'm sorry officer but fuck you're 200 pounds overweight you have cellulite. to adopt by these yeah, i like Captain kyle's cellulite. idea i need yeah. to see that camel toe rook yeah <laughs> <laughs> moose Tell me that down, moose rabbit. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> sir why are we taking this so seriously the local <laughs> police department yeah uh, <laughs> this ain't me very soon i've seen some shit yeah. <laughs> it's a We're camel toe on the it. fit guys and a moose knuckle on the mm. Chris Christie's of the world. Oh, oh man, Chris he Christie has him. the worst body type. He Did you see fast. him? Almost, uh, he got caught falling asleep on that fucking plane recently. He, Wait, that's someone bad? should have checked on him. He could have died. <laughs> oh well, yeah, because it will. It just it was bad because of his posture. Like he looked like a oh. fucking like bloated corpse, like just laid out. Mm-hmm. I yeah. guarantee you, he needs a CPAP. He's, he's Chris one Christie of those, should like, have a guy there being like, no, do not take pictures of the governor or whatever he was. Like, have you ever seen that? They should just put a sheet guys. over him. He's like, he's so <laughs> fat. Tired. Don't like, wake him. You, you know the heuristic of guy who is like 5'8", but he's so fat that when he's That's sitting down, so he has like the torso height of like a six foot three man. Do you guys know what I mean? Like those fat people whose asses are so fat that when they're sitting... They look like like how Kyle would sitting down, like a six foot two guy. And then they stand up and they're like five eight. And it's just ass fat that's increasing uh, their sitting imagine height. Imagine having enough ass that it increases my sitting height. That's something that's an American problem. You're on a like, booster seat. <laughs> we need and there's to no such thing as an uncomfortable chair at that weight. I was yeah, then, I was reading about ass implants today and someone um was asking again? about how, how comfortable they were. <laughs> and uh, they were like, hey. What does it feel like to sit down with ass implants? It tastes the same as regular ass. <laughs> <laughs> but they said it felt like you were sitting with your wallet in your pocket for like a year. That sounds awful. Like like really uncomfortably, like you've got something in your pocket and then yeah, eventually like you just like Costanza yeah. wallet, you got mints. Yeah. Yeah. That's that's a you've been talking about thing getting one ass implant, right? You don't want an ass implant because then you it's, might no, I don't. No, I, there's might. no need no. No, you no. need corrective ass surgery. I do. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to put just a little titty in your left cheek. That's what right. I, we just need I one I, silicon I, implant in the hole. Not, yeah, not the hole you're thinking of, the three. hole that only Taylor has in the side <laughs> of the <titty. laughs> No, that makes me more enticing. I have a, I have a third hole. <laughs> so it's, oh. I'm unpopular. Yeah, no, it's, it, I'm, it's filling out again. All those, oh. all the 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 ruthless hip thrusts I've been doing for so long are finally like genuinely the, helping uh, that out. 
That and the dent puller you invested in. <laughs> that and the dent puller. I have a, a body plunger that I, you know, I stick on my ass and I pull it out. Uh, <laughs> it's all cartoony. That's not like a penis pump for your ass. <laughs> yeah, it just suctions it out. I got a I date just, tonight. Yeah, I got a date tonight. I got a. I'm gonna. I'm gonna wear like um like padded underwear, even out my right ass, my right upper <laughs> ass, to make it look better. Mountain uh, bike Brandon, bike I wanted underwear. to ask you because it's it's big news. You. You talked about, or talked to rather, the ATF directly. Uh, yeah. That's yeah. incredible. How did that go, and what what was the impetus of it? I, I want to know all about it. So I got uh, reached out to to be to participate in a field hearing uh, against the ATF. So uh, basically, they just do that. It, members of Congress will do these field hearings where uh, they ask for expert witness testimony. This in this case, it was like firearm shop owners who'd been shut down, and mm -hmm. you know my goofy ass for some fucking reason. So uh, they they had me come down and talk to that uh, talk to them and it was uh, uh, your 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 favorite congressman uh, it's uh, Matt Gates and Marjorie Taylor Greene were were there um, for Good the test ones. yeah the testimony two winners oh. oh yeah you know what I'll take my friends where I can fucking get them man <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you you, you, yeah. you got to be looking for allies in that room you're like Lindsey Graham whatever man sure <laughs> like <laughs> hop on board. But it's like, you know what? Way. There's there's a lot of stuff about, you know, certain things that they've done that, you know, just very performative, you know. And whatnot, was it Marjorie? But, you know, but was it her who had the campaign ad of her tanner riding a car? That sounds like something she would like do. It or was Lauren either her Bobert? or or Lauren, or Lauren Boebert. Like one of them for sure tanner riding a car with a Barrett. <laughs> and a campaign now, Lauren ad Boebert is, is much better. She's much more attractive. It's it's insane to be yeah. Well, first of all, Lauren Bobert can get it, yeah. Uh, but the <laughs> it was funny the people on Twitter saying like, as a brown man, Mister Herrera, how did uh, Miss Green treat you? I'm like like a normal fucking person. Like what the like just it's kind of funny like how much the the propaganda like we were told that she hates all Mexicans and they you know she won't even well, make she did eye talk contact. with her hands a lot. <laughs> <laughs> she did not, that's it was Marjorie like, Taylor Green, Kyle. You were right. Yeah, it was ridiculous. So they 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 were asking you if if she hated you because you have like a you have Mexican parent, like yeah, like she she was asking if like they were they were asking like how did she treat you like like, like a normal fucking person? What, well, what she asked there? for landscaping tips. <laughs> <laughs> she, she asked what my availability was on Thursday. Um, the, yeah. the route getting the 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 yard's getting a little rowdy. She she snapped at me when she wanted my mm -hmm. attention. She snapped at me. Can you imagine how rude that would be? She thought Smart. I was the green room person at first, you know. It, yeah, hmm. it didn't help because you kept answering like, "See, yes, Miss Green, yeah, definitely." <laughs> no, like, <laughs> yeah, I like God. I'm a, I'm a huge fan of God. No, no, <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> no, Mister Gates, no is here. <laughs> it's no is here. So that was. Were you intimidated at all talking to those those big wigs? Um, a little bit. It wasn't, it wasn't too bad. Uh, it was a prepared statement. So really it was just like, okay, can you read without read for five minutes without fucking it up and then answer a couple of questions? So it wasn't too bad. It was, it was, it was pretty neat though. It's neat to have the opportunity to do something kind of more official like that instead of just bitching yeah. on the internet. Well, you're doing more than rounding up to a hundred percent of people like protecting gun rights. So hell yeah. Two yeah, thumbs up there. To. Yeah, I'm, I'm just going on side quests now. It's like, you know, you, you do the YouTube thing for a while, and then it's like, okay, what the fuck else can I do now? Like, I just took a boxing match. Nice. Really? So, when yeah, when is, can you say when it is? Yeah, July 22nd. So it's coming up okay. soon. It's like three weeks from now, something like that. Who's your Who opponent? You? Yeah. Uh, I'm fighting a streamer named Action Man with the T replaced by a 7. He's... Um, uh, from my understanding, not taking it very seriously and just streaming for 12 hours a day, like hitting dabs and, you know, smoking cigarettes and uh -oh. not no. training. So, yeah. Oh, dude, what are you thinking? Who set this up? So the, here's the, the picture is a little misleading because. No, I, it's I, not. I, do you own this him. company? <laughs> I, <laughs> so I, I beat have the shit out of this fish, man. I have a better physique, but he has almost if, uh, half a foot on me height wise. That doesn't uh, matter at all. So, so he's like he's six, got reach. Four. He's got reach, but I never a fought bit. anybody who was his height. His height. Everybody was tall. That's also true. Uh, so, I, I'm feeling pretty good about it. Yeah. So you have you have experience boxing? No, none. I have never never been in a boxing match. This is I did like I've been I'm in the middle of like a six week crash course on boxing. So I've been training. Um, I it's too late for him to do anything about this now. But I've been training six days a week. 
on top of my regular lifting schedule and everything. So like I'm, and, and I've got fuck like him up. <laughs> some like gold glove boxer friends and shit are just like kind of coaching me and sparring with me and shit. Yeah. That's actually today. I just, you know, coming off of a bloody nose, fucking sparring for six rounds. So that was fun. We got, we got so to to Providence. What were you like at first? Awkward as fuck. Yeah. Um, completely like, you think you know how to throw a fucking punch. You're like, yeah. oh, I've, I've scrapped. I can do, you know, I can throw. And you don't. You fucking don't. Um, so I've been working on that. Surprising amount of footwork. Everything's starting to feel less awkward. Okay. Like I'm starting to move yeah. with purpose now. And I know that it's probably good. It looks awful to like an experienced boxer. But for me, only doing this for three fucking weeks, period. Uh, I'm, yeah. feeling, I'm feeling better about it. But, so yeah, I, people are like, oh, he's so slow. You're used to watching Floyd Mayweather, bro. Like lower your expectations. And after you spar a little bit, holy shit, like just looking at the pros like Mayweather and, and Tyson and whatnot, you realize like these guys are in a totally different league. They're like borderline not human. Yes. Yeah, so yeah. you uh, you're going to destroy this person. Does this other guy have fighting ex- <laughs> like that? Does he have boxing experience and that's why he's not taking it seriously? Or no? no uh, so I, both of us are green. Neither of us have uh, ever done any formal boxing or anything. And uh, the, originally, the guy I challenged backed out, which is why we were looking for like any opponent. And this was the only guy ah. that said yes. So, uh, you know what? Kudos to him for saying yes. But I I'm going to have fun. It seems like a huge mistake on his part to dude. If I agreed to a boxing match, the amount of focus and effort I would put into that driven by nothing more than the fear of getting my ass handed to me. Oh, so you can tell right. he's tall this is a problem. Does but, it you know, bother you when people call you a bully? <laughs> <laughs> Just it's type it. You know, yeah. People are saying. I, I was, you know, I was, I was really hoping he was actually going to take this seriously, which it doesn't seem like he is. But, you know, hopefully he's surprising me and just like not, not showing off that he's training. Cause I talked about doing the same thing. I talked about not <laughs> mentioning it. <laughs> Dude, he's got, Zach, you're going to scare him. <laughs> Calm down. Oh, he does this <laughs> and he mixes in some, like some punches. Like imagine jab, jab, jab. <laughs> if this I is, lost, this, yeah, is yeah. this is if making me kind of like him. and Spin i lost move. i would kill myself in the parking lot <laughs> <laughs> Dude, have you have you heard uh like sam hyde's little like he's talked about what he would have done if he would have lost his boxing match no. and it's funny like getting an insight from him because he's like dude if i would have gotten beat up by that guy i would have had to like quit the internet like I, I talked more shit than anyone has ever <laughs> talked before a fight. And if that guy went in there and knocked my block, and he like he was giving props to the other guy, he's like that dude was swinging hammers. Like if he would have connected, I would have been knocked out on the ground, and I would have had to like find a new line of work. Like that, <laughs> that, 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 that puts a huge amount of stress on yourself. Yeah, you got to go train with Sam. You got to get up to Providence and and have so him teach you I, the way I he did. Actually, Harley I was, turned him into I was, a beast. I was texting him a little bit. I was, I've been talking to Harley too. He's actually been really, really insightful because he's done two of these now. Nice. Um, but yeah, I was. I, I text a little bit with Sam. So I really, I think it's going to come down to if he's willing to, to, you know, break off a bit of time and schedules line up and everything because it is really fucking close. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, I, I'd love to just even if nothing else to add to the fucking lore. You know, just go out there for one day. And Dude, just, I love that now. We're like for thing. the like YouTuber boxing, like someone will always kind of upturn the apple cart just by being like, I'm going to train with Sam Hyde. Fuck you. And they just like yeah. you know, do that now. And for some reason they get upset by it. It's like, are you really that right. offended by a bunch of people boxing in a dirty parking lot? Like right, yeah. training? Oh, with a, with an alleged neo-Nazi though. Oh, but he's yes. also the ghost of Kiev. So it balances out, I guess. I don't know. Mm. Yeah, he's a hero. <laughs> The ghost of Kiev evens out all those other things, you know. He's accused of <laughs> with uh, all those schools, but that's fake news, as we know. I still love all that, like like with the Russian coup situation, and everything. Everybody's like they're using like fish tank photos mm-hmm. to say yeah. like you know Wagner Group uh, mercenary kills you know groom full of government officials. Yes, <laughs> the fucking AR fifteen. Yeah. That's awesome. Dude, it's, it's <laughs> unbelievable that there are still news people that run that. Like how you have to be intentionally ignorant to to not ha- imagine that imagine no one at your me- media company being like that's sam hyde dumbass <laughs> or I'll, I'll counter with this everybody in that media company who knows who sam is is probably like saying nothing they're like send it yeah they're <laughs> like i don't want to admit that i think uh world peace is funny so <laughs> I'm or more like they're fine. like i have the i could stop this from going up and save my boss's career 
or I have the opportunity to do something very funny. Yeah, <laughs> but fuck him. Yeah, <laughs> run this silly nonsense story. Uh, Woody, you had something you wanted to to. Oh chat yeah, Kyle. About, before the you? show, wanted to talk about this Supreme Court affirmative action decision. Oh, I was watching. Yeah. I was watching CNN, and this guy, what's his fucking name? I wanted to get it right. Fucking Kenny Kenny Zhu or something. Okay. His last name's X U. Um, he was the. Um, uh, I think he's Harvard alumni, and he's at uh, a big. He was a big proponent for this, and uh, he's the one they interviewed for it. And the interviewer was a black lady, and uh, he a fucking, proponent. Did he want affirmative action to end yes, or keep going? He wanted it to end. Okay, yeah. yeah, he was he was part of this this movement, um, and he destroyed her. It <clears> was it was they had this debate that went on for like three minutes, and she would ask these questions that she'd been tank. handed. And he, you would see his his little mind work. He go, and then you find a different way to answer. Like, Actually, no, I don't think that at all. I don't think socioeconomic status should be taken into effect. That's a whole different thing. And he, he just break her down and destroy her. She she had to end the conversation, get off the phone with him, and call an ally. <laughs> she, and the and, and and that guy, she was like, so you just heard the, the Kenny talk. What do you have to say? He's like, wait, why don't you let? Why don't you wait till Kenny left to bring your guy on? Like, like why don't you let Kenny? She lost the debate so too? bad she left and called a friend. Do you know how, what kind of a uber Asian you have to be to get into Harvard? Yeah, imagine. Yeah, this you gotta guy, you gotta be bright. He's like Asians aren't aren't overrepresented. Uh, over um, aren't underrepresented because of um their um their skin color. It's because they study twice as much as white kids. He said it's a cultural thing. It was really fun to listen to that guy talk. So, yeah, mm -hmm. I guess um, affirmative action was struck in, stricken down in college admissions. Um, specifically, they, they mentioned Harvard and what's the one in North Carolina? UNC. Chapel Hill? Yeah, UNC yeah. Chapel Hill. It's a... Uh... It's our most selective state school. It's a pretty good state school. Damn, this really sucks, though, because now instead of looking at the color of people's skin, they have to look at the content of their character. That's not Fuck. that's a terrible thing. man. You know, and it's funny. They specifically mention you can still look at the color of their skin, just not in the context that they used to. They used to be like, all right, we need, you know, a so bunch more black changed. guys and fewer Asian guys, etc. Now they're like, if you overcame some situation if you were like dealt a bad hand in life that's related to your skin color then we can still look at that but not just skin color you need to so show just me a some. little little work around there well it, yeah. i think you'd like it if you read the decision i think you'd be on the same team I, it was I saw justice it. Yeah. roberts okay I, I, or I read a part of it that said like oh you can still take into account everything we just said you couldn't <laughs> I, that's not how i interpreted it it was like Skin color in the context of overcoming a tough situation was like still a specific a, incident, kind of. Yeah, thing. yeah, like you know, like you, someone held this against you, maybe, and that you overcame it or whatever. But they can't do it as like the sort of the quota thing they used to. Like, ah, we've got too many Asians and not enough. Blacks. They'll let you speak. And, what, what it said was they would let you speak about it, but they won't like use it to uh, as a, as a qualifier. They they won't. So they won't right use now, it as a qualifier, they, but they're encouraging people to write, including their race. They're not encouraging. Their, they're allowing them. Just the um the the interesting thing is they're allowing the legacy Seems stuff silly. to continue, because that's oh that was never going to stop, dude. Those are the richest people in the country. You think legacies are getting into fucking Yale because they're smart? Sometimes you think no. like remember? Do you think George W. Bush got into Yale because he's they smart? said it's five times easier um for them to get in than uh, the than the average person. Then yeah. Here, can I read the part that I think I, that I thought Taylor would like more than he seems to? Nothing in this opinion should be construed as prohibiting universities from considering an applicant's discussion of how race affected his or her life, be it through discrimination, inspiration, or otherwise. But despite the dissent's assertion to the contrary, universities may not simply establish through essays or other means the regime he would hold unlawful today. I got a little mixed up towards the end there. Yeah, it, it, what it but, seems like is it's like a layer of distance going, uh, yes, we'll abide by this, but we're going to backlog something that effectively does something similar. That seems to be the goal, right? Wait. Also, I'm wondering what the what the teeth are there, where like if a, you know, let's say like a, a more liberal-leaning um, admissions board just decides to fucking do this anyway, like are they going to have to sue the school or something like that? Probably. I, it probably will have to sue the school. Yeah. The way I interpreted the decision is like, imagine you're a girl trying to get on the guy's football team 
and you're like, man, everyone thought I would suck. But once they saw me kick, I overcame this. And, and they really wanted me as part of the team because it turns out, even though I'm a girl, I'm the best cook kicker on the football team. And I became one of the boys. That's a way that you can use your sex to talk about a thing that you overcame in kind of a positive light. And they would like stories like that if it was related to skin color, but not simply a, you know, you need more black guys and I'm one of them. So invite me, you know, lower the bar for me, but not for somebody else. Mm. Did I, I understand. lay it out right? Okay. Well, yeah, yeah, I get it. I just, I still, it, it seems like you still think like there's a, a, a way to, that to could it, seems, exist it seems like just a back end thing where it's like, no, 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 we're not going to go based on this, but we're going to go based on, you know, and we're going to take heavily into account the, the, the aspects of your race <laughs> here and your sex here. And it's like, yeah. okay, well, then that seems, uh, not really in the spirit of the decision, does it? It's like it's, it's like Rick and Morty. It's like, uh, well, that just sounds like you know, uh, slavery, uh, affirmative slavery. action with extra steps. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's, like, yeah, exactly. it's hard to get this really right. I have this stupid lifeguard thing as a parallel. Before I became a lifeguard, there used to be an interview part, so it was like eighty percent whatever. I don't know, fifty percent athletic competition and fifty percent interview. Mm-hmm. And what happened in practice was the people who were like the brass for the, this is a city job were hiring locals. So like if you were, say, an Ocean City High School student, you might mm-hmm. get a leg up over some guy who's coming down from Philadelphia. And they thought that was corrupt. So they got rid of the interview entirely. And to get this job, it was just a straight up athletic competition. And they would hire you in the order that you finished. But that's a problem, too. For example, College kids who would do well in this competition were available from like May until August. Mm -hmm. And then high school kids who maybe didn't win athletically were available from June until September. So you got to have both. Otherwise, you have no fucking lifeguards in August when they go back to school and it's not Labor Day yet and the beaches are still busy. So I I feel you. But the running affirmative action, like it just seems like maybe I'm an idiot, but it seems like like... whoever's designing the trains and the roads and flying planes. Like I want, I want the best fucking guy d- designing roads. I want the absolute best guy being an engineer in charge of infrastructure. I want the best lady in charge of this, the best dude in charge of that. Like, like that, that stuff's important. Like it is back, important. Bringing it back around to the Titanic thing. Did you see that? The, where they talked about a for of action in that. Because the, the CEO was quoted as saying, like, our engineers aren't just a bunch of 50-year-old white guys because that's not inspiring. I did Everybody see that. Like, yeah, it's like, yeah, you yeah. fired the 50-year-old white guy who was like, you're mixing titanium and but, uh, carbon. You know, you battery. fired the, I don't know, experienced structural engineer yeah. that you may have needed. And guess that. what? He's not a fucking sub-expert because he's a 50-year-old white guy. He's a sub-expert because he studies subs. Where like, I was going <laughs> with my thing, though, was that you don't want to fully stock a freshman class based on SAT scores and nothing else. Because you might miss out on a real gem. Why? Like, if, if the goal is, like, an engineering school or something, why yeah. would you not take the most relevant information and, yeah, and well, use that to parse out who the most qualified people are? What would what would you say a gem would be in that context, if not, like, a good student? Yeah, I, I would imagine that there could be someone who's maybe not such a wilting flower, someone with some leadership skills, someone who's just fucking Captain America who got a 1570 on their SATs. You might pick him over some wilting flower egghead who got a sixteen hundred. Why? Why pick that guy over the the smarter guy who's better at the job being measured? You know, unless you need a football. I, I'm sorry. I don't. I, let's de- let's define what a wilting flower means. This to me is someone who can't speak in front of other people, for example, somebody who uh, doesn't have the same leadership skills, somebody who is just a follower. I mean, has we great take the and elective into consideration. That's sort of the same thing. I, I get. Some I don't know how you test that though, other than mm. the interview Vibes. process, right? Mm. Oh, the yeah. Inter- well, I mean, they count the interview process. I'm sure that if you come in there and you're a stuttering mess, that the, the, they probably take that into effect. <laughs> you know, not yeah. a literal oh, stutter. They'd they'd love that. We need. Some more. <laughs> oh, thank God. Disabilities. Check that box. <laughs> no, I um. Yeah, I guess all I'm saying is that there's something to be said for the interview and the life that they lived that maybe test scores don't fully capture. Yeah, I guess it depends on what you're doing. Yeah, I I really, yeah, I care about that less too. Like, I I would rather, if I would rather the egghead weirdo who loves thinking about how trains work and the most efficient ways for them to move, like that, that's the guy I want in charge of trains. Like the guy flying my plane, I don't want him, I want the guy who flies me to Chicago to get home from work and boot up Flight Simulator. Yeah, but when you're going down, he's going to give a rousing speech, though. 
Yeah, he's gonna, he's gonna give. He's like, hey, every, I gotta. We're all dug gonna die, but I got a great attitude, and I'm gonna give you the tight five. I've been and practicing. You know what? While I'm tucking story. my head between my knees, I'm thinking, you know what? This motherfucker's a leader. Yeah, this guy's <laughs> well, I, I still might be right though. Like, like you take the guy who's say ex marine, he might do better in that plane going down situation than the someone who doesn't have the same capacity to handle stress and trauma. Yeah, but for I don't every, know if I want for every combat adult yeah, gentleman we, we put into a cockpit. <laughs> Somewhere there's a smart Asian kid who get, didn't get in because he didn't get shell shock. That's you know that's true too. Like, that, like that's you, what's you, the there's other winners and losers oh, in this thing. Oh, you're right? slick. You're a slick talking underachiever. I see that in you. You're kind of like <laughs> me. That, wait a minute. There, there's some actually smart kid who who crossed all the fucking t's and dotted all the i's and studied yeah. hard every goddamn night. And you're gonna say no to him? Sorry, and you're yes white. Slick you talking and Troy that. McClure well, over here. See, Taylor, I'm I'm. I'm with you on that, actually. Like, I think considering skin color is it's wrong. It's wrong because there's winners and losers in this thing, and and I like fairness and kindness are what I use to arrive at on decisions like this. My family was really Jackie's family, which I'm calling my own right now. There were a lot of civil servants in that family. Her mom worked in the prison, uh, in the sheriff's department. Her father was a fireman. Uh, brother, uh, cops in the family. Uncle was a cop. Brother in law, tons of them. And what I know about New Jersey civil servants is there is affirmative action that's very strong. And it was just known. It sounds racist to say, but it's just flat out true. If you're a white guy, you got to score like 97% on your captain's test. And if you're a black guy, that number is like 82%. Mm-hmm. Because that's how the yeah. scores break down. There's that same scale action. for Harvard admissions. I race, believe you. Divided by yeah. race. And it always seemed wrong. Her father never made captain because his scores weren't good enough for the white guy scores. Yeah. Um, and I, I don't know. I was just like, God, it always seemed bad. Having said that, if they chose one guy who's captain over another guy, not based on skin color, but because one seems to get along with everyone while the other is universally hated, hated one can't stop being an asshole, but he scored higher on his captain's test. Yeah, I mean, like, there's more sense. to it. But that's that's just, also that's just a different dynamic of meritocracy, right? Yeah. So like you're just a you're it's it's not decided on like nationality, skin tone, anything. It's just like that is one thing that is a leader aspect for this job that you're better at, you know? Yeah. Yeah. That's what I was trying to get at. Like there's 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 more to it than just test scores. But test scores are matter, and and there shouldn't be skin color. That it seems like mm-hmm. the height of getting away from racism is no longer considering race in these kind of decisions. Yeah, because like stuff like that, like the story you just told, like that's where you could still build animosity, you know, in a post racism world, you know, because you know what? The best dude just get the best brought up is that is what the left's take on this is. And it's completely different. We'd be talking in circles right now because their point of view is, oh, no, this this rogue court is at it again. Now we have to find other ways to make our campuses diverse. Hmm. Full stop. That is their that is their entire interpretation of what has happened. Uh, forget about all that fairness nonsense. It wasn't about being fair. It was always about creating diversity on campus. Yeah, that is the that is above all else on the on the big py- pyramid of what this institution cares about. Diversity on campus is right at the top, and then maybe I don't know sa- safety somewhere below that, <laughs> and then yeah. educating people is like third or fourth. Like, like, like barely really there. Is. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I wonder right. what their side of it would be like if we had a good representative from college. Like, why is diversity on campus so important? Why is that more important than merit? I, I it shouldn't I, be. If I, I, you if should I have all the best, like the the idea that like, I think a lot of people have an idea that like Harvard and Yale create geniuses. Like that when you go to Harvard, you emerge and that if I went to Harvard, if they took me in and put me in their fucking whatever the most advanced program is, that I would be at the other end a genius and so smart. Like, no, Harvard is an elite institution because it traditionally chose elite, like the smartest of the smart people. It's not Harvard creating geniuses. It's geniuses created Harvard as an institution. That was the best part of Kenny's interview. He was like, that's why consistently blacks are at the bottom 25% of the Harvard graduating class. And she's like, well, um, wait, but it was so great. It, 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 he, said, he said it was unfair to put them in that position. Yeah. It was unfair to them. 
So like, uh, if, I can straw man, man, if I can straw man out, like what the left's argument would be on this, Hit us with I, it. I, I would assume it would be something along the lines of, you know, like institutional racism over the last 150 years is, is why they're not in positions to study as much, or they're, you know, not in, you know, secure enough homes, you know, two parent homes that do, you know, uh, are more likely to be, you know, academically, uh, excellent and things like that. And therefore we've got to use these affirmative action techniques as a way of kind of bringing them back up with the top. But in, in reality, it's exactly what Kyle just said. We're like, okay, well, if you're putting somebody who's, you know, whether it's their fault or not is a different question, but who's not qualified to be at that academic level, you're just setting them up for failure. Yeah. Yeah. Dude, I get really me... yeah, frustrated when I hear the argument that like these lower income people, they don't have the time to parent their children and help them study. Meanwhile, you got this other high income, you know, mom's a doctor, dad's an astronaut. They got nothing but fucking free time. <laughs> yeah. they're, they're always there by the kitchen table, just doing their kids homework for no, them. honey. No, not like this. Yes, commander. I'll be right with you. <laughs> Dude, right? the absolute delusion people have like about the amount of work like rich guys are doing day to day who aren't retired is crazy. Like, like the, the idea of, of a CEO, like doing nothing all day is like, yeah, maybe at some giant multinational firm where he's really not doing much, but like average CEOs at a small company, they're working every day. Yeah. Like other than stressed like, as shit. Other the than like CEOs. trust fund babies or something like that. Like sure. the people who are actually like, yeah, the CEOs, like the people that are actually doing the, yeah. the big work. It's like, Oh, you're, you know what what justifies this salary it's like the fact that nobody else can fucking do that but this guy yeah the fact that this guy created the business and like 80 people have jobs because of him and also Cisco that's probably CEO. just a bit more than the counter offer from another company exactly yes. <laughs> market, it's market price or else they wouldn't be paying it they travel a ton at the ceo level too they, yeah. they used to bring in cisco ceo to like I don't know. at and is making some big decision on who, which person's going to supply their routers and the CEO would come and help with the sales team. Let's be yeah. a, let's continue to be a CEO and landlord defending podcast. <laughs> I it, love it. It, it, it upsets so many people <laughs> when you, when you're like, dude, CEOs and landlords work so hard every day and you just live there like a fucking bum they do though <laughs> yeah, but the people but the people that get upset at that are the kind of people that don't tip their landlords and i don't trust them I tip my, <laughs> yes, yes. dude you have to tip your landlord oh you i'm going to use tip my landlord all the time <laughs> dude sometimes i sometimes I, I, I mean i used to rent i used to tell my landlord hey I'm trying to grind. And without the motivation of a higher rent, I'm not going to. So I'm going to pay you <laughs> twice as much this year. Mm -hmm. And yeah. I'm going to give you $5 million for that book you have that says how to make $5 million. <laughs> <laughs> so that's how Either. I do. Yeah. They're land chats, first of all. And, and without <laughs> them putting a roof over three quarters of America and growing, thank God. Tell them. <laughs> Dude, it, it's there's like truth to it though those. these people National that saved up the doubt now if you're born with money and you buy real estate that's a different thing but yeah. the people who like set aside enough money to buy extra houses and rent them out and make that happen jesus like fucking respect that they did what you didn't renter yeah renter I saw this. I uh, say that I'm, pejoratively. Oh <laughs> that's, such a, that's such a that was that was so Did much. Really there was so a much renter with there was, star. Dude, there was <laughs> <laughs> it's renta to you. God it's damn. Rent. <laughs> it's tenant. Tenant. <laughs> Dude, the amount of look me in the eyes, tenant. <laughs> the amount of venom that dripped off of Woody's saying. I'm here for inspection. <laughs> you, Woody's like you fucking renter. Dude, the only thing Woody hates more than the renter is an overweight renter. <laughs> you got fun money for food, you fat ass. Like, you can't <laughs> build some equity. Oh, I love that. I wish, dude, I would vote for you to be president if your only thing was like, everyone is too goddamn fat. Like, <laughs> they're like, what are we going to do about the economy? You're like, hey, I don't give a fuck. Fat ass. Right. <laughs> I don't give a fuck. That's, that's give a fuck. Okay, man. Hey, fat ass, don't you ever ask me that question again. <laughs> you know, like everybody like to ask questions, they have to like be on a on a cycle. Like <laughs> they have to pull their shirt up. The whole no, the whole room is a treadmill pulling them no away. From no, you. <laughs> no definition, yes. opinion discarded. <laughs> Get out of here. Whoever does cardio on. after uh, you the leave them in the press room for 30 minutes. I don't take questions for the first 20 minutes. I just watch them run. And the ones who are still 
still close enough to ask me a question are allowed. Yeah. Once again, first question goes to bodybuilding.com. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sure. We'll legalize what, uh, friend, I guess. What are your yeah. macros day to day? They, bodybuilding.com <laughs> never asks anything, even vaguely relevant. They're always, they're the number. The, the chief correspondent is the bodybuilding.com. What does I hear about How Chinese many, creatine? Hey, I wanted to confirm something from a thread we had in 2008. How many days are in a week? <laughs> because my friend of mine tells me Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and then the additional Sunday that it's four in a week, but the following is just, it'd be fucking hilarious. Them, yeah, like the body transformation of Jim Acosta. <laughs> I know. So meme. he can finally ask a you question. Know the meme. If, if you guys don't know how many fucking days yeah. there are, <laughs> if you guys don't know the meme, look up the bodybuilding.com how many days in a week saga there is and it is an internet forum fight from like 2007 where two guys argue for days about what constitutes a week because they argue like dude i work out four times a week and he's like no you work out monday and wednesday and friday and sunday and he's like that's four days in the week and he's like what about the next week and he's like that's four days too. And he's like, only if you count Sunday twice. And they're like, <laughs> they're like screaming at each other. And there are people like responding like, this is insane, guys. Just work out. Like, this is <laughs> I'm confused because the next week, does he work out Monday again? It's, I would have to, I, it's so psychotic. I can't remember their actually argument. I would have to, because that one point, the dude is like, they're making Excel sheets and stuff and like pulling up like Breaking, calendars and being like, showing. X here. Do you see X is under the day? Do you see the X under SU? That means you worked out Sunday. And they're like, yeah. And then I worked out Tuesday. And they're like, that's the next week. Like, like <laughs> yelling at it. It's, it's such a funny. Oh, he was double counting his Sunday, wasn't he? Was he was double counting his Sunday. He works out three or four days a week that he sells his four because yeah. of uh, and the other yeah. guy was so upset by it. don't you wish there were 10 days in a week yeah it would just make months eight. shorter eight ten's better though ten's, that, just no you guys are crazy ten... weekends come three times a month no 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 For the weekend's nonsense we're gonna do a whole different thing under my 10 day week system don't worry tell me that roll me through it <laughs> well i'm gonna count it like on bodybuilding.com so technically you'll get so it's a nine-day week. Off. It's a nine-day week. Yeah. <laughs> you count Sunday twice, so you get four days off a week. <laughs> Kyle's week. You, get, God. you only work ever three since, days a week. Ever since Emperor Kyle introduced midweek Sunday, it's been, it's been a goddamn nightmare for transit for everything. I'm sick and tired of church. Like, <laughs> Why aren't months three weeks long and each week being ten days? Be uh... Are you high? I don't. It's know. a way better. Not yet. It's a way better system. It's still <laughs> it just, thirty that, that days was, a apparently month. Apparently, it was just like such a high thought. Like, man, <laughs> you could just give that out to three, ten, ten days. Yeah. Are we talking about the calendar, or 12, are we talking about how we measure time weeks. now? <laughs> uh, the calendar, I guess. Like, it would take minimal changes to just. Well, <laughs> the computer programmers would be fucked. But, but if you could just go to three ten day weeks, I, I, things would simplify dramatically. We should change weeks to six days. But what do you do about the weekend? Fucking, but there's 365 days in a year. What do you do about the months that, that don't add up right? They don't it all have. We'll have five days off. Dude, every time year. time itself. You're doing is five a, leap a days concept. a year. As days long as we off. all agree, yeah. it doesn't matter. Just, but if you have to count them, even if we don't work them. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Add up that's it. We're just, we're just gonna have a five day month that no one fucking works, and we're set. We'll do it like um. What is that movie where you get to Spring kill break? each other? The we purge. can get Bernie's? The Purge. The Purge, yeah. Five Purge oh. days every year. I mean, this is, yeah, I'm bringing you around. Everybody right. thinks that they want a Purge, <laughs> but nobody wants a Purge. Nobody wants <laughs> no. that. I'm staying home. Nobody wants for, a purge. I, there would be landmines all over my yard for The Purge. Like The, the problem with The Purge movies and that I've never seen a moment of is that they don't account for the fact that you know the purge day is coming, so you would just be ready to pounce or, or like have explosives in somebody's car and be waiting to push the button or whatever. Like, there's no reason to begin your plot the moment the clock ticks over. I've uh, seen like four purge movies, oh, and God. Uh, they do account for like preparation and stuff. As a oh, matter yeah? of fact, home security is a big thing, and the um, you know, like in front of a retail store, they have the metal doors that sort of roll like down. Those. Yeah, people have them in their houses and stuff, and just turn yeah. them into little fortresses. But it's like, it's like you know, the tasty pistachio is in that shell. Like, there's some good shit in there, so they become or, targets. How about Dude, during the during the purge? Oh, what, what what if you just 
went the day before the purge to the person's house you wanted to target and just hold them at gunpoint until it rolls over. So then you just take a B and E charge. That I mean, that's easy. That's easy to beat. You this don't even is take a charge. Solid idea. You got conspiracy to commit murder there too, though, right? You just do it on the purge day. Oh yeah. When you committed maybe. the conspiracy, it was murder, even though retroactively it wasn't a murder. What if you the conspiracy? Of, uh... What if you first started conspiring the last purge day? <laughs> you, that's what you'd want to do. You'd want to document that. Mm. Mm. It's like I had a question about a lawyer, and I was talking to Jackie about it, and I realized Kyle might know the answer. My. So here's the situation: I've committed a crime. I'm oh. guilty of this crime right okay. they, they, let's all agree that i did this thing mm -hmm. do they i found the my, hard drive <laughs> do i tell my attorney that i did it or do i just are, are we gonna co-pretend that i didn't do this thing as we defend I think, me i have no idea i know in the movies um it seems like the good attorney is like like doesn't care like, like it doesn't matter to him uh and doesn't even want to know their job is to get you off yeah and then so make sure like, you don't go to jail yeah so, like i know i know my lawyer like never Kyle, even to lay out your situation you yeah. received drugs at a p.o box that you gave out to fans to, yeah. to receive any sorts of things there was right? plausible deniability sure yeah so do you tell time. your attorneys like <laughs> fans send the darndest stuff you know one time i got a cat head no um or no. are you like because oh, in discovery they're privy to everything that all the evidence so they're well aware that i'm guilty <laughs> <laughs> but so so you're, you're this is an open and shut case not in your favor no. like <laughs> well no see see that's the that's the thing about the law though it, it okay you definitely did it now let's make sure they can't use any of that stuff that says you did so so like and then we won like, like we won the state the case state, yeah. via that like it was like oh shit you can't use any of that stuff what are you doing arresting my client? And then they lost. And then they're like, ah, I got some guys at the federal level who can take this on. And because of the guns, then the search warrant didn't matter and whatever nonsense didn't matter. And it was all. Yeah. I was thinking rap. about it in the context of Trump, right? So Trump has documents. And when they subpoenaed him and said, you have to give them back, he told him, I gave you everything I had. And then he's been interviewed subsequently where he's like, mm. well, I still had my golf shirts mixed in with the documents. So uh, I just didn't have enough time, 18 months, to separate my golf short shirts from my classified documents. Um, that's why I told the government that I gave him everything. He, he's, he's guilty. I was wondering when Trump works with his attorneys, does he maintain that he's innocent, that he's allowed to have this? Or do they just push past all that and talk about how to get the best outcome for him? Well, I mean, I mean it has to in, in, in his case, it there's a whole timeline. Like they know he's he's guilty of what he's done. It's it's again a question of of arguing the point. It seems that their timelines are bad. The way they arrived at their evidence is was faulty, or the president's power supersede any and all barriers to him being an innocent man. That seems that's going to be their take, right? So they know he's they know he did all the things that they say he did. Their point is doesn't matter. That's not a crime. Yeah, they'll they'll just like it's it would be about framing, right? So like their yeah. attorneys would be like, okay, well we don't want to present it this way because that makes you appear guilty. But if we frame it this way, as though yeah. it's meaningless and silly, and every president does this, and it's you know that's the angle we'll take. And like I imagine it's much more like that. Where it's public like, relations you know, wise for sure, but I yeah. I don't know what it's going to be like legally because I, I don't know what the next steps are for him. <clears throat> I don't yeah, know, yeah. but I know what the next steps are for us, mm. and that's. Oh? sponsors great this episode of pka is brought to you by a brand new sponsor pharodistro.com pharo distribution pharodistro.com link is below are you tired of feeling like a mummy wrapped up in stress and discomfort well it's time to awaken your inner pharaoh and experience the power of wellness with pharo distribution Imagine stepping into a sanctuary of well-being where every product is hand-picked with care from the natural wonders of CBD, Delta 8, Delta 10, the transformative properties of reishi, lion's mane, amanita, and cordyceps. Our curated collection will transport you to a realm of holistic goodness. At Faro Distribution, we prioritize your well-being above all else. That's why every product we offer undergoes rigorous lab testing to ensure exceptional quality. Our team of industry experts, equipped, equipped with years of experience, ensures that each item meets stringent standards of safety and efficacy. From the moment you enter our virtual doors, you'll be greeted with a dazzling array of options. Need a tasty and convenient way to incorporate wellness into your daily routine? 
We've got you covered with our delightful selection of edibles. Prefer, prefer a more discreet and portable option? Our Delta 8 slash HHC cartridges and disposables offer a seamless vaping experience, allowing you to indulge in wellness on the go. But wait, there's more. We've even infused wellness into your favorite beverage. Say hello to our revitalizing coffee blended with our properly curated mushroom selection. Start your morning with a brain-empowering cup of joe. And best of all, we even take product requests. Listeners, check out pharodistro.com today and use code PKA20. That's pharodistro.com. Link below. Code PKA20 to find out how the pyramids were built. Just kidding. It's 20% off your order. Remember, the code is PKA20, your golden ticket to unlock remarkable savings. Check out Faro Distro, linked below. Excellent quality products. So this, these guys. Uh, <laughs> Taylor was I, telling me about yeah, that before the show. I was, I was telling you guys about this this company before the show. So um, <clears throat> they make HHC, Delta 8, Delta 10, all that stuff. They also have a bunch of gummies with like uh, Vitality uh, helping mushrooms and all that. Uh, they have, which is good for Woody, like 25 milligram gummies, something much more comfortable that I told him to send you some of. Thank you. Uh, what he has, I haven't received them yet, but it's being shipped out to all three of us, is their most powerful <laughs> Wait, lines of products. Them to me too? They're sending them to you too. <laughs> oh, and no. the, one of them is called, I wrote it down because it's so funny. It's called the Clusterfuck. <laughs> and it is a piece, it is... A piece of like nerd rope, like a little chunk of it that has 300 milligrams of Delta 8 in it. Oh, 300. Oh my and so, I'm gonna eat that whole fucking worm, dude. Be, they, they have a, uh, so that's the chunks. They have a full worm that's 1250 <laughs> milligrams of THC, of Delta 8. Now, Kyle, I know you've told me before 300 milligrams. Sometimes that doesn't get you where you need to go. Well, that's Delta 8. They also have a 300 milligram HHC gummy, which is much stronger than delta eight and so who's letting them dose them like this and that i'm telling it's you irresponsibly I, I, powerful it, it, it's unbelievably powerful here's what happened to me last night maybe this happens to you if you take a pill every day or something i usually take a little gummy and it helps me go to bed cool i like it i'm not gonna just raw dog sleep like some sort of animal <laughs> yeah like some so <laughs> so i have a little gummy and i'm laying in bed and i'm like did i have a gummy <laughs> I don't remember. No. Of course I have a memory of me downing it, but was that from tonight? Was that from the night before? I've been doing this every day. I've been on this bottle for a while. I'm not even sure. I go up, I pee, and I'm doing like this or whatever, and I'm like, <laughs> I, I just don't think I'm high. Edible didn't work. Tale as old as time, right? <laughs> <laughs> so I take a second one. Oh, 100 milligrams kicks my ass. I didn't get up till like 11 this morning. Yes. This, is, <laughs> is, is there a, it's and a, you woke up like, oh, I'm so tired. <laughs> like, yes, yeah. Jackie's getting me coffee in bed. I was like, I think I did take two. <laughs> Dude, the, 100 dude, kicks my ass. This 300, 1200 nonsense. 300, yeah, that's insane. They have like these, the HHC, they have the, the 25 milligram ones, which are much more comfortable for people without a huge tolerance. They also have the best tasting HHC carts, which Kyle referred to me as the best tasting HHC he's ever had. It's very it really strong. did taste good. I, I, it need, does taste I, need, good. I need a lot more of them. They're sending you more. And uh, yeah, I'm just saying <laughs> just like like we, I've been taking these guys products for like the past <clears throat> month now because I know edibles. I know THC. And so I want to make sure it's like as strong as they claim it is before we, we tell people to try it. Um, yeah, this shit is as strong as they claim. And so if you do decide to get the cluster fuck uh, bag of 300 milligram a piece ones don't be a fool be be smart with it if you are used to 300 milligrams of gas station trash do not take one of these to start start slow it's it's uh i'm gonna eat that whole fucking gummy be, worm. be smart yeah you you're you know what you should, yeah, have fun <laughs> like this yeah, you know what kyle i also like i'm gonna boil that decisions. gummy worm until it turns <laughs> into a weird concentrated <laughs> sludge and yes, the it's snort it but anyway, lots of fun products, yeah. carts, vapes, edibles, everything you can think of, and a bunch of cool mushroom supplements over at pharodistro.com. That is linked below. PK 20, 20% off. Check them out. Very high quality stuff. And I look forward to getting the package of, I don't, I'm not, 
No, you know what? I'm not going to be a bitch. I'm going to take a whole one of the 300 milligrams. Don't do that. I'm not going to do that. You're not even going to do that? Of course not. I'm going to nibble it and Okay, well, then I won't either. I don't even know what one milligram of their shit does. You're both pussies. I'm taking the whole thing as far as you know. 300 deep? (laughs) Yeah, we roll deep. It's like me and my Diablo 4 character. We roll in with the 300. I I don't have you guys' tolerance, man. Like, I I had one of those entire, the entire one of those, like, 100 milligram, um, yeah, uh, Delta Eight. Ridiculous. And dude, I I thought I was okay, and then like I went to bed, and I could tell like I was on the up. I'm like, uh oh, time to go to sleep now. And then I went to bed, and it, going to bed didn't work because like every fucking five minutes I would wake up. Like, <laughs> <having> <laughs> <a second. laughs> I'm like, huh, huh. my girlfriend's next to me, just like trying to get me to breathe properly, just like uh-huh. deep in, deep out. And I'm just like, <laughs> like I was not having a good time, man. I, I took a hundred. Oh, this is a couple of months ago, and I was laying on my bathroom floor, just thankful that the tile was oh, so no. cold. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. Oh yeah, I, uh, so... you build a tolerance up to it. Like I think I, I, I always I started with a half a gummy and then just kept working my way up at, mm. because you know after a while you just build this tolerance to it. But luckily they're just little mm. gummies and, I, and they're and they're they're great for you. And in the Patreon you... hangout. Oh, do you want to go first? Oh, no, I was saying uh, I know that you like dabs, so they offer HHC dabs there. So if you're a dabber, <sighs> you can uh, really get. I don't rid- have a. I. I I don't want to get that paraphernalia stuff there too. All right, I'll see. I'll look into it. You know what? I'll see if it's it's just. I was doing dabs, um, um, you know, of Delta Eight stuff before, Mm -hmm. but I just the paraphernalia is a little bit much, you know, especially if you're dating. And I already had to hide syringes, so. So, but Dude, when you're also hiding your so blow t- syringes, <laughs> yeah, it's steroids. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> and, it's and just the syringes. <laughs> like I would inject it in my coffee table, and you know, the sur- there might be a syringe on my coffee table if I haven't cleaned up that morning. Um, and uh, explain and, yeah, the I, burnt spoon, though. Oh, not a <laughs> <Yes>. burnt spoon. <laughs> oh, well, that's what I was getting at. You need a propane. If you're doing dabs, <laughs> if you're doing dabs, you got a propane torch, and you're not gonna fuck around with one of those little butane things that takes forever. I get a camper style, but- like like propane torch, and I'm <laughs> heating up that fucking nail, and, the, and there's a, there's a whole like there's the 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 thing you, the the nail and the whole bong, of course, but then you've got the dabber thing, and it's Does always it lost really and fast? sticky. Dabbing? It hits so would... hard, and so you take one big hit. And uh, you are fucked out of as high as you've ever been. Like all yeah. the symptoms of marijuana yeah. um, come 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 upon you in like five seconds flat and like a huge punch in the face. How long um, does it last? At like forty five minutes, an hour, and and that's low because of of like tolerance that I would build up. But yeah, the yeah. first time you do it, you'll be fucked for like three hours. That you'll be oh, terrifying, yeah. if yeah. not more. So my um, I had a girlfriend do one for the first time and. Well, I don't want to tell weed horror stories. We want to sell, gu- sell gummy <laughs> worms. We want to sell fun gummies and I take them. One chick. Take them responsibly. <laughs> if if your thought is, hey, I'm a little intimidated by edibles, just get a cart. Just get a cartridge. Just get some Delta Eight or some HHC cartridge. You'll be you'll be very safe there. Uh, this episode also brought to you by Freeze Pipe. Our friends mm. at Freeze Pipe just launched a bunch of new products that are taking the cannabis market by storm. Really? If you're interested in the smoothest, coldest way to smoke cannabis, then you got to try a freezable pipe, bubbler, or bong from Freeze Pipe. Their newly released mini bong and tornado bong are priced very affordably and punch well above their weight class. And for those who prefer smoking joints, blunts, and vapes, Freeze Pipe's new glycerin blunt hold. Oh, that's cool. I want one. Brings <laughs> much needed icy glycerin coldness to a market that so desperately needs it. Say goodbye to harsh smoke and coughing attacks by shopping for the coldest pipes, bubblers, bongs, and dab rigs at thefreezepipe.com and use code PKA for 10% off your whole order. That's thefreezepipe.com and code PKA for 10% off. Shop today and let Freeze Pipe's icy glycerin chambers do all the heavy lifting. That is thefreezepipe.com, code PKA for 10% off. Uh, you can try the little bubblers. You can try the, the handheld pieces. It's all good. Depends on how much space you have. But I'm telling you, the... Creme de la creme, the mm. big boy, the giant, thick glass, enormous glycerin. The whole you fucking could, top of the bong you, is the glycerin chamber. That is the fucking ticket. What's it called? They all, uh, uh, the freeze, whatever the big boy Call the big there. boy. I don't remember what, what, what because I just sent it to me. I have it right there, and I have it freezing for after the show. <laughs> I, my, my ritual, every, every show, I've got my big boy freezing in there. So right afterward, I overeat, and I get it's, high as hell. 
Like it's I it's a nice probably thing. Probably shouldn't so, say this. You, you get high. You won't use our code. But there's a sale right now through July 5th. So you can go to the. If you really want this stuff, go to their site, check it out, and they it's yeah. more than 10 percent off on a lot of these things. And stack our stack our discount on top of it. Yeah, and stick get the even code more. in there. It, it might get It'll you work. more. It I does. Don't know. Yeah, they're, they're, they're always yeah they're always running sales, so it it should stack. Um, so check well, this that out. Fourth of July weekend might the be good savings. Time. The savings, my God! But if you have, that, if you're someone who's like sitting in front of your TV at night smoking, and you don't need like a little piece or something like that, go for the big boy bong. It, all of them make the the smoke colder, but obviously the larger the glycerin chamber, the the colder it's going to get. That thing is the the best bong I've ever smoked out of. It's excellent. Like I'm I'm not going to. I don't think I'll ever need to buy another bong unless that thing, unless I drop that thing like a retard. You should get the Frosted Bubbler Pro because it has colors. Definitely do that. Code PKA, 10% off. <laughs> Add that to those huge savings already and uh, get nice and high with a cold hit. And of you course, while you're high as shit, you're going to want to come. And you're going <laughs> to want to come big, aren't you? You just took an edible from Faro Distribution. You just took... Uh, you, you just took something that's getting, making you feel good. You took a big rip out of your freeze pipe. And what you want is to be able to have a big old load because it feels better to come when you're high. And it feels better to come when you're shooting a lot of cum, doesn't it? Code PKA, code JIZ, 10% off, lock and load. The premium, premium ejaculation increasing supplement that's taking the world by storm purportedly. And everyone can have it. Check it out. Uh, you've been on the fence for a while. Someone sitting out there is going like, I think I come enough. Uh, no, you don't. <laughs> no, you don't. You don't you come, come like enough. a bitch. Women, I don't mean, I hurt your feelings, but you fucking suck at coming. Yeah, I don't want you to feel bad, but your friends texted me. <laughs> and they, <laughs> and they like told that. me, your your buddies told me, we love John, but he doesn't come enough. And Everybody so, at the glory hole is laughing at you. <laughs> you're the laughing stock of your local glory hole. I'm on my knees cracking up. On you the know, other I'm side just... of it <laughs> is when your babe sees how much cum you come, she's going to think that she got really good at whatever it is she did to make that happen. True. She's going to be like, wow, I'm really I'm banging she's on like, all cylinders. here." I have finally figured out how to give head. And it's going to make you feel and she's going to be like, what a virile man. Mm -hmm. My God, is he eating elk meat? No, he's <laughs> taking lock and load and he's using code PKA to get 10% off. My God. And you can get Derek's <laughs> wonderful line of energy drinks. You can get yeah. the protein. You can get the fucking pre-workout dumbass. You can get all this shit for 10% mm -hmm. off. Are you tired of being a fat idiot who dribbles cum? No longer. <laughs> no longer. <laughs> code PKA, code just 10% off. Da, boom, boom. Yeah, shit right there. Shit. I've been on the lock and load grind set for months now. You actually, you can't stop. It's actually kind of addicting because once you run out you realize like oh shit i don't want to go back to normal life anymore i want to be a regular exactly run of the mill be an alpha male like brandon herrera telling the atf to suck his dick and take him lock and load all the time not only not only <laughs> not <laughs> like, <laughs> and the atf thinks they're good at it Tang, telling the so atf much. you can't stop me <laughs> not, not only that but I, I got all my friends on this shit too like <laughs> I, i'm yeah. like dude you can't you, it's it's honestly <laughs> hilarious, <laughs> dude, it is. I especially saw, when I was single, dude. By God, oh, it's it's great. I, I saw a, it was some dude like a big fitness channel. Someone linked me a, a video of this huge fitness channel, like millions of subs, and it was like him and a bunch of other fit guys, like in the beginning of the video, about to do whatever challenge they were gonna do, and they're like talking about supplements, and organically, lock and load came up. Uh -huh. Where they're like, do you take this? And they're like, no. It's like, dude, it like makes you come more. And I was like, ah, that's ah, me and Kyle did that. <laughs> <laughs> me and Kyle, dudes, come more. That's you're dude, welcome like, for the no way one, your dick there's works. Not, there's not a woman on earth who's made more semen than Kyle and I. Nope. <laughs> no nope. one has created this. We're a lot the cum of kings. Your heart out. Yeah, you know, the cum kings of the American. See, I, I, I just wish that, like, when you die, you have those, like, stat sheets, like your KD ratio point, yeah, you know, damn, time on. blew the cum like, market. Oh, wow. Yeah. You are responsible for 87 gallons more cum than otherwise would have been. Yeah. Damn, Holy you could fill half an Olympic swimming pool with, with our contributions <laughs> <laughs> to, to, uh, to the country. Damn. Good I want it measured in liters of jism. I hope that's how it's represented on the stat sheet. Mm. I hate the word jism. I love the word jism. Sploog. I know you do. You say it. You're the only person I hear say jism. It's a funny word. It's a funny mm. word. And it, it, you know, you, it, you feel that word. You can almost taste it, you know? Mm, smell you it. Not the jism, it. but the, the word. You can taste the jism. No, yeah, no, the way, mm, yeah, definitely the way not that, the, 
the way the word jism just kind it's of it's a very bleachy tasting word isn't it <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, got a, it's got a smell an odor it does it does dude it's, it's, it, it's, it's a word that's, that feels different depending on what you've been eating like <laughs> we should get into that like market we should get into the jism flavoring yeah. market <laughs> the jism um, flavoring market i think i think pineapple's got that nailed down so yeah i was thinking like if, yeah. if pineapple can affect you know how your jism the, tastes, then you can really like can, but you can you can yeah. you can get the effect without all the calories of pineapple juice right because it's basically all those sugar. pesky calories i'm going to move forward on yeah. that on that product <laughs> I, I think we can if we start making cum taste good there's Dozens that has, of dollars that has long been my Kyle and I will still be the testing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm tired of getting old cum in the mail. I'm just going to eat my own. <laughs> you know what? At first, I hated it, but the product works so damn good. I gotta, I gotta Pina Coladas. Like, guys, guys, guys. I got it. <laughs> I like, figured it all out. I'm not getting stuff like, damn, are your teeth getting becomes, whiter? <laughs> but that becomes your new fetish, though. And you're just like, what, eating, eating cum? I get in the mail. You're, in your own cum, yeah. I mean, that would probably be a pretty good one to have. Like, it's always yeah. there. It's always there. Like, you're you're really into eating your own cum. Guess what? Go eat some cum, man. And you know what? You're burning the same amount of calories you're intaking. So, like, it, it kind of mm-hmm. checks out. Dude, we, if you we could, could really appeal to that coming. group of people. I wish it took more, at, like, cal- caloric I, I see intake people because to, ladies ejaculate, too. Yeah. To produce cum. I think it doesn't take nearly as many calories as you think to make it cum. It should it's just, we're way too efficient at making cum. I wish that ejaculating was a good thousand calorie burn. Yeah, I mean, like, you like masturbate. The, lact- the lactic acid building up in your balls. <laughs> <laughs> God, masturbating is so such a high just, risk reward. <laughs> like I don't know when you give blood, your body has to reproduce all those red blood cells, right? Yeah. How much energy does that take? I, I wish it took said more this before it's it's not as much as you think it's like in the hundreds of calories not in the thousands you're also not, you're know. not taking much blood out i think when you when you give blood you like blood okay well that's not nothing yeah that's a lot it's, yeah okay I, like 10 like of my blood or something five i don't I, know because well, because i was always thinking because I, I you know through uh, like the america and whatnot doing like the really nice like blood panels and shit like that before i thought like oh my god like 17 vials of blood like that's so much fucking blood and then i look up how much is in your body i'm like oh i'm a bitch like this is all in my head I, yeah when you don't i get i get fucking faint when things. they take it when, like i had never mm. given that the merrick panels like he's talking about they need a vial for everything and you've lot. been sitting there for for like 15 20 seconds and he's been pulling and popping these vials out of your arm like he, the needle stuck in your arm and he keeps sticking vials to it and when he sticks it to it the blood audibly makes a, a hissy um like splash noise against the other side of the um the the the, the vial and yeah. he i can just hear pss, hmm. pss. i'm like dude how many are you getting cuz i didn't know and he's like 8 or 12 or something like that it was crazy and i was like all right, I'm 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 gonna go. I'm I might pass out. I might pass out. Yeah, I just had blood done like two weeks ago, three weeks ago, something like that. And I also just said, "Fuck it," throw in a lead test in there too, because I'm curious. Because I shoot a lot, and I shoot a lot suppressed oh. too. All that aerosolized lead, you know, oh. lead all over everything. And you know, I'm just curious to see what my numbers are at. Would and, that go uh, away over time? I think yeah, and I think there's some stuff you can take that kind of bonds with it or whatever that you can kind of like you know use your lead wipes and everything, and like you you, you can get better. So were you um, leady? I just so remember it was supposed to take five days and it's been two and a half weeks. And I finally called them yesterday and they were like, oh, yeah, uh, we we got a bad draw or whatever. And I'm just hoping that that doesn't mean that like, yeah, we got results back. But it was we, we were surprised like who was somebody with lead this high couldn't have walked into the building. Mm-hmm. So like it's clearly oh, this no. is right. So I'm going to get that redrawn and hopefully, you know, my kids aren't I might, cripplingly retarded. I might add that to um, I remember uh, two incidents one just dumping like a giant belt out of a suppressed um 300 blackout saw yeah and it's just all going into my face but we were shooting for g4 or whatever that that stupid like gaming tv Mm -hmm. channel and we had to do this all in one rip and i couldn't stop and so it just fed that shit into my face for the whole belt and tears were pouring down my face when i turned around because it's just going into my eyes that wasn't good but then i mostly escaped this one but when i was making that bowling ball mortar the base of it needs to be heavy. And so we poured a lot of molten lead into the base of that upturned acetylene tank. And, you know, the other ends cu- chopped off to make the, the mortar. Mm. And we had this big kettle of molten lead cooking on a propane cooker. 
and somebody had to pour it in. <laughs> and when you pour it in, it goes whoosh, and all that like that gas and vapor and I don't know, lead goo is just coming out. And I was like, oh God, this might be the most dangerous thing we've actually ever done. Yeah. Jeremy. <laughs> <laughs> We uh, come here a minute. We did one earlier this year, and it still hasn't fucking come out yet because we're just you know sometimes shit at that. But uh, we we shot ten thousand rounds from an AK in one day, which is way harder than it sounds because it is just so fucking tedious. Because we're also like, so we're getting the obviously the lead exposure, shooting ten thousand rounds in one day, and it was all me. So like my shoulder was destroyed, what? but uh, we were you know full auto just doing just mag after mag after mag. And hmm. then after like three, four hundred rounds a piece, we would dunk it. So now you're getting the water that's taking that, you know, lead with it, that's aerosolizing yeah. and everything. And then it started getting later in the day. So we were worried about, you know, the neighboring properties and such. So we added a suppressor. Now that's getting dunked and blowing all that lead and shit back in your face. And after that, like I remember blowing my nose and it was black. Fuck, and I'm you like, need a respirator for that. I really should have, you know, that was one of those like, you know, you, you know, Monday morning quarterback. I'm like, fuck, I should have done that. Because, like, my jacket, too, was covered in soot, like, and just all sorts of nasty shit. So I I'm did like, 5,000 yeah, I did 5, rounds through a minigun with no ear pro. Oh, Christ. Yeah. Why? <laughs> <laughs> Why, dude? Did you forget them? Yeah, and once you start shooting, you know, it's a dollar a round. <laughs> <laughs> you can't stop halfway. We're filming. <laughs> Yeah. I linked that shit up, dude. I wasn't gonna stop. <laughs> oh god, dude. I've done that you accidentally linked, with well, 50 I was about cows, to ask if you'd but... ever I was about to ask if you ever linked five thousand rounds, but yeah, you have I bet your mag reloads got better after ten thousand rounds. What's funny <laughs> is I was doing the, the the quick reloads where you just take the, the magazine and just hit them yeah. on the back, right? Uh the rocking forward of the magazine apparently was hitting the handguard, and it happened so much that it carved a rut in the front lower handguard. That's cool. Because it just the metal magazine kept smacking it. I was wondering, I'm like, what the fuck was hitting here? And then I realized it was just the reloads. AK worked after 10,000. What was the accuracy like? Uh, we didn't do an accuracy test after that. We still can. Uh, I still have the gun. I'd love it to was, know. It's fine. We we ended up calling it at like 6,900. Nice. But we, wow. uh, <laughs> oh God, I'm spoiling this video. Whatever the fuck. Uh, it, whatever. But oh, we, I didn't know it was like, I thought it, I didn't know it was brand new. No, no, we haven't, we haven't released it yet. But yeah, we, we, we called it. No, don't spoil a thing. Go watch this video to find out what happens. I don't know when this fucking thing's coming out, dude. But it, it was a, it was a good video, and we uh, well, it should be a good video anyway. But it, uh, I, I think it was just it was just getting too hot, and we were just it, it would have kept going. Like we ran it through an ultrasonic, and like it runs fine now. But I said hmm. I'm, I bet you've done something like this before. But I set out to shoot that tree down one time with a twelve gauge, hmm. and then quickly realized that I'd set out to do something really hard, and it was <laughs> it just. It's like, man, I really have gotten ahead of myself. I, I'm, I'm, I'm 200 rounds in, and man, this hurts. This hurts so. And I got two guys loading mags behind me, and it's, it's, it's going as fast as I can. And it doesn't matter. It's just pounding the shit out of me, especially that piece of shit I was shooting. What, what was it, if you remember? Oh, it was this semi-automatic mag-fed shotgun that kind of looked like a, like an old school M16 with. Oh, so like paint. the MK1919 or something. That's exactly like that. what it is. Yep. Yeah. I had the the I I don't know if they the, I, they were custom made because they had like fucking la laser engraving on them, but these ten round mags for it, mm. and uh, I ended up painting it like like all Dewalt co colors, so it looked like a fucking Dewalt uh, screw gun. Yeah, that's kind of about this, yeah, Brandon. <clears throat> you can't be into guns anymore, but you still have to be a weapon guy. What do you pivot to? Mm, uh, guns, as in like legal definition of firearm. Or Firearms. Okay. You can't use firearms anymore, not even flintlock. Ah, uh, damn, because I was going to go black powder because black powder is kind of fun. Nope. Um, cannons, cannons work. Those are kind of cool. There's, that's Fuck. no. Um, I would have, I, I mean, archery, like the nice, like three, the, like the $3,000 bows and shit like that. I don't have any skill in them, but I've shot them before, like buddies and whatnot. And they're uh, okay. shot buddies, bows, not shot buddies with them, but they're, uh, they're, they're pretty fun. I, I would probably get into that. Those are kind of neat. Um, air guns are crazy. Air guns are wild. Still a gun, yeah. Well, no, you you, you get around to everything like flintlock. Not in this fucking can... question I made up. Like... <laughs> <laughs> Never mind. Never mind. There's some wild, some wild air guns. I don't know what the cutting edge of that shit is, but just it like shoots through the years. I remember seeing that thing that shot arrows. That, yeah. that... Is that what they're allowed to have in? Um, did we talk to Finn about that? 
that he can have air guns. They do a lot of air guns over there. You can have Finn's rich enough to have real guns, but in in the UK. But well, even uh, then, I don't. They they're kind of limited to like shotguns and hunting rifles, right? I don't know rules and restrictions. I think over there, like there's the something that people don't realize is in any country, pretty much. If you have enough money and connections, you can get whatever you want. You're just going to have to pay out the ass for it. Like, cause they just like, like when they film movies in the UK, those prop houses are using real guns a lot of the time. They're real machine guns that are like blank adapted and whatnot. But, you know, there's some license that has to exist to let that, you know, be owned. Yeah. Cause there's an industry for it. Like, there's, exactly. a, there's a proper reason to, to possess those things. Yeah. Um, and and then I'm sure there's all sorts of antiquity laws and uh, and collection um, clauses and such over there, so that rich folks can just have their fancy shotguns. I, I mean, they do that fox hunt all the time. Where, where are those guys getting their guns? They're just yeah, you're right. I, I imagine fox hunting is for very rich people, right? I would I would imagine that's how it's always been uh, dis- displayed because I see those people trying to like break the fox hunt up for the good of the fox. Yes, I, I do kind of. I don't like when you ca- have an animal captured and then we're going to let That fox is a notorious rapist. <laughs> he's, 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 he's known uh, across the fox world. He's he a can't fucking, keep getting away with it. He's a he fucking Harvey Foxstein. He's he's abusing all of these of these foxes. Why would you want to kill a Jewish fox? Oh, God. Well, he's a he's a a, a molester fox. Oh. Look at you with your with your affirmative action now. Looking at <laughs> looking at the non action, huh? Yeah, I don't care for that. No, I think uh, foxes are fine to be killed. They, what do they add to the? What do they bring to the table? They're cute as fuck. I mean, they're cute. Yeah, they're like little little squeaky dogs. I don't think I the foxes they're killing are that cute though. They're kind of ugly foxes, like right? Mangy, they're they're, 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 they're pretty the orange mangy. foxes, aren't they? Don't they like? Don't, isn't it a trophy to be had once it once it's over? Okay, well. That's what they're doing. I don't really like it because they're not eating it, right? Really, I guess that's no, my... Nobody opinion. eats fox. I know, but that's my actual opinion on hunting is like, I don't give a fuck as long as you're eating it. But when you mm. when you stop eating it, it's kind of like... You have on, to eat I'll make, it. I'll make an exception to, to hogs. Like, because hogs, especially out here, uh, those are a problem. Like, yeah, those they, are... Those are gonna... Like, could you eat them if you wanted? Yeah, and I have. Like, I've done like I've done the fox hunt... Or this, not fox, excuse me, the, the hog hunts. Where like you you run dogs but you kill them with a fucking knife so you actually have yeah. to like pin this thing fucking down and, like stab it in the heart. But uh, out here we do like night vision shit and whatnot like just middle of the night just go out and just it's like pest control for because these pigs will fuck up they'll fuck up uh, like oh, crops yeah. livestock if they get into like neighborhoods they'll gore dogs like it's pretty rough. Yep. Out here. I OJ yeah. Simpson to we hog to over those. in Houston one night. You yeah. got away with it. Yeah. Yeah, I did get away with it. I sawed yeah. its head off with a pocket knife. I jumped on its back. Fuck, it super dude. hardcore. Yeah. Sawed its head off with a pocket knife. You're there for two hours. Yeah. No, I didn't take long. I like stabbed it up first. It'd been shot in the leg, to be fair. Had to so we catch it. Yeah. You were hacking yeah. at like a, a hog spine with a <laughs> No, no, I wasn't trying to take its head off. I was trying I, I saw it from oh. the bottom up until you know all that was gone. Because I didn't know how to kill it and I was afraid it was gonna it already it bit me on the uh, like inner thigh. Okay. And uh and, and when I took my right. pants off later and like a little bit, but I had this massive black and blue bruise where it like chomped down on me. This guy was being a bitch. He was the one there to make a video. He was making his gator show shit. And he I was like, I was like, you know what, man? You know what Gator would do in a situation like this? He wouldn't use no gun. Gator could go in there hand to hand, hand to snout. <laughs> and at first he was down, but then as soon as the thing made a noise and sort of like charged a little, and, went, and he was like, fuck this. So he he noped out. It was lame. That was it a fun video, lame. though. Good for you for being brave, murdering mm-hmm. that. Yeah. How big was the knife? It was not big enough. Oh, God. Yeah. It was not big enough. It was like, I don't know, three or four inch blade. I'm pretty sure, I, pretty sure I could tell this story. So when we went, when we went it was me, um, Donut, and Scott from Kentucky Ballistics. We all went down uh, to do the same like, knife hunt. And uh, when I got mine, you know, I got, it was like 250 pounder or something like that. 250, mm-hmm. 300 pounds, something like that. So stabbed it. it, died pretty quick. Like, cause if you, you get right in the heart, like under the armpit, uh, it, it's that nice, good red chunky blood. You can tell you get that arterial blood. So mm-hmm. like it bleeds out very quick and it's, you know, it's relatively speaking when you're talking about hunting, like pretty quick way to kill the animal. Yeah. Cody, <laughs> when he got to his, um, yeah see it was a big motherfucker this was like an angry one that they were like oh yeah that one i'm glad we're killing that one that dude's a piece of shit like he's a an nickname angry man. yeah 
Yeah, like the 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 guys who were running like the reserve or whatever, like knew that one. They fucking hated him. Like he had taken a shotgun. El Diablo. Yeah. Like <laughs> they, they found, there was buckshot in his fucking shoulder and those little armor pads when the they scarred came. veteran oh, shit, took apart. But uh, yeah, he jumped on there and went to stab it. And I'm recording him too because like for for his video stuff. And he just keeps stabbing it in the same place, and the knife is just barely not long enough to get to the heart. Mm. So after like a minute, <laughs> oh. just him like stabbing this thing, it's squealing. There's blood everywhere. I'm just like with the camera, like, oh, okay, it's like like, like a sharpened. That's this, what man. Scott did. That's what Scott did with my camera. That I, I I'm still mad about it. <laughs> so he like he like prison shanked him like like 15 quick stabs with a shell. Oh, knife. it was way more than 15. Like he was trying sitting there trying to twist and find like oh. something that would bleed. Eventually the fucker died, but like. It was. Yeah. It took a. It took a little minute. This That's guy. Five thousand cuts. Quite too angry to die. To yeah, I. I. Uh, I didn't know they did that. Well, that. Big. That's pretty cool. I, I've heard of people using lances, and I always pictured like a pretty, like a really cool modern spear, like an eight foot, six foot spear. But going in with a knife is even cooler. Although, I. Usually knives that are meant to, I don't know, kill a pig are what you would think of as like, um, what do you call that shit that like mall cops use. Like like Pepper ninja spray. like that mall no yeah yeah <laughs> I mean like the cat like 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 mall ninja shit uh, yeah you know no. like 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 but you'd actually want a knife that was meant to like stab like a dagger or something I guess yeah it was a big ass Bowie know. knife like you know maybe oh well maybe never mind long. Jesus Christ you know what you could use for <laughs> the pigs is uh get one of those shark knives where you stab oh. and then you hit the button and it like oh kills yeah the right CO two or whatever yeah you could probably kill the hog very humanely with that. <laughs> or it would just be messy as fuck. Yeah. You just put it in. <laughs> it just, it's just fucking sprays everywhere. Explode. Just chunks of pig. Have you ever used tanner in hogs? No, but I fucking want to. Yeah, so just you know, don't film that part though, because you get you know, you'd want to spice it up a little bit for them. Um right. and, and, and then you you know break some rules and stuff, or maybe. But um, but then you can make it real effective against them. I've heard stories of people having a food trough that the they've been regularly going to and then one night that rope that's strung across isn't a rope anymore it's debt cord that <laughs> rope that they've been sticking their heads up under and it's yeah. on the back of all of their necks down a line is debt cord and they that's rad that's, uh, that's heard a, of um a pretty good um, idea you know how you know when you buy barbed wire how it comes in a big spool with a hollow yeah. center that's all i have to say about that yeah <laughs> <That's all laughs> at one point we had one of those spools of uh of deck cord that we we ran out we were doing like a demo course or whatever and we just sh just blew up 500 meters of a deck cord in a straight line just to see what would happen you can and see it as it turns out what happens is you set a lot of grass on fire <laughs> that was um yeah we had to do a lot of stuff how, how much does that deck cord actually explode like if how how close would you have to be standing next to the cord exploding to get hurt? So we we were mm -hmm, okay, I, yeah, I'd probably say this. We were taking bets, um, <laughs> saying that if you had like a good cup or something like that, and the deck cord is laid out on the ground, if you stood over it like an arch like that, you'd, you'd be fine. probably be okay. Oh, I agree it's, with it's that. that. I agree with that. It's that like not strong. Like it would probably be well, stopped see, by a plastic cup. So what what it really is is it's it's like an ignition charge for other explosives. So if you're putting like C10 data sheet, C4, uh, comp B, whatever the fuck, uh, you know, pick your poison. It blasting or the debt cord explodes at such a velocity that it will set off other high grade explosives. So people use it a lot for that, but it will fuck you up. Like if you're holding debt cord while it goes off, your hand is gone. You can wrap it around and around a thing. You want to cut in half. Yeah. But it really needs contact with something. I mean, it doesn't need it, but like that'll make it work. Okay. And so, what, but out on the ground, it it would provide this really cool visual effect where it burns at some obscene speed, like some. But if you weren't touching it and you're like holding your hands like this, like a foot away, it wouldn't burn you or anything. No, not burn yeah. you. It, it's going to spray gravel at you, but not a not at a speed that's going to go through you or anything. It's not as scary like, as I thought it was. It's not going to yeah. kill you. Um, well, you small doses, and it comes in different. You can get some that's little, it'll be itty bitty, and then you get um, the biggest deck cord is those mine clearing charges that they shoot across. Right, it's this big rope of of shit. <laughs> I, I, they're filling up um, like old tanks, like T thirty fours, I think, with that shit, like 
a hundred meters of that shit that's this big. It's like think the velvet rope at the movies, but debt core. And they, they and then they like send it toward the Ukrainian lines on as, as like a drone, not as a drone, but just go that way, rig it up, and then it's a colossal explosion whenever it goes off. Just the cool. debt, the, just the debt cord would blow it up because it's the, all the whole con- thing is. It's so again, it's it's like velvet rope big. It's so yeah. much explosive, and they didn't just put a little in there. They put as much as a tank was physically capable of holding, along with like bombs. Like actual bomb bombs, oh, okay. and then I saw one go off, and it looked like you could tell it was it was different. It was a different kind of explosion. The shock wave would have a good use of ruined a anybody within hundred meters. It's like ten or twenty feet either side. The dirt is just noticeably disturbed. Or the sound, like, rather. I feel like that's a waste of a tank. Like you could do that in a Chevy. You could do that in a van. <laughs> you could do like the tank. Don't you waste a, a tank Chevy on that. A, now you take your high with small arms. Yeah. You stop a Chevy with small arms, and then if you rig a Chevy to go straight in a field, you know, it goes off, it gets stuck. A tank will just go through anything, and they can't stop it unless they hit it with an anti-tank stop weapon. Stop a Chevy with big arms. It, you can stop yeah, a Ford with <laughs> no weapons at all. It just stops occasionally. Yeah. Deck uh, does? No, no. I was joking about Ford. Like, my Raptor, my motor just blew up randomly one day. That was really Oh, cool. no. The 6.0 six twin turbo thing? Yeah, it was I had wow. a, I was it was only like sixty thousand miles on this damn thing, and I was like, and I was actually on my way back from drive tanks in Uvalde, and uh, yeah, I was in the middle of fucking nowhere uh, on that highway, like it's like an hour from civilization, and my motor just took a shit on me. Well, at least it's in not Uvalde? a super nice car. Yeah, it was it was yeah. like an hour from it. Yeah, I had to. It, <laughs> I just sat and like fucking reclined my seat and waited to be picked up and just like okay I guess I'll catch up on narcos. Catch up on yeah. narcos. <laughs> that yeah. sucks though. What was wrong with it? Uh, it threw, up, but... threw a cylinder or some shit like that. Uh, I had to get the entire motor replaced. Yeah. Warranty? Nope. What does How that much? cost? Let's guess. Hang on. We guess. Ooh. We guess on these. Okay. Okay. All right. So we're going to count installation. Did you get it down at a dealership? Yeah. Yeah. Dealership took care of all of it. Nothing was covered. So it was all out of. Okay. Pocket. I'm going to call this seventy-five thousand dollar truck. I, I, I think this may have cost shit. A new engine. Ten thousand. I'm gonna say ten thousand dollars. I'm gonna say ten. I want to say twelve. I was gonna say twelve five hundred. It was shit. almost on the dot at like twelve thirteen. Okay. Yeah. yeah which yeah. actually, believe it or not, was less than I thought. Because what he be. stole my answer. <laughs> that's what i was, that's what I was going I to say i saw his, his <laughs> Dude, that's what i'm gonna do on the show now like every like you remember those kids in school who would be like i was gonna say that like <laughs> they, like it's just like, anytime someone says something right i saw you stole that from me. raptor's cool say. though it's neat they get broken into so much because they uh yeah. the, the door issue and whatnot and especially around san antonio like <clears> in texas uh like you don't have a problem really with you know break-ins or muggings or anything because everybody here's got a fucking gun like you know if you break into a house there's probably a gun mm-hmm. um but the vehicular crime especially in the nicer like mall parking lots and stuff like that like the vehicular crime is insane you, you should choose your have... victim based on if they're liberal like just subaru outbacks exclusively <laughs> well, well the problem with the raptors is they they think like the the person's gone and there's probably a gun in it which i don't leave guns in my fucking cars for that exact reason but yep yeah it's it's they get a lot of guns man they yeah get a lot i've of heard guns that cashed. if you put like glock or sig sour stickers on your car or something that that's just an advertisement that there's expensive yep. toys in here i yeah, know I when i see that like that thing on the back of the car with like a bunch of little <clears> kids i know I know. I just Easy follow them pickings. back home. Easy <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna get all their games. I'm gonna steal all their 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 consoles, juice boxes, and shit. Gushers, fruit by the foot. That shit. There's, like, there's see, like six kids on that bumper sticker. Do you know how many iPads? If I see a bumper sticker with like four or five kids, I know that mom puts out. Mm. You, yeah, know. Yeah. you know, and you know she now. doesn't need protection either. No, no, <laughs> no. she's a she's a trooper. She's there's firing a out kids. Raw dogs. See that that chick? That chick fucking hates abortion. She, <laughs> she couldn't be talked into it for any any reason in the world. She hates it. All right, now you're losing me. <laughs> <laughs> well, you should know she she hates it when you see the the, the you know seven children on the back. Is right. abortion legal in Texas still? What do they do to you guys there? So yeah, because I know like you, after Roe v. Wade, everything kind of went back to uh, <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> every every uh, every everybody kind of like every state kind of went back to like being able to decide on their own because like. You know, it was no longer a federal thing. Texas, mm-hmm. I think, 
is st- it's still legal up until a point. Like I, I don't remember exactly where that point is. That's uh, what we got going on. Yeah, it, it, like it, everybody's like, oh wow, like you know they've they've gone as far as like banning Plan B. It's like no, no nobody's really advocating for that. But uh, I'm seeing I, yeah, Plan B abortions so banned in Texas. Uh, at what? What kind? It's a, well, like at what? Uh, By what six shooter, ranks? the six shooter abortion has been banned in Texas. Oh. So I think it's up to like because of too weeks. many mothers' deaths. <laughs> no one knows how to feel about it. Here's a different source that says it's banned up until cardiac activity is detected, which is six weeks into the pregnancy, mm. which is way sooner than it sounds. Right. I didn't realize. I thought six weeks into the pregnancy was six weeks after I blew that load. It's not. It's from like the period before. They start the pregnancy before she even had sex. So it's like three or four weeks after sex is it really? six weeks into the Wait, pregnancy. They count from the first period? The, yeah, they count from the period of the previous egg. So is it, so is it like the gestation? Uh, you're counting periods egg? twice. <laughs> yeah, counting period twice. <laughs> There's eight periods in a week. Yes. <laughs> but no, well, I don't that know is the how they do it. Taylor's right. Um, hmm. It goes off the previous period start date. If I, th- if I, yeah, the start End date, date maybe. I could be wrong. I'm not sure. Let me guess. Wait, who's but, checking like, like, that? Can't the woman I, just say it was this date? Like, how well, they know? in Texas, well, they, they go by search for the heartbeat. Mm. Yeah, in Texas, they go by the heartbeat? the heartbeat, but that's about six yeah. weeks into pregnancy, which is about four weeks after sex. You better hope your doctor's hard of hearing. So, <laughs> Wait, and if, it's they, about, if, they're, if they're going by heartbeat, I don't hear it nothing. wouldn't matter it's the three. time period. Would it, it wouldn't, right? Texas, <laughs> yeah. in Texas, it doesn't. Okay. Other states go by time, not cardiac activity. Oh, okay. I don't but, know what um, Missouri's okay. doing. Probably something awesome. We have the best weed laws, the best gun laws, the coolest state. Don't move here. <laughs> I think uh, I, I think we do the, do the six week thing here, but uh, you know, e- either way, I would just travel out of state. I think what, what would what would be troublesome, um, and I wouldn't like it all, is if there was any sort of law against leaving your state to seek an abortion elsewhere. They can't do that. Mo- they, they can't, well, they can't prohibit you from, from traveling states. Travel. Yeah, yeah they they're starting that. to do that now. Texas is after people who travel. That shit's not going to fly. They are not going to get that. There's It'll no get way. tested in courts. I don't. I know the answer. I, but no, I, I, I look I'm, I'm kind of in the same way. Like even taking like the the Repo- like the the liberal conservative argument out of it, just constitutionally, I'm I'm not sure what the courts would determine on that. Because it used to yeah, be illegal. It's bullshit. You know how you it's, it, it's illegal to transport women from state to state for illegal purposes. That's true. For, for for immoral purposes, pardon me. Do you, you what does the word immoral mean, Taylor? Judge uh, Taylor, the person who it's wrote that law you. means that's right, yeah. Judge Taylor. It's up to you what the word immoral means. Uh, look, you're going to watch Chicago Blackhawks game. You're going to jail. <laughs> 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 Whoa, is that a Patrick Kane jersey? Straight to jail. <laughs> right in the with Missouri the pedophile. Yes. Abortion laws are strict. It has really? to be a medical emergency. Oh, Ooh, okay. That's the only. It one. is. I can't describe an, an unwanted pregnancy any better than a medical emergency. If we don't do something, she'll have a baby. <laughs> I mean, it could quickly oh, become a, that is a, a true. different kind of emergency. That's how yeah, but that shouldn't sorry. be the same. Way. <laughs> I didn't mean, you know, I didn't mean uh, how that sounded. I don't know what you're doing. You know, you don't right know that because now. of the implication. I'm not doing anything. <laughs> is it illegal to go into another state and buy weed? No. So it, should, it can't be illegal to go there and enjoy another state's rights? Like, that's... That's Actually, kind of the whole thing we're doing here, right? Counterpoint, like, if you come here from South Korea, again, another state, another country, but uh, if you come here from South Korea, fly to a place where it's you know legal to smoke weed, smoke weed, go back, fail your drug test. It is a crime. You're going to jail because you smoked weed here. You're not allowed to do that. Yeah. Which that's well, kind of fucking that's, crazy. That's, that's true. Really crazy. Like, there, South there Korea is lame. Because like you can do that, like, you can do that state to t- state in the U.S., I'm sure. Like, yeah, Absolutely, call yeah. Up. You just can't bring your shit back with you. They don't right, care yeah. for that. I will say that is the one cool thing about this whole like abortion thing in Texas is that it's slowing the the just tidal wave of Californians moving to Austin and places like that, which is kind of nice. So it's like out of anything, I'm like, man, I I, I don't know if I necessarily have the strongest opinions on that one. But like, hey, at least it's keeping the Californians away. Do you live anywhere near where Joe Rogan has that comedy club? About an hour and a half. Does that interest you at all, or like not your thing? Yeah, yeah, no. I, I've actually been meaning to go down there. Like, I've I've like a one night stand relationship with Austin. Like, I would never live there, but they get a lot of like cool shows and mm-hmm. music and yeah. shit like that. So I'll go down for like a night once a month or something like that. Just kind of enjoy it. Dude, if Joe Rogan's cool. Off. He's gonna he's gonna hook up Louie with a bunch of spots. Oh, that's that's rad. 
Yeah, the the uncanceling of Louis has been really cool. Yeah, Louis is hilarious. Say, is he's cool, or yeah, if Joe Rogan's cool, he's uh, gonna be hooking up Louis, getting him, getting him back in the mix, doing spy. Or I'm probably wrong. I'm probably behind the times. I bet Louis already like playing uh, big places and whatnot. He's hugely popular. Uh, I don't. Yeah, know. Yeah, I uh, I, he he does his stuff on his website, right? Though, like he, he right? sells. He was the first dude to do that super effectively. Like the, he was really the first guy who was like. Do you guys recall when he released his special oh, yeah. online and was like, hey, I'm really banking on people five, five, being honest and paying five dollars for this special. This is a huge risk for me. I know you can all steal it, but please don't. And he made oodles of money. Dude, it's just like, like Andrew Schultz. It was pretty clever. He uh, you said it was five dollars. He just recommended like five. he's like, look, you pay what you think you can. You can buy it for one dollar. Hmm. I hope you pay five. You can buy it for ten. And a lot of people did. Like a, and yeah. a lot of people paid the five when they could have paid one. Yeah. He's never been choose. my uh, my brand of comedy at all. He it's it, not it's his all old sort stuff of, even. He uh, he was an old man when he started. It felt like he was already he was like a, a man like, beaten down by like life. Two thousand eight, sort of, do that like none of it's happy. It's it's all sad and sort of angry in a sad kind of way. It's not even that sort of a- angry like I'm gonna yell at the fucking stupid shit and and be angry with it. You join me and maybe we get rid of it. Yeah, it's like. We've we've all already lost the moment we were born type shit. Like like we're in a we're in, we're pod people well, just, he, just moving. It's all sad. He's, he's very self deprecating, and I like I like self deprecating humor. It's it's funny. Yeah. I think he does a good job. I uh, old Louis is hilarious. Like his the, specials from like two thousand eight. I want to say is tremendous. The comedian I really want is Maybe Bill like Burr post divorce. That will be. I've been that calling will. for that for a, for a long time. Think so? Oh, yeah. Bill Burr, I, if I mean, he gets divorced and starts hating women again, <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> it's comedy genius. Dude, just we got to get him NBA fired talk. off. NBA question, Woody. This I'll Zion try. Williams really? guy. Zion yeah, Williams, off-season MVP. So let me tell you guys what I know as a person who despises the game of basketball more than I do, like, I don't know, Hitler. Yeah. I didn't say in much. because It's I understandable. Mean, yeah. You know, basketball <laughs> sucks. Like, you <laughs> never play basketball. That's the best thing about never, him. <laughs> hey, I never liked I'm, learning about basketball. Okay. I'm just saying. Not a bit. Yeah. No, I don't <laughs> have any. Bas- I don't have a room full of basketball memorabilia. I didn't. <laughs> exactly. exactly. <laughs> yeah. I didn't watch countless History Channel documentaries on the basketball uh, wars. What if, yeah. what, if, what if the first time I travel internationally, it's it's just to, to visit the, the various. Um, Holocaust sites like like, like like I I'm at Auschwitz and 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 all those other places and then I then I go you to have like, like a shirt and, on and, but, <laughs> but then like, well, I visited Auschwitz and all I got is this last but, t-shirt <laughs> but then it's like a it's like a little dog whistle then I go to New Zealand and I'm like oh and this weekend on my fantasy vacations I'm going to Mordor do no do you know what would be genuinely hilarious is if you go to like Dachau and all that and like you are smiling ear to ear and then you go to like a Holocaust museum and you're like frowning. This, like you're like not, you're like not this NBA blue balling is cruelty. Next show, I'm going to be like, Kyle, I got to talk to you with about it. this 1992 <laughs> episode of Jean-Luc Picard. And, and then, no, I'll give it to I'll you. Get get, if you give me 20 minutes of Jean-Luc there. Picard, I will. All right, back to basketball. So this guy, here's, here's my <laughs> basketball haters hockey. outside view of what's going on with Zion Williams guy. Apparently, Taylor, he is mm-hmm. this. He's a pretty good basketball player. Okay. And uh, he's he on the uh, on off the court, which is all I care about. He's been fucking this uh, this this porn star, like a uh, black chick who's just like really ridiculously built. Um, looks like, like lots of implants, but yeah, like real bimbo professional look. basketball players. Fucking the, that's interesting. <laughs> and and <laughs> since never then, that. so I guess they break it off because he's got a, a steady squeeze. He's getting married, uh, engaged. Maybe he's having kids. He's, he's with somebody else. Yeah. yeah, he's with somebody else, and they're making it a real thing now. She goes off on Twitter daily. Fuck you, Zion, Wiz- <laughs> Zion Williams. I let you come in my pussy twenty five fucking times. We got you got crazy videos of me of me sucking your dick on your trap phone. <laughs> 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 I don't even miss that big dick anyway. Since you got fat, <laughs> yeah. She's <laughs> like, like it was so hard new to bitch pretend how my cunt I was takes. coming. You were so fat. You're yeah. so. <laughs> so she's just being being mean to this poor Ruthless. gentleman. Yeah, and he's still an athlete, and nasty. right? He's still a professional athlete. Yeah. Oh, what do we this. got here? Read these for us, Taylor, from the top. 
I warned you about trapping type hose Zion Williamson, and you didn't listen to me. I know the game. Fuck you, and congrats again. The bill was too high, so you had to scrap for crumbs when you couldn't see me or I was busy. Next tweet. You put my life in danger, fucking all these hoes raw. A lot of crying faces. I let you fuck me so many times without condom, and this is what you do me, a hood rap that does CPN, vomit emoji, cry emoji. CPN, I was with me. you last. I don't know yeah. what that means either. Uh, I was with you last week in New Orleans, and you couldn't tell me you had a random thought pregnant after all I've done for you, Zion. Better pray I'm not pregnant too, because I'm definitely late. <laughs> 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 okay, that that was fun. That, that see that you can see that was the funniest one. I got through that last one. Like, that last she one goes on runs like warfare. that. You know, I don't think she's being entirely honest about this guy. I think she has a grudge. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think well, we can no, no, trust no, this woman's that. word about Dude. Zion Williamson. Zach, can you pull up the picture of her latest tattoo? <laughs> yeah, Woody, could you explain what uh, CPN is, please? Uh, certified Pack Ninja. I still don't know what that means. I don't. I don't know that one either. Act oh, as in package. Know, basically, a black guy who's good at sex, good at fucking. You know what I thought me, it meant? Have a gun on you. Okay. I, I remember reading these two weeks ago, and like making it a game for myself to work out what CPN it was with only context clues. And I just assumed they were in Atlanta and she was saying college park ninjas because college park is a part of Atlanta where there's mm. a lot of, a lot of black people. And I had convinced myself that's what it was. I bet you're right. Zach, are uh, you, you know looking what? for her new tattoo? I bet you're right. I'm going to go on your side. It is right. Her new tattoo is great. Oh, Zion. Oh, right there no. in her face. No, 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 no. This yeah. isn't real. This is. Yeah, it is. It's yeah, it real. Is. That was my first instinct. It looks like it's being applied with a dildo, though. Oh, <laughs> I was just looking at that. Oh, <laughs> I've got that one. Odd. She, apparently, she really got Zion tattooed on her face, as far as I know. <sighs> Look at that. That's, that. that's well done. Let's be real. <laughs> no, it's not. Yeah, stay it's, still it's, it's fucking terrible. It looks like she has. Uh, it looks like a mustache migrated. From Honestly, her, from as her a tattoo critiquer, all that fine line stuff won't age well. Yeah, in the face letters, stuff. You're bad. Ah, I should get. I, I like it. You know I where like you it. want. Fit I might get the same on tattoo. The meaty part of your cheek. You're gonna get Zion too. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna get that same tattoo. I like that look. I I'm also carrying his baby. She should have gotten uh, an avocado. I think that would have looked yes, better. The avocado would have been a better one. Solid. Yeah, a little couple's tattoo. He could have got the other. I like exactly. it. Exactly. Yep. Yeah. Um, so the baby mama could have gotten. Yeah, the, dude. You know. So I'm a stats and stories fan, and. Like some people might look at like Jokic or something and be like, this guy's a really great player. But as a guy who follows the stories, this idiot who missed like 60 games this year is the best player in the NBA. He's he, he's apparently has multiple chicks pregnant. He's marrying yeah. one. The porn star is upset. Uh, we follow sports so wildly differently. <laughs> I have no idea what any player in the NHL is like in their personal life at all. <laughs> at all like I, I, i'm like I, I'm dude you see further. these angles you see mcdavid's fucking hands that's a sweet play and then it's like connor mcdavid speaks out about and i'm like nah don't fucking care don't <laughs> care unless it's about how he got his dangles so smooth and silky <laughs> i don't want to hear it his dangle? there is a game so his dangles is when you you move the puck back and forth with your stick like stick handling very quickly oh. very very buttery very smooth <laughs> I put, yeah, like you're playing keep away, right? I bring the ball close to you. I pull it away at the last second when you tried to reach out for it. You fool. Yeah. That's a dangle. Hey, hey, there's nothing wrong with appreciating a man's smooth dangle, man. Yeah. There's no, there's no reason not to. Exactly. He's got smooth dangles. He's got fantastic dangles. That's it. I, you need a porn star to let you know what his dangles really like. <laughs> apparently, Zion, not. not the, Does he ever reply? Apparently not the, no, he hasn't replied, which has been a good move. At first, it Damn. looked kind of weak and low, and now she just keeps pushing and pushing and pushing, and she's the one who looks sort of desperate, which she is. Yeah, I mean, well, she well, where did you get Damn. desperation? Was it the face? <laughs> <laughs> it's subtle. It's subtle, but I saw it. Yeah. That's what solidified <laughs> it for me. It was the 70 tweet chain and, Dude. and the pink a like, colored tattoo a pink tattoo on your face I, as pink? far as in-game stuff i still like the stories like, like so this is going to be 80 percent right oh. as is typical of me telling any sports thing zion's team got bounced out i think by the suns two years ago and zion was injured as he always is on the bench watching it happen this last regular season he's up against the suns again and to him he's like you bounced my team while i was hurt 
Well, motherfucker, now I'm not. Now I'm here. And he just wrecked the Suns under his leadership. He led every player in scoring and he just crushed it. And he was the super version of him. And he broke this rule in basketball where you don't dunk it when you're up by like 18 with three seconds left. But that's exactly what he did. And everybody is like, bro, you can't do that. That's disrespectful. And he's like, I was sending a message. Did you get it? And I'm like, yeah, fuck yeah, I got it. I fucking love it. This is a stats and stories player kind of play. Guys dunking it when the game's over. It's just an in your face. I like it. Yeah. I like how, you know, in hockey, how they bring it to one another with fist fighting. That's, I like that it's too. It's so fun. It's so much fun. Like just you having a sport where, like, no, you, I, I know I won't from you. I, I, just it's that's the coolest fucking thing about hockey. Let me you ask know, you. I this. love it, but like the fact that there's a game happening where you're moving faster than any other game, the projectile's so hard and moving so fast, and then the only way to mitigate the danger of some guy deciding he's going to skate thirty miles an hour at you and kill you is like, well, we got to let you blow off steam and fight, like. <laughs> You have to. Or if you if you, if you got rid me, of fighting in hockey, there'd be infinitely more injuries. If you run me like that, then you have to deal with my friend who's going to mm-hmm. make you pay for it. Like you're going to lose a tooth. Yeah. So what yeah, you're they, you you get it entirely because you play see, hockey. People think that fighting adds injuries; it deletes injuries. Yeah. So what you're saying is that the the sport is so poorly either officiated or the rules are so vaguely laid out that it requires the players to be the enforcers of safety. That the, basically the staff. Yeah. The stadium, the referees, the announcers, the coaches, they cannot guarantee your safety. They cannot. No, they can't guarantee because all it so like imagine if in the NFL a player could go thirty two miles an hour into the back of another player. Do they really that, that would fast? Pro, they go fucking quick. Like they I'll tell you one 32. thing. I've never gone that fast on thirty two <laughs> either. They're they're unbelievably fast, but like Let's guess. What's you're a projectile? What? I, I would. I would. I mean, most of the time, like you, you don't get the chance to skate straight out in a game. Obviously, but what you know, is the actual to... top speed of a hockey player, Taylor? Yeah, what's it. the average speed? I mean, like, a, like... a runner is like what high twenties. So low I would 20s. guess. Oh, low twenty. Well, then probably like, high twenties. Like, I bet you've seen bolts like twenty seven. There's there's no hour. way that players get going higher than like twenty nine miles an hour or something like that. Oh my food is. Mm. I don't know. I, I was I was taking that as like an argument to add fighting to every other sport, which I'm here for. You know, basketball, football, anything like that. You could just start grappling your opponent. That would I would watch it. I think we got to have some semblance of <laughs> civility at some point in sportsmanship. That was the whole point. Uh, I like hockey, I guess, but I only like it because it's it's silly to me. I, I think the idea that you have a sport that isn't about fighting that suddenly just has players beat the shit out of each other because they don't like how they played the game is, is a little wild. Well, it's how, so I guess it's that's how Canadians get their aggression out because, I mean, they clearly don't get it out any other way. It's rough up in Canada. Every time I, like, every now and then I'll pop on the um, conservative subreddit, just our conservative, and, I, and I'll see some crazy story from Canada. Um, they're either they're usually either hitting them, hitting them with the euthanasia stuff, the gun stuff, or um, the, the race stuff. And it, it, it's always some extra left-wing stuff and i think we could get yeah. like a real preview of sort of things to come if we don't have some conservatives i guess in power here or they hit um, him with the uh, trudeau is castro's son thing uh, yeah i don't i don't know about all that you know i, I don't know about I, all that that's 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 silly and i don't i don't, I don't know either but I, it is one of my favorite conspiracy theories because whether or not it's true it's still very funny to me it is it is really funny he looks a bit like him as well yeah, and then the whole thing I, about his mom being like interning in Cuba with Castro and like having pictures together and charismatic like, guy. I mean, I would fuck him. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then uh, um, Trudeau? just like the yeah. yeah, he's too short. Remember when he did brown face? <laughs> like, like that wasn't that, even that bad. I don't like when they okay. dig up these pictures of dudes and like like dressed up at Halloween. Um, I mean, I guess if it was in the last five years or something. <laughs> but, yeah, sometimes I wonder like. The oh, photos this of black guy has and white. this horrible offense from when he was 19. Ah, do we let that go? What do you? What can you let go if it's long enough? I don't know. What do you let go though? Like, uh, like I bet necrophilia. Necrophilia Holy is wow. a, what? what? What's happening? A victimless you, crime. You know the story. You saw the Reddit. Did you see the Reddit article? I think so. Is it the one about the husband? Yes. What are yeah. we debating? What I crimes actually are have best? it pulled up. Listen to um, this. I was actually going to bring this up. 
a, a husband and wife are married. Dude's 36, she's 33. And he thinks he's not obligated to tell his wife about his criminal record. And she found out that what his criminal record is is necrophilia, a victimless crime that she needs to get over. Damn, that's upsetting to find out. What do you do? What's step one? Well, what's step uh, one? I'm step not one, a a lie. Sure. Step one <laughs> is apply lube because the corpses cannot self lubricate. I'm still yeah, not 100 percent on board with the idea that this is entirely a victimless crime. <laughs> it's, you know, body desecration, and I'm sure the family doesn't love it. That's you know, that's up to the family. It's true. It's their choice, <laughs> frankly. But no, it's a bodies don't have uh, rights. I, I don't want. Yeah, they do. No, they don't. They got you can't just go. You can't just go dig up. <laughs> Is it a right if you can't defend it, <laughs> dude? Honestly, the biggest dude necrophilia. That's there are victims in that crime because now we Ooh. have to live around necrophiles. <laughs> like you think that they are just atomized in their necrophilia, and that's not bleeding out into their job at Chipotle, touching your burrito ingredients. That's disgusting. Those I'm hands were fucking a corpse eight hours ago. No. Yeah. I mean, it, th those hands are covered with formaldehyde. You're fine. Yeah. No. no <laughs> Your no, food's no. more sanitary than it would be if a regular guy made it. It's I think <laughs> I just found my line. <laughs> this rarely happens. <laughs> yeah, dude. I don't want to come off as a bitch, but I'm going to say I don't like it. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm gonna say two thumbs down for it. I think it's pretty gross. This guy is not a cool a, guy of the week. Yeah, he's right, not I lay cool out a scenario guy. playing devil's advocate for the necrophile. I would love you to, because <laughs> yes. because I just think you know there, there's a lot of those rap sheets that look real bad, but somebody did something silly when they were young. For example, you know maybe you got somebody had to take a leak because they're drunk and they don't know they're in a school zone because they stumbled a block away from the bar mm -hmm. and now there's some sort of uh, kitty diddler as far as the paperwork's concerned. Maybe this guy was pulling some sort of a prank and, and he accidentally uh, fucked a corpse. You know, no, he didn't. He didn't. Grave. He didn't. He didn't make love to a corpse. What he did was he was like, you know, maybe he worked in a, a place where there were bodies and stuff. And he was just like, hey, what if I stuck my dick in it? It was like, ah, and like put it in a guy's mouth one time. Just sort of like yeah. slap the butt. What if he slapped? He, is this necrophilia? What if he was in a medical lab? Ladies laying there, big titties. And he just and he's like slap the titty with his dick. Did, would, would he get convicted for necrophilia? Right. St yeah, still fucked up. I get what you're saying on that one, though. Uh, yeah, I, as he, the wife, what as if it was a girl? I would feel a little bit better about that, but I'm not sure under the eyes of the law that's necessarily. Taylor, I, I get that you're coming out hard against necrophilia. You know no, that bodies was, aren't fat. I oh okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was I was going to say that hot. Kyle. These Kyle are hot can, corpses. Too. Kyle, Kyle These are hot is, singles in your area. They're just <laughs> yeah, I mean, technically they're cold. Cold singles in your area. <laughs> singles in your area. That's good. <laughs> They got fucking ghoulish makeup on. <laughs> Fuck, dude. Can't get a hand job because they're all fucking hey, splayed and hard Taylor. now. Taylor, have you downloaded Shiver? Shiver? <laughs> Is that where I find the best dead bodies to fuck? <laughs> right. Yeah, it's a it's a crowd sharing app where you share with your negative feelings. Can you imagine showing up at a grave Yeah, we got a fresh a one down at uh, Johnson Creek. Everybody get down here. You show up at a gravestone <laughs> with a shovel and there's three other guys there. One's got a pickaxe and a, and a fucking miner's hat with a light on it. You know what would be a you're good way playing. to rob graves? Is if you dress up as though you're from the past. So you dress up like you're from the 1500s and then you're robbing a grave. People think you are a ghost. Hmm. You can't rob a grave in modern attire, idiot. Lawless plan. I, yeah, I think the cops will shoot you if you're a ghost or not. Does That's rigor mortis make a pussy tight is part of my Google search history. That <laughs> <is>. relax. <laughs> I, don't, I don't even want to know. And uh, I don't care if the, I get the answer. I don't care for this sort of tawdry humor. <laughs> I, <don't, laughs> I, I feel like Woody went one mean. step too far and I'm just... Offended now. I'm a, you know we, what I was 20 saying? seconds ago. We were talking about playing hot pocket with a cadaver. Brandon, I am aghast. <laughs> <laughs> I am aghast at this display. Like, this maybe is, he, we maybe like to think of ourselves as kind of NPR adjacent. <laughs> Do you think? I yeah. mean, it's got to be a criminal offense to like grope a corpse. But, no, but, I would actually, yeah, yeah, there's no. You want to you want to like have a, a wide brush for people who like to do things with corpses because Fine. it's fr it's frowned upon. Fine, it, it's gross. Look, I'm not look. I'm not trying. They're to gonna get, get a disease and then bring it to to the rest of us. They're gonna LGBTQTN. Okay, like it's happening. 
So wake up. They're here. <laughs> they're queer. They're coming for your kids. They're coming Welcome for in. your. They're Welcome coming in. for your grandparents in your <laughs> in the in the graveyard. <laughs> Bring out your young and your old. The LGBTQN is here. <laughs> well, they want to. QN. I just saw you at the end. I I'd slip back. <laughs> and we're coming blast. for your kids and your dearly departed. Yes, <laughs> your dearly departed. We got you at both ends of life. <laughs> you know that, who is it? LG. B, that's the that's just the the, the first three. Lesbian, gay, bisexual. I then, know they're trying to get a BG? divorce from the rest of the letters. Yeah. Are, are we LTG. Sure it's, 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 well, the G, Q is for LGB. queer. LGB. LGB. Right. I think yeah. you're right. I think the G is first. That's also not fair. Why did the gays get preference over the buys? The buys do all the things the gays do and more. Uh, I, I hear you. I but I. I like now we're throwing on the, some T's, some Q's, and we just put an N on there for some reason. The <laughs> necrophiles. LGB is gonna want to get up. what it. What it really comes down to is you cannot have an uh, an acronym with fucking eight letters like that. Once you get past four, it gets bad. Like the NAACP is only able to do it because they have two A's, and so it kind of it goes through. Like if it were I, the I, I actually have a W. Just, I like yeah. where your head is, but I, I don't fully lined up. The problem isn't too many letters. It's not enough vowels. If they were like the Lapta group with a good seven letters, like I, I could work with that. Yeah. yeah. They had something like the like, radar is not too many letters. Yeah. Yeah. Right, well, well, That's I, a I, solid you know, acronym. That they they figured North, is that, that the North American <laughs> Man Boy Love Association? Uh -huh, it they is. cracked the code on good. I like that. <laughs> I like marketing. that they want to separate themselves. From those foul European man boy lovers <laughs> and their disgusting ways. Uh, sure, we like this too, but we're not French. <laughs> you will be accused of being Greek. Uh, yeah, I will not be accused of being French when I'm sitting outside of a middle school with binoculars. That's one of my <laughs> that's one of my one of my favorite favorite lines. In fucking three hundred is where like, well, the boy lovers in Athens. It's like, uh, you guys kind of did a little bit of that too, man. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they did. I, they, and I don't think it was near. I, I can't imagine that in Athens they were like, ah, ha, ha, democracy. Let's molest children. Like, they, there's no way it was that common. This whole thing of like, it was all the time. There's no way. There's, societies don't last when there's fucking rampant pedophilia all the time. I, I don't well, know I, how I, to tell you this, but they didn't. They didn't. They know, never they, did that. I mean, they didn't last. Oh, they, yeah. <laughs> well, everything comes to an end, but like you know, that, that's where we started. What is it about pedophilia that makes you think a society can't last with? Yeah, I would think that it, every it, society's it's... lasted with it. With no, I'm saying if it, the idea of that. the Greeks encouraging it is like what people hear about, and like you yeah, can't have practical. a society where you're encouraging like fucking up children <laughs> for life, I think, and well, I then hoping they, they develop else. into. Here's my adults. take on it. A society will thrive if it's productive and has the right balance of guns versus butter, right? It needs to be able to protect itself, but don't, you're not familiar with guns versus butter. When a government does spending, it, it has to determine whether or not it does butter, which is all like infrastructure, social programs, healthcare, all the things that sort of are non-military that a government mm -hmm. might invest in education. And then there are guns, which is it's military. And you need to balance that correctly. If you only have a strong military and the rest of your country sucks, then your economy is going to fucking blow and, and you won't thrive over the long term. If you only do butter, and you can probably do this in Civ, where like you're playing, what is it called? Civ City or something like that? When, when, um, Sim City. Sim City, yeah. Mm, maybe it is called that. It, it, there's like a term for playing civilizations where you don't, where you're like, let's not go to war for the first 300 years. Yeah. Sim City. Build up. Oh, that's Sim City. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, but that is not a good practice to have your society thrive either because you haven't invested anything in the military mm -hmm. and you're very vulnerable. <laughs> so you need a good economy, good productivity, and the balance of guns versus butter. And fucking children doesn't weigh into that at all. It, well, no, it, it adds to it. It guns. adds to it because they oh. had that cohesive military unit where you started. Um, you, you know, I can't remember what the Greek word was for your, 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 your little boy lover, uh, but, but you know, you'd be to assigned you one. You'd be assigned one. And, and you know, these weren't. You know, it was like men of their young. Think this men happened. Their, it's absolutely happened. You had these. You had these older men I'm in their twenties, so sure and they didn't. sort of adopt. You, you're familiar with the the Big Brother program. It's just like that, but we're in the military. It would be like you you take a young cadet under your wing, and and your ball sack, and and he, 
and look, you're it's literally the some whole sort of hardcore homosexuality. <laughs> and I teach him how to handle a spear. You Let know the biggest. The, do you think they invented olive oil for food, Taylor? Do you really think that? <laughs> yes, they did. No. Olive oil. No. Was a they food. discovered. That, they didn't discover that you could eat olive oil for five hundred years after they started. Did the Greeks and Italians <laughs> have olive-colored skin before the olive oil? Or <laughs> part in the horse thing. No, no. The only thing I just with you there, Woody, is guns and butter is a terrible name. It should be tanks and tic tacs. Like something that's more, <laughs> more alliteration, more assonance there. Guns right. and butter. What sort of not creative dude? Like Day Brent one. Hunters. No, it didn't return to the drafts. Guns and butter. That guy. I literally thought you were making another fat joke when you first. I started still don't understand that. it. You don't even heard of guns versus butter. This is an economic concept that, like, yeah, no, I'm kind of surprised. Man. I haven't now that you've laid it out, but yeah, no, I, I literally thought you were like guns to butters and like. You know, fat guys owning guns and shit. <laughs> <laughs> That's important to do with agriculture, Steel maybe. Six. Like, no, I, I fuck. I, I hate that butter. shit too, though. Like, Honestly, like, the biggest problem for Woody for a society would be obesity. Like, if you were in charge and an obesity epidemic broke out, I have full confidence Chancellor Woody immediately rectifies that situation. <laughs> I love how, to, like, you're just saying it broke out. Like, there's just contagious fat just looming across. Right. There is. It's airborne. <laughs> I'm breathing in someone else's McDonald's farts. <laughs> it's, it's coming into my body. Ah, peanut out. oil. <laughs> yeah. And now does they're McDonald's saying all the different oils, oils are bad. No, or, no, no, McDonald's does not use peanut oil. Peanut oil is good. I think don't, they, they, uh, don't they have like 31 ingredients in their fucking fries where it should have just been like potatoes, oil, and like salt? salt. They've got like well, shit they make them, so they used to use beef tallow to make their French fries. Um, and they're double fried, by the way. And so they have a double batch of beef tallow, but they had to get rid of that because of the cholesterol concerns. And so now they they add, have an additive to make it taste like beef tallow, but they fry it in vegetable oil. Chick-fil-A uses a refined peanut oil that I think is, I don't know if hypoallergenic is the right word, but it, it, it I don't think that it should trigger people with a peanut allergy because uh, Kitty's got a really? peanut allergy. I've seen it happen, but every now and then I sneak a little Chick-fil-A in her food just to test her. And, uh, and then she never lying. died or anything. I mean, she'd get like, oh, my throat's a little tired. It's allergies this year. <laughs> and I'd be like, oh, shit, I don't know nothing about that. Kyle, is the thin in here? And you're like, no. I actually did that once. <laughs> um, not not poisoning her or anything, but I, uh, I went to this restaurant, um, at this country restaurant in Elberton, Georgia. And in the back area of it, there's a pasture with horses. And I went back there, and the horses were friendly. And I was petting these beautiful horses. I've never hadn't petted a horse for years. But they were they're like pets. And I think that she's like violently allergic to to horses, and I didn't like take my horsey hands and like rub them in her face or anything. I was just in the house with her, and she was like, "Have you been around horses today?" And I'm just like, <laughs> "Absolutely not." <laughs> oh no, you absolutely didn't not. Yeah, her you have, like face... a hoof print on your shorts. <laughs> <laughs> her, she, her face was red and swollen. She's crying, and and she. Yeah, you have those high pants on. You're holding a riding yeah. crop. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely not. I have not been around horses all day. <laughs> no, ma'am, I haven't. <laughs> the the cowboy hat off. Parked in the driveway, tethered. Yeah. Are those spurs you're wearing? <laughs> no. Spurs. No, you're, you're delusional. <laughs> um, yeah. Sean Strickland is, uh, is I know, a, a hero of yours, Taylor. Taylor. I think he's your favorite favorites. UFC fighter. That's um, the funniest UFC fighter I've ever... I You guys have told me before about entertaining... UFC fighters in the pre-fight, I've never seen someone go that hard and <laughs> be that funny. And no. clearly, he is he is like an embodiment of that like old saying, he may be wrong, but he's not lying. Like yeah. he's he he's he's not he's not putting on an act. Like he's he's telling you what he thinks, and that's very endearing. I like this dude. I saw a clip earlier today, not the one that I sent you, um, where he's talking to two women. And I think they're employees of the UFC. They, there's microphones and stuff. And they're explaining to him why he needs to be able to have conversations with women. He's like, why the fuck would I talk to a woman that I wasn't trying to have sex with? What will we talk about? What, what will we talk about? What is there to discuss? If I, I'm not trying to have sex with you, then why are we talking? He's like, because you need to hear from what? What? <laughs> Dude, is he going to run for anything? Can I vote for him? <laughs> I'm going to write watch. in Sean Strickland. I'm going to do I it think twice for you too, Kyle. The fact that he's doing press means he's probably fighting this weekend. I haven't, I haven't looked, but uh, um, a he's favorite of mine. Too, right? 
Uh, he showed up short notice, uh, like a, not too long ago, and and won when he shouldn't have. And and he's been like hot on the mic for months now, and his Twitter's been crazy too. So I think he's picked up a lot of fans. I, the the clip I sent you today, he's he's saying that women should lose their right to vote, and he starts laying out his case wildly. <laughs> Dude, it, 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 it's hilarious because it's they like, try to take alcohol away. Look, I don't drink, but I ain't gonna take it away from y'all. Fuck. No, I'm not saying mm. that the 19th Amendment was a mistake. I'm just saying that the country went to shit after. Yeah. Mm. You know, uh, debtors' prisons did not exist in the West from the Magna Carta until the 19th Amendment. And then very quickly after, debtors' prisons returned. Very strange, very curious. What's the 19th Amendment? Women voting. Um, yeah, uh, we were joking around just like how uninformed the average person <clears throat> is. We wanted to go around Austin with petitions like women have suffered long enough. We need to end women's suffrage and just see how many fucking petitions we get uh, signed. That's a good one. You can get that. You can get a lot of people on that because suffrage is such a, a bad sounding word. I agree. Yeah. It, it, what's the, there, what's the there you know, I'm in favor of ending all suffrage and going back to kings. I don't think we gave monarchy a fair shake. What family would you choose? Oh, that's a good question. Kardashians. No, no they have to be. Number one, they, they gotta be. The they gotta be tall. They gotta be good looking. We gotta have a good looking family. We can't have Kardashians some, aren't doing it for you. No, they're short. They're, they're short, short little family. And, and Tiny little like. short little family. No, we need okay. tall. I didn't know. Tall guys. Well, I mean, Baron Who's Trump a tall comes to mind. Holy Baron shit. Trump. That's okay. His name. He, he is tall, and Baron Already. is a great name. It, King it. Baron. You know what it oh, comes down shit. to is if he picks, if he, if his wife is ends up being like a six-two Swede model, then we start next generation. See how it turns with, out with that new Trump because that guy's going to be seven-two. He's going to be, you know, I don't know what Baron's like, but you know, he he seems like a good enough kid. He got shit on for no reason by a bunch of douchebags <laughs> for four years. How do you feel about Arnold? Uh, I don't like his accent for leading the U.S. I know he and he's, he, and he's too old. He's too old. I, I don't it, care well, about him that, anymore. Well, he, he's going to. How about his Mexican he, son? He's Jack. How about we put him in it? Like, what's it called when you've got someone? What um, um, the the steward? We make. How about we have a stewardship while we work out the kingship? And Arnold is the steward of the throne. All right. I'm sort of a Denethor like. I am scenario. almost in. Uh Hmm. I don't know. What though, he's going to love? Is wait, wait, hold program. on, hold on. No, no, no. We, you would need. Arnold is old, and he abused steroids his whole life, and so his heart could pop any second. And then he I don't know who the next TV person show. in charge is at the Schwarzenegger. He uh, had surgery. He's straight. Yeah, I don't know about a Schwarzenegger dynasty, but yeah, definitely like who give him some band? position. You know. Yeah, he's just going to hold on to the throne until he dies, and he then we'll go in to the a, mix. Uh, you know, some, he's he's looking at it. he's the Denethor. The, the king will rise in the east. That guy, RFK Jr., I, I don't want him anywhere near anything. He doesn't get to be in it. He can talk about his stack and his workout routine, and that's it. Dude's ripped. I just, I just want to see him debate, man. I just like, I don't, I don't. He's not, he's not necessarily my guy for anything. Yeah, he's a like, gun grabbing douche. Yeah, like, yeah, like there's a lot of his shit that I disagree with. But as a Democrat, I'm like, all right, I'm willing to throw this Molotov in. Like, I'll, I'm, I'm curious to see how he goes. Like, if I know he'll never debate Biden, but I would really like to see it. Yeah, Imagine that. that. Neither one of them can really speak very well. Yeah, Speak up! You speak up! <laughs> <laughs> if I can walk I over there! Yeah. You guys you guys like my RF game brush? <laughs> <laughs> I know. Just clear your throat for 90 minutes and you're sick. The thing about my gun! <laughs> it's like, shut yeah. up. Stop talking. I've heard people saying they don't think Biden's going to run, run when I suggested that Biden... When I started talking about how Biden and Trump match up hypothetically or whatever, uh, they're like, Pfft. "You think Biden's running?" He announced. Like, I think it's official. Yeah. Oh, okay, okay. I know that all, all that, but what they think oh. is that that is a deception. Ah. The what I'm worried. What I, I mean, would he be could easily about? like when it's time be like, you know, for health reasons, I've decided mm -hmm. I'm going to bow out of this, and yeah. I want to put all my faith and and confidence behind. X, Y, and Z. Who I would be worried about on. him handing the torch over to Gavin Newsom. I think that's most likely. That if it was going to be somebody, I think I did, Kamala can't carry no. you know, more than twenty she points. Win, she's very unlikable. She won't yeah. get. Solid. There's a reason we haven't seen her for a while. I think she's getting booted out because she. Just I think pull. she'll be selected as VP again. Candidates, and I don't know how much she helps or hurts. I, I, I mean, I, I just don't know. 
Like, does she help with the female vote? Does she help with the black vote? Who? Kamala. Nikki, um, Kamala. Oh. Uh, no, she's like, she's just not likable. And she's, she tried so desperately to pivot to this like progressive, uh, like hardline lefty progressive. And it's like, no, your entire like career was locking people yeah. up for weed and shit like it's not yeah. and just because you're California, like ha, 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 right? i'm just i'm yeah. just uh, laughing like hillary everything Clinton you're saying is it. right but like so i follow politics a lot like every day i devote like an hour to it or something stupid and i wonder like it's easy for someone like me to place way too much emphasis on some current event when in reality it's totally forgotten in history mm-hmm. and it's really all about branding and vibe when it comes down to getting voted for. See, that's what Trump would do. He'd call out moments like this on a debate stage. Like, like he'd be like, you'd be surprised that he's bringing up something that everybody's talking about, but he's not sticking to his speaking notes and his, mm-hmm. his canned replies to X, Y, and Z question. When he'd go off script and start, you know, picking at them on something like this, like if you in a, in a vice presidential debate, that's what I do. I talk like, especially if you had a, if you had a VP from a state with legal marijuana who could stand behind that, and go after her record on marijuana uh, from the right, you mm. destroy her. You destroy her. I don't think anybody is like, or I'm, I'm probably wrong, but like, who's that amped up over Trump at this point? Like he, he didn't do anything other. Like he, he didn't do anything in office. He didn't. He didn't I, really do much of anything. So I agree. Uh, he, he passed a tax cut. That's a signature thing. Didn't start any yeah. wars. Tax cut. Uh, didn't start like, wars. Like, Supreme like Court. A, a good bit of his foreign policy and stuff. And like, there, there's especially yeah. his first like. Oh, do you days. like the Supreme Court? We're just going to rattle that yeah. one off like it's nothing. You, no, I I, I listed that. that. The Supreme Court is like getting a legendary, unique item on your first day. It's paying <laughs> dividend, dividends every fucking day yeah. for the I next thirty you're fucking right years. Taylor, getting a legendary ancient item. <laughs> Six <laughs> presidents from now, Trump will be deciding what's going on in this country. The people he chose will be. Six presidents from now, that'll be happening. I don't think that's true. Not six from now. It's only but, 24 uh, years. I'm just, you know, well, no, cycle. because they're going to average they like double. Yeah. You know, six but, or eight years. But so, so what, Brandon, because Brandon was saying it like, eight, but, like, you're, yeah, he didn't so. start any new wars. That's like probably the best thing he did is not get us involved in endless proxy fights. Yeah, and his so first like hundred that. days are pretty good with some of his uh, executive action. As much as I'm not a fan of executive action as a whole, his some of his stuff like it, like rolling out to you know organizations like ATF, EPA, whatever. Like, hey, if you're going to add a new regulation, you got to take out two. Choose any two. Like a little shit like that, like reining in the government a little bit. I'm like, all right, I, I can be down for that. Like he was kicking ass in the for a while, and then it just I don't. He just ran out of fucking steam and started focusing on shit I may not agree with. Yeah, I remember people making fun of that, and it's like, no, unironically, that's a great thing. Like, you think that bureaucrats whose entire job is to create bureaucracy don't over-bureaucrat yeah. things? Like, of course they do. There's way more than needs to be there. Like, simplify it, make it simpler, easier. Yeah. That makes sense. What are you going to say? There's zero way? Anytime you, you can have... simplify any system and keep it as effective, it's a benefit. Yeah, sure. So I, I, I think there's people who are really excited about Trump, although I don't think it's for this reasons that we're talking about i think the people who are really excited about trump probably just like him as a man or they just hate the democrats and the left so much like there's a lot of that where they're like god i'm not i don't want fucking this this being taught to my kids a lot of times they hate the flag bearer a lot of times they hate a fake version of the democrats which is a frustration i have like it mainstream democrats are not trans people participating in girls sports that's a really weird odd case that gets way more attention than it deserves mainstream democrats weren't for sharia law four years ago when that's all they talked about um it's sometimes they it seems like they drum up um make believe lefty that everybody like hates well the trans thing is a good example that gets way more attention than it really should I agree. I mean, it gets attention. I think we all agree. It should, Way but, more attention than it should. Yeah, there's no reason to have it that, that much attention. But, like, parents are obsessed with it because they have a strong opinion about their kids in school. Like, I, I think people are currently obsessed with it because certain media organizations beat the anti-trans drum every single day. And they make it seem like 
trans people, they're everywhere. Check your couch cushions. There's trans people there trying to make your kids trans. There's teachers well, trying to brainwash your kids. And I think it's also like shit like Pride true. Month and whatnot where like everybody's changing their shit. There's flags everywhere. It's like it's the most in your face that it's ever been, at least that, you know, it's my experience. Is this it? Year. Like it's it's, yeah. well, it's kind of kind of everywhere. Yeah. And then you'll, you'll have that and then you'll have the dissenters commenting on that. And you're just kind of creating this perpetual yeah. media cycle of people getting mad. I don't at know. Shit. I. I, like, like that that wasn't a joke that that we're here we're queer we're coming for your children that that was yeah. literally at the pride the pride parade every time i see yeah. an image it's it's naked men around children and they're not just naked standing there they're like twerking or they've got like cock rings on or they're selling what was the one i saw oh check your moles these naked guys are standing there amongst the children they're they're gonna they're, they're come on come on get your moles checked I don't think you're qualified, sir. <laughs> no, it's like, you know what, dude, be, be gay if you want to be, dude, I don't give a fuck. Two consenting adults, yeah. do whatever the fuck you want to do. I don't care. But like you start coming after kids like that, it's like, ooh, the wood chippers getting real hungry. <laughs> Even Republicans, I don't think, hate yeah. gay people anymore. That's a little 15 years ago. It's well, really the do. trans people. Well, you're right, some do. But I think more mainstream is I, trans. I, I, I would say mainstream, thing... most of these people are like, we don't want this being taught to our kids. We don't want these conversations yeah. being had in secret with our children uh, without us knowing about it. And it's known that like these, these school districts try to keep it under wraps. Like they don't promote this stuff. Like there's a reason like you can see clips of like a, a, a frustrated parent going in and being like, show it, show it on the projector, show what this book is. And they're like, no, we're not going to show it right now. It's like this is you're showing it to our kids, you're reading this to our children, and you're not showing it right now. Like, and That's so I, very I, I empathize. I empathize with parents who are like, yeah, you're trying to supersede my influence as a parent, and I'm not cool with that. Yeah, I, the state does not get to decide what my child uh, their their gender. It's such like. a tricky balance, though, right? Like, for example, Florida's "Don't Say Gay" thing is now extended to twelfth grade to eighteen year olds good that's a little long to not cover like sexuality they do if cover those, sexuality. if any of those kids want to get into harvard they need to start cracking the books and start stop worrying about the flags because because the emissions just tightened up <laughs> sex ed is um, supposed to be about stds yeah right no like that's it what be more it's about that. condoms and stds you don't teach people how to give head and like and do shit like right. that in sex that's ed. That's for Mail you, Monday. You, you teach follow. them. Yeah, that's for Mail Monday. <laughs> you, you, you teach kids like, here, here's hey, the danger. Hey, my childhood. Of, there you go. And you don't, te- <laughs> you don't teach kids this. Kids don't need to Talk know. Talk about this. catching some strays. Well, maybe we need to. Maybe we need to. Never mind. There's no reason to like keep the kid from, from their innocence. So, like, so um, they don't need to know that. I'm kind of with you. Like, you don't teach kids how to give head. Yeah, right? Sure. Fucked up. But you do need to teach kids enough that they can identify good touch and bad touch. One of the reasons they started teaching sex ed in like fourth grade was so the kids could recognize if they're being uh, molested. How about this? Do you think if they said we can teach good touch, bad touch and STDs that the left on this issue would go, OK, we're good? Nope, because I don't I don't think that's the agenda at all. And that's, that, that's not what they're going for. And th- the biggest thing that I don't like is that, you know, whether you agree with this or not, your tax dollars are being used to fund it. That's you know yeah. they, they, the what they want the to do. The Nick Merckx guy is right. Leave kids alone. That's what they, what they want the to do is they want thing. to they want to take this. Uh, they want to do, they want equal. Um, um, they, they want this book. Where look, look, these are the ways sex can be had. Here's what two percent of people do. Here's a whole book about it. We're going to learn about it today. Next week we'll look at that thing that ninety nine percent of the rest of you do. And uh, you, you know what I mean? Like, like yeah, I don't know yeah, why yeah. we're. I don't know why we have to walk through a. I saw the kids running down the hallway and the whole hallway is a goddamn rainbow like circles that they're running through and they've all got gay flags. And it's just like, this is like 8% of the population that's gay, right? Or something like that. Some tiny little fraction of people who are gay. And we're having a goddamn month celebrating the the sex organ they like. Like, I don't yeah. fucking care. It, and, and you should, <laughs> but, but now you have I'm not saying we should generation. round them up or anything. I'm just saying, don't celebrate that. The scenes I like you're talking you about like are that. sound kind of bad. That's never what me or any of my kids are, you know, saw. So I'm like, ah, uh, it sounds like some well, of what? needs to be what time ago, up. though, right? When your kids were in school and and when you were in schools, I, I had a friend I mean, of mine too. who is I'm on. Just, I'm talking about what I see on the internet. I, I had a friend of mine who's on the school board of a place here in Missouri. Show me like pictures of a book that they were promoting for like uh, first graders, and it was unreal. I was yeah. like, oh my! I, I thought this was a California thing. Like I didn't. So uh, until he showed me. 
I didn't know. And he's one, he's one of those guys who's there. He has young kids. He's like me and the rest of the parents there. All of us are on the same page. It is the teachers we are against. Yeah. And then you, you see stuff like this and you also have a generation of, you know, attention and affirmation deprived kids that are looking for, you know, basically affirmation anywhere they can find it. And you're like, oh, yeah, but this group of people that you can just choose to be is super celebrated. We have a whole month and we just want to lift these people up. And you're like, oh, fuck, maybe that's me. Which is why, like, I feel like, you know, if you're if you're gay, you're gay, whatever, dude, I don't care. But like, oh, this is just like, like these... the FFA, the Future Farmers of America. They come in on Club Day. Mm -hmm. All the other clubs, like you sign up for us, sign up for us, or maybe the FFA. We got free biscuits twice a month. Y'all want free biscuits? Because we got an unlimited biscuit budget over here. We all joined the Future Farmers of America. Mm -hmm. Poor Lord chess biscuits. club over there. Well, they got some croissants in there. Those little fucks. If you guys I, have your it. way with it's policy, it's you're going to raise a generation of women that can't suck dick. Do you want to live in that world? I don't want uh, see schools ah, check teaching bait. kids how to have sex. <laughs> I don't want a fourth teaching grader kids who about knows blowing how to better, it. Taylor. It's, it's a place of learning. That's what you want. You want a fresh out of college fucking 24-year-old teaching your kids about intimate things. Yeah. Who the... N no. I mean, oh, yeah. that's what I want personally. Well, I, tell I, me what you want. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's it's wild. 24-year-old sex ed teacher, huh? Yeah. Like 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 blonde <laughs> tight skirt, or... no underwear. That sounds you like terrible. you like dude, that that would be like a the funniest like <laughs> creep at a local community college, a guy who never graduates, but he just takes sex ed classes. Teaching sex ed in college. <laughs> I mean, I guess uh, for this guy, yeah, he's majoring in it. He's, <laughs> you just he's keep like, failing with that banana. If you could just help me. You could just help me. <laughs> if you could just help me. They're like, God damn, you're terrible at this. <laughs> I get so nervous around you, Miss Johnson. <laughs> this is your, your sixth semester. <laughs> <laughs> you're 41. <laughs> I know for a fact you're a certified electrician. <laughs> <laughs> you don't need a job. You just keep making me explain to you how to eat pussy every week <laughs> every yeah, week yeah, you raise your you hand because like you're the only person See? who takes this class but it's subsidized by the state so as long as you're taking it I make my living and so it just you guys all want to live in the world I, I would create thin now. people learning about sex constantly that's what it is that's, this is a sitcom now the perv. <laughs> it's called the perv <laughs> it's called the perf and it's and it's and it's a 61 year old man who who is always talking about the next chapter in his life but makes no efforts to go there and he like he moved right next to the professor she's in an apartment now he's in the apartment next to her his wife still lives at home there it's like a rocky relationship you know what i'm not gonna say anymore i'm gonna write this <laughs> this, is, this is a good ass. Sell idea. that to Amazon. Amazon. That sounds good. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna sell that to yeah. Amazon, or I guess Netflix. Um, Netflix will buy I know, anything. I know you're not keeping up with it's always sunny in Philadelphia, but episode five was a real banger. It had a, a cameo with uh, Brian Cr Cranston and Aaron Paul, and um, I won't spoil any of it because to tell you some of the jokes, some of the jokes are so good um it's it was really funny and when i first saw that they were in it i was like ah celebrity cameos are hard to do it's so funny it's they don't play themselves they play like different versions of themselves that are very weird people it, you, so you've been great. talking it up so much i'll jump back and i'll try this season this there's like one bad episode um there's I'll, an episode where frank plays chess against the chinese I'll no against the, Russians. Oh, the, the koreans oh usually he's against koreans that's his his like ethnic well, rival from from Korea. I think. Since this is the bad episode, I'll spoil a bit of it. Basically, because of two or three different plot lines um, uh, coming together, Frank has been cheating at chess. He's been using uh, the uh, 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 his cell phone and having Charlie watch the game with glasses. And there's somebody on the outside with a computer, and they they got this janky system where he can cheat. He has to hold the piece over a, a, the where he w thinks about putting it, and they buzz him when when he should put it down. <laughs> and um, eventually. He ends up with vibrating sex toys in his ass that he doesn't know about <laughs> so that he can play in the in the big chess match. Of and course. he's just sweating profusely and screaming and sort of maybe orgasming from the ass while he's <laughs> he's he's playing chess against this man. Uh, and, and it's it's Charlie, <laughs> Charlie, I'm coming. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Charlie, I'm um, going to bust. <laughs> It, it's it's been a real renaissance of the show I, i'm really happy to see it i, I feel uh, like you guys have talked about this as a bit before 
Oh, we were not. It's based on reality. So there was a big controversy with the uh, the this world famous chess player. What's Magnus his name? Magnus Carlsen. Thank Magnus Carlsen. <laughs> what? <laughs> I, I think it's Mag- Stone is what the Icelandic people left. I forgot his name. I think so too. You, you <laughs> never have that when I ask. <laughs> I always have. Stone. <laughs> You've been withholding that bit of knowledge. It's a different stone they do in Scotland, though. Like like those are something else. Mm-hmm. Um. Anyway, what was I talking about? Uh, the uh, cheating Carlson. scandal that rocked chess. Oh yeah, they, they believed that he had a vibrating toy in his butt. So there's this company called um, there's probably many, but Love Sense L O L O V E S E N S E um, has this app and this line of sex toys that you can put in a lady and then you can control from anywhere. And they have this really intricate application for controlling it. Like there's lots. Like you can even make a, a set it to a song. So you just like and just like leave that shit on. Like we will rock you and just fucking go to sleep. And she's over there just ah like it's great. That's and they, it's, funny. they're very expensive. And um, the idea was that Ma- what they said was that Magnus Carlson was cheating in that way. Um, and uh, because of the way he played or something like that. Oh, no, it was a woman who got there. And it was also. Um, no, it, it my- wasn't Mag- Magnus Carlson said the other guy might have done You're that because right. Magnus Carlson's the, the greatest player in You're the world. Right. It was the other guy who was like some super underrated compared to him. And then before that happened, there was a girl in poker who had a thing um, where. I don't remember exactly how the hand was played, but without going into poker specifics, it was nonsense what she did. So it, she folded at a time where you wouldn't fold. It, it, if Unless I you had correctly, additional info, like you would have to have additional inf- information to, to make the the move she made. And uh, and they've been saying that it was like a vibrator as well, or you know, a vibrating signaling device because be you know those because yeah. those and it would be easier in this instance because the show's live. Um, it, it, so there's a bro- there's a back room where somebody has information. And they could relay it to her, even if it was very rudimentary, like fold, bet, mm-hmm. you know, just some basic information like one buzz, two buzz, three buzz. You wouldn't have to know uh, Morse code or some shit or that five knot Korean War shit or anything like that. Cheating in chess seems very hard. Mm. I feel like they're always hard scoping that. There's not anything else to look at. It's two guys playing chess. Also, yeah, there should be like, what is it? Just a better player that's off screen, like a computer or a, or usually. a bot. Oh yeah. uh, well, yeah, that's true. I guess. Yeah, apparently people can't beat computers anymore, and there is the most perfect move, and the best players in the world I read make the most perfect move about ninety percent of the time, and a cheater will just you know do it one hundred percent of the time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think you're right. Like that's how. And that's interesting, like that that's how they sussed out cheating is like analytically by being like this guy, this the German guy that said the Swedish whatever guy was cheating, like for him to have made those moves would like flies in the face of chess knowledge. It's like he only would have like made moves that perfect anticipating like a different right. player. And it's, and it's so complicated. I don't even understand it. Chess exactly. is so cool that way. But like it's. Do you guys feel that way about a game like chess where like you see someone who's truly excellent like and you just have a total understanding like this person thinks on in a way that I can't possibly emulate like they think more complexly than me they think more thoroughly than me at least in regard to like the spatial reasoning of the board and and what needs to go where at any given time it's I it's like a level of intellect that's that's insane. Yes, I wonder if it's that, that happens to me in all kinds of forms and activities. Yes, yeah, so when I'm playing Magic well, the yeah. Gathering, I, <laughs> all the time. <laughs> yeah. I, am, I, wonder, I wonder if it's that or memorization. Like if like you you know all the possible moves because you played the game you know eight thousand times. Uh, I, but not that that's any less impressive. I mean, it's a skill I don't have. No, I bet you're right. Like I bet that There's, plays into it too. Just the ability to look at the board and like any strategy game, be like, based on this current setup, I can garner that this is likely the outcome. I have to do this now. I have a theory. So, so in computer programming during my career, something called patterns came out and they were replicated from architecture. So if you're an architect and you're designing the inside of a house, there's certain patterns that you see all the time. Like, all right, the kitchen's going to need a layout of like the sink, the fridge, and the stove. Make this triangle. Not try to spread them out too far. Try to get them near each other. Have a, a working triangle You know that works. Mm-hmm. The living room is going to need this and that. It's going to need this kind of traffic flow that goes through it. We're going to need a spot for the TV. And these are some like common formulas we put everywhere. In traffic, you've seen it too. Like, all right, this is things going to be a circle. This is going to be a light. Mm-hmm. This is how we handle highway overpasses or in... Uh, uh, entry and exit to the interstate. You have this problem presented in front of you and you've got like two or three patterns that 
address it. I bet mm. that's how chess is played. That like, oh, I've I've bumped into layouts similar to this before, and there's a good way to handle yeah. it. And you hear stuff like that where they'll be like, ah, oh, the the Sicilian defense or whatever the names of of things are. I think Sicilian defense is from Princess Bride, but <laughs> <laughs> I don't actually know if that's a real one. Did you get into a land war in Asia? <laughs> yes. <laughs> <You're> yes. <full. laughs> You got into a land war in Asia, you fool! Like he's, yeah, that's um, such a great movie. But yeah, and, and like you said, there's certain openings I think are probably fit the pattern perfectly. But the deeper in the game, they're just like, all right, you know, he's his, his pieces are roughly here. He's this forward. This is how I deal with it. Anyway, mm. that's my theory. They recognize it and apply a known solution to this situation. Chess. I wish I was the best chess player in the world. Do you? I'd be cool. I'd be the cool chess player. I'd be like, yeah, I'm. I don't really like chess that much. You know what I want to do? That <laughs> <laughs> I want to do the thing where you play against like eight guys at once, like real fast. Yeah, I'm just getting dominated mm. in every single game. <laughs> 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 I'm just getting absolutely right. I, I can't. I can't think of chess anymore without thinking of that uh, fucking meme or that video of the uh, the Russian kid who's like, you know, seven years old. And then they yeah. bring out like, and here we have like the world reigning chess champion, the Dark Souls music fucking plays. Yeah. This guy walks out. <laughs> the kid cries. That's great. Yeah. The kid cries. Taylor, it's like, uh, yeah. I was going to tell you, you were like, I, I wouldn't care. The best basketball player in the world right now, arguably, this guy, Joker, he's a big white guy from like Eastern Europe. Mm -hmm. doesn't like basketball that much and, and he's always like he wants to go home and enjoy his off season they'll ask him about like yeah you know what you just passed lebron james in the number of 20 points or, <laughs> or whatever some weird stat and he's like you guys are so interested in stats i can i go he doesn't want to <laughs> i mean he's when a he white won, guy from eastern europe <laughs> when he won yeah. the championship he they're like you know congratulations you're the world champion and he's like, can I go home now? And like, well, you, there's a parade in your honor. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I, I didn't have any opinion on Jokic or whatever, Jokic Jokic. beforehand, but I saw his like post interview and you could see him trying to play the part where they're like, you just won the NBA championship title. How do you feel? He's like, I'm very happy. I'm going to, you know, I'm so happy to go home and be <laughs> home and <laughs> Be not here. And be in Serbia away. And they're like, that's great. What did you think about the third quarter? He's like, just getting back to Serbia. Like, he's just, yeah. like, like, just, just like not, not caring like, at all. Or there Croatia, are more important is. things in life than basketball. And when other players say that, they mean like maybe life and death or whatever. When yeah, Joe King says it, he means basketball is the fourth most important thing to him <laughs> yeah, dude, I, I saw cool. he was, i saw he was like i think he's really into horses or something he, he enjoys is. horses and i saw them interview they're like so you're going to reward yourself with a new horse if, if, if you win the championship i guess it was before and he's like i will buy another one even if i lose <laughs> <laughs> and it was like this guy rocks like he's just, yeah. he, just, he just doesn't give a fuck he's like you know it's just happenstance i'm the best player on earth and i'm embarrassing everyone else but i'd love to go play with my horses he's just yeah. the, he's the, mind. the fucking john daly of basketball who just doesn't give half a fuck yeah. oh yeah there was this guy who was drafted in like 2004 2005 something around there named alexander daigle like first overall an nhl player and he was this russian like phenom who had so much natural like potential Wings. and he may have at some point and uh he they interviewed him and they'd be like you're you know you had such a great first year and you're struggling like wh why are you like you're incredible like you should be good and he would just be like i hate ice hockey <laughs> i hate play game i hate ice hockey i don't want to play i play game because i am very good at game i hate this game and he's like he just had no interest in playing hockey wow. he just was like i'm great at this so i'll do it and when he burned out of the league like they stopped signing him because he just became so shitty because he hated it but really was he shitty or just there's a he, he became shitty. Like he just, okay. just he would be one of those guys who go, goes out on the ice and is like giving 80%. And you can't give 80% in the NHL because everybody else is trying to stay in the NHL. But I was wondering if his shitty was maybe better than someone else's full effort. Uh, initially it was, and he became truly shit. 
okay. of, of just not caring. But anywho, little little end it with a little hockey, a little hockey. Uh, fun. It was we're, bang. We we were bound it. to get there at some uh, point when it when it dies. <laughs> With a whisper. <laughs> that's, that's, <laughs> that's how I love an episode to end is Taylor saying something not interesting about the NHL. I, I was interested. I was going to ask more <laughs> hockey questions. It. Well, thank you. <laughs> I'll save the listeners. They'd rather listen to nothing than my dumb ass talk about the Blues. <laughs> uh, they'd literally <laughs> rather the show end than me talk let's, about it. Let's end on grooming instead then. You know, you know about that, that Miranda Sings YouTuber, that, that, that girl? No, oh, I did YouTuber? see her singing yeah, that. We're not diddling kids. We, yeah, we she had like a... Oh. She's the one with a ukulele. What? I'm not diddling kids video. Yeah. yeah. So, so she got accused of grooming and like pedophilia, I suppose. Maybe some fans or some stuff. And she has like this music channel. And so she she addressed the issue with a long ukulele video where she talks about not fucking kids. I guess I, I, that meme is so yeah. great. From it's always sunny. The first thing you don't do is make a song about not diddling kids, Frank. Frank, there is no way for people to think you are diddling kids better than you writing a song about it. And he's just like, no, I had a real ghoul do my makeup. No one would uh, associate with this guy if you were really undesirable. Yeah, she needs a better PR team. That's that's a questionable strategy of handling that. That's the I can't imagine a worse strategy of then singing a song about. And I, I actually I didn't look at I don't know anything about what she's accused of. I have no clue. But I know that you don't want to. Yeah, I know. But I don't know. Like, I don't know the situation. I mean, it's almost as bad as the Frank Underwood defense. Now, the thing about this is you can't stop me from molesting children. (laughs) Not coming back. Yeah. Now he's in court right now. Did we just? Yeah. He said, yeah, but all seven of his fucking accusers are dead. Yeah. Two more. And he's he's out of the woods. Yeah, that's right. He's He's out of the woods until he goes back to Bohemian Grove. 65 more, and he could be a Clinton. (laughs) There you go. (laughs) You know, like, dude, that must suck to be the Clintons. Like, imagine having hundreds of close friends kill themselves. It's got to be devastating. (laughs) (laughs) That's that's got to be absolutely just so sick. Like, is it murder, or is it are they just that stressful to be friends with? Dude, all my dozens of my best friends all killed themselves in mysterious circumstances. It sucks. It sucks. <laughs> I fucking hate, hate this, talking. dude. I fucking hate this. You're talking to a dude. Dude, when my best friend from middle school killed himself by shooting himself in the back of the head twice in the back of a Buick. God damn it. He stabbed yeah, was... himself in the liver with a pencil. Like, Wait, <laughs> wasn't one of them wasn't one of them hung from a tree or something and shot miles from their house and they called it yeah, a suicide? He wanted to die. Like he yeah. shot himself, then climbed up in a tree and hung himself. Yeah, life's crazy. And then the shotgun that <laughs> the shotgun that flew Dude, thirty meters in the, road, the other direction. <laughs> Jesus. Yeah, yeah. There's some there's some wild things when you're like, mm, this is a lot of people to know killed themselves. Dude, when Norm Macdonald started calling Clinton a murderer on the View, that's one of the craziest prime that's time wild. like cringe moments you've ever seen. When Joy Behar and Barbara Walters are physically trying to restrain him from yeah. talking anymore, it's great. It's hilarious. Like, ah, you didn't know I had a murder in the White House. <laughs> yeah. Uh-huh. yeah, yeah. The thing about Bill is, you guys are talking about a blowjob. He's a murderer. <laughs> the thing I just yell like the guy. The thing, uh, the, the the thing, the <laughs> thing they say that I don't like uh, is the murder. <laughs> like, <laughs> what, do you mean? what do you mean he's a murderer? I mean, he killed people. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, he tied them up and killed them. And he's just like on the view saying this, <laughs> like, oh. R.I.P. Norm. I love Norm. Yeah. All right. Uh, Brandon, anywhere people can find all of your stuff? Uh, you can find me at the local bar here in San Antonio, wherever you're mm-hmm. at. But uh, other than that, it's just YouTube, man. Been on the been on the grind. Thank you, gentlemen, for having me again. So, uh, it's been a while. I always enjoy you. Anytime, dude. It's always great. Very good. PKA 654.